Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome, welcome to the ECC Esports League of Legends Finals pre-show. I'm your host, Michael Absolute Malazi, and alongside me tonight I have NYIT Esports Director Eliza Duran and Thomas T. T Rob the Third Robinson of Farmingdale. What's going on, everybody? How we doing? We'll be with you tonight to bring you the intense matchup between the NYIT Cybears and the Farmingdale State Rams in this best of five finals match for the chip. Gentlemen, how are we feeling tonight? Dude, I am so, so excited. Uh, we have been hyping up a lot of previous matches recently. Last week, uh, Farmingdale took on Malloy and NYIT had taken on Damon. Both series were really, really excellent. Damon actually took the first match of the entire series. Or I should say first game of the entire uh, season off of NYIT. And Farmingdale had a really, really fantastic showing. These guys have been getting better and better in the past few weeks. So I think tonight we got an absolute bang up of a match coming tonight. So I'm, I'm just so excited. Yeah, I think it's gonna be it's gonna be an absolute. It's, uh, yeah, I think you kind of took the words right out of my mouth. It's gonna be an absolute banger from uh, from one side uh, from uh, one side of Long Island all the way to the other one. Um, as uh, as the Cyber is gonna try to see if they can finish out a perfect season for themselves, uh, going from from start to finish, no losses, except for that uh, that small hiccup that seemed to have happened versus uh, <laughs> versus Damien. It's always gonna be those kinds of matches where it's like oh two zero, and it's just like oh no. Let's let's try something new, guys. Let's. <laughs> and I'm like, why why are we doing this, guys? Please, <laughs> not like this. Just, just trying to push the envelope. But gents, I'm glad to hear that we're both. I I'm pretty sure we're all stoked for this series tonight. I mean, Duran, you kind of hit the nail on the head. I mean, just a absolutely dominant series from or season, excuse me, from uh, NYIT so far. Um, we're gonna see how both of these teams kind of got here. The Cy Bears obviously dethroned. The reigning ECC champs in Damon College last Friday, um, pushing them to another finals appearance in just two years. The Rams, on the other hand, fell short last year to that of SNHU, but are here seeking vengeance on both NYIT and the ECC as a whole, uh, taking their victory over Malloy last week in a commanding 3-1 fashion. So... Um, I, I kind of want to take a deeper dive into both of these teams. I mean, Duran, you again, you said um, what they've had an unbelievable season so far, the Cy Bears. What do you think attributes most to their success? Do you think it's their team play, individual skill? What do you think has really propelled this team? Uh, I think it's just a lot of... Uh... I know I know a lot of my players get uh, triggered when I say this, but a lot of team synergy, to be completely <laughs> honest. When uh, when when everybody's kind of on the same page, things work perfectly, um, and it seems like they are they seem to move around the map as a cohesive unit, uh, and usually are try to their best to be on the same page whenever things happen. A lot of that stuff comes out of jungle, and a lot of stuff comes out of mid. But I think it's a kind of like an all around effort that usually happens, uh, even if it's like, let's say mid isn't popping off, top usually pops off. And if it's not top, then for some reason, Nautilus is in mid lane. Why is Nautilus in mid lane? Well, he's <laughs> Roman now. It's like, oh no. So, but uh, I think I think it's a lot of uh, those, uh, it's it's kind of like a multi, multi-hit multi threat on, on New York Tech, where it's just like, you, you can't just focus down one person because if you let top lane get too far, then then you're gonna have you're gonna have a whole nother set of problems because not only yeah. does that person do damage, they also uh, are very tanky. So it, it's very interesting. Yeah, great, great uh, pickups there. Totally, Tom. I'm gonna kind of pose a similar question to you. Uh, obviously, you know the Rams very well, having coached them in the past. Now the Rams have been sort of shaky in a couple of their games. You know, a little bit of weird blunders coming through here and there but they've continued to remain strong mentally and obviously in league of legends that is crucial do you think that's an area that the team all around has improved in uh over the past year and since you've coached them uh yeah absolutely i actually think that in the past few weeks itself i think that these guys have improved a lot uh i think we definitely saw that game two versus malloy was a little shaky i think their whole top side uh, looked a little kind of like off, but it, it's kind of uncharacteristic in the sense that in the past, we usually talk about how j Real and Hottengate, right, the jungle mid, is, is kind of like the backbone for this team. It's who they draft around. It's who they play around. 
uh, enabling J-Real has been a lot of their paths to victory. So it was definitely weird to see them kind of fumble in that game too and just look like they were not only not on the same page, but reading a completely different book, if I'm being completely honest. Uh, yeah. I think that they cleaned it up in the later part of that series for sure, and it looked way cleaner. And actually, the people that I do kind of want to shout out has been the people who a lot of people probably look at and say that they're the weaker points of the team. So Shatter and Aggressa in the bottom lane, uh, I think in the first half of this season, did not look like they were on the same page at all. We saw Aggressa going in quite a lot uh, when she definitely should not have been. She doesn't really feel for AD carry. Uh, Shatter feel like, you know, even though being probably, in my opinion, one of the better AD carries in the league, uh, it felt like he just never really had a path to hard carry a game. But in the past few weeks, we've seen that completely flip and turn on its head. Aggressa is looking like one of the better supports now in the ECC. She's playing outstandingly, uh, especially on that new Galio pickup for them, which we can mm -hmm. talk about a little bit later. But uh, Shatter, you know, in, in that series against Malloy, even in that game too, when it felt like Timo, j Real, and Hottengay were all, you know, for lack of better terms, kind of running it down. He had a few hero plays himself, almost turning around a fight single-handedly when you know, uh, up against a, a giga-fed rise, you know, when, when he was just kind of going even on Zaya, gale forcing in, almost getting the kill, putting him down to like 50 HP. So I think their bottom lane has actually looked outstanding. And aside from that one kind of little hiccup, I think Farmingdale overall are actually looking a lot stronger. Great analysis as always. And boys, we're not going to waste any time here. We're just going to kind of jump right into the stats and just the head-to-head -head matchups uh, from top to bot, quite literally. Um, it's going to be an amazing series all the way across the board. So starting off in the top lane, we have Mograth and Best Teemo N4. Um, and kind of polar opposite champ pools. Duran, you want to start it off here with Mograth? Yeah, Mograth is is one of those people that usually gets target banned quite a few times. Uh, not allowed to play the Camille, and with a joke on, on New York Tech is uh, they're not allowed to play any carry tops because uh, <laughs> because it's usually not allowed. Um, if they do get onto the Aatrox, though, um, or they do get onto the set or something else, um, they usually come out of the laning phase with like a pretty big uh, CS lead. So it's going to be really, really interesting uh, the way to see how that plays out. Uh, I think the last thing that we, the biggest thing we saw from them was in the match versus Damien where the uh, Sivir seems to go, seem to go off really, really hard. Uh, he was on the, uh, the Mordekaiser. So at that point, you're just able to single people out of fights, like, and just make yeah. it a four V five at that, a four V four at that point. So it's a, uh, it, he has a very, uh, I'm gonna if if you allow me to win lane, I will destroy you. Kind of comps. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So it, it's um it, it's it's really interesting overall. Yeah, and Tom just throwing it to the other side with Timo. We saw him kind of struggle with that Mordekaiser pick against um one and M last week from Aloy. So do you think the Mordekaiser is something that Farmingdale opts to ban tonight? And obviously, what do you think of Timo's champ pool against Mograth tonight? Uh, I think that there's absolutely no question that Timo's champ pool against Mograth, he's at a severe disadvantage. I would not be surprised remotely to see the Mordekaiser being taken off the table in every single game that is played tonight, whether it's three or five games. Uh, I, I think that overall, it, it is probably the best pickup into Timo's uh, general champion pool that NYIT could possibly pick. So if it's left up, I expect them to be picking it as early as possible. Uh, I, I think that picks like the the Malphite, the Orn, uh, the Maokai, like the tankier picks definitely highlight how Teemo is definitely more tank-centric for his team rather than Mograth, who, like Duran uh, had just said, uh, loves his carries and loves to play these picks. Even in, like, Gravestop, we saw a game from him, which we, uh, you know, he did absolutely fantastic on. So I think Teemo for this game is really going to be looking to kind of just pick a pick for himself and, and sort of just go even in the lane. Awesome. Sounds good. And boys, we're just going to move right along because we are on a time limit right to the jungle matchup. Uh, Cliff Horse versus J Real. Insanely dominant junglers this year. Tom, I'm going to start with you. J Real, I mean, what a season so far. Yeah, I mean, this guy is just an absolute beast, man. He, he, his, uh, we always talk about on stream, if anybody has ever watched a Farmingdale stream, every single time we always talk about how this guy is, in my opinion, uh, by far the best jungler in in the ECC. Uh, not to downplay Cliff Horse in any way, shape, or form. The guy's a great jungler, but J Real has just an absolutely massive champion pool. If, if you're looking at the graphic, you know a lot of uh, quite a lot of picks where he, he's probably only played it one jungler maybe twice maximum. Uh, he, he his pathing is just absolutely genius uh, for especially for this level of play. Uh, 
he, he's overall just when you give him resources, he will always carry the game hard. So J Real is kind of like this team's sort of shining star, especially in this past season. So I'm I'm definitely looking for Jay tonight to kind of see how he matches up against Cliff Horse. But it's definitely not an easy matchup as Cliff Horse is also one of the top junglers in the league. Duran, take it away. Yeah, Cliff Horse is one of those uh those junglers who <laughs> who loves playing his tanks, uh loves the Ramus, loves the Skarner, and uh has quite a lot of a map awareness when it comes to like where his uh, his enemy jungler is and trying to counter gank whenever he possibly can. Uh usually helps out his uh his mid laner and top laner and uh and usually runs out on runs around a lot. Uh, I just wanted to quickly note that uh, when I was fixing the graph, we were making fun of this before, that uh, of the issue about the Lissandra jungle. Lissandra jungle <laughs> is not a thing, and I just updated the graphic right now. So, um, But yeah, I, I'm interested. What's really interesting to me is that they do have two very different styles, but they have three, th four champions in common. So it, it means that they're, they're not as polar opposites as the top lane, so it's going to be really interesting to see how that plays out. Yeah, and especially with this recent patch rolling through Hecarim, an incredibly strong jungler um, with both, which both of these junglers share. So going to be uh, interesting to see what they opt for tonight um, to see. So uh, just keep on moving along right to mid lane. Uh, we got Hec D112 versus Hot and Gay. I mean, another just th these teams are <laughs> towering with talent. So Duran, take it away. Hec D, what can we expect from him tonight? Yeah, Hecti is uh, the the primary shot caller and the the team captain for the side bears. So he, a lot of this, uh, a lot of the aggression usually comes out of him. Um, he is pretty diverse in terms of his champ pool and what he can do in terms of either, uh, in terms of either AP or AD. I know uh, when he was on. Uh, on the secondary team last year or the year before that, uh, he did uh, make a name for himself on the Malzahar and the Gallia. So it's really interesting to see that the that the mid the the neutral pick here is uh, is the Gallio between the two the two players. But he's usually looking to not not only break even but try to get a, a pretty good lead and then start roaming around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of uh, favorable picks there. The Yone is obviously something that's heavily contested, very strong still. Uh, just inherently with his kit. So eager to see what he pulls out tonight. Uh, Tom, throwing it right to you with Hot and Gay. I mean, there's a lot to say, huh? Yeah, honestly, uh, Hot and Gay, I'm kind of tagging right in there with uh, my guess for the bot line from before. I think this guy has gotten a lot better for this team over the course of the season. Throw it back like a year now or so, back when I was with him, he was definitely one of the primary carries for the team. I think he had a little bit of a trough where it felt like in playoffs of when uh, we had him. Uh, didn't really play kind of up to the standards that he was normally at back when it was him and Gravity in the mid lane against in NYIT. You know, there was a huge rivalry there. Definitely two of the best mid lanes in the league. Uh, I think that he definitely went through a bit of a trough, but I think in the last few weeks, again, what we're seeing him kind of step back up to that carry position. Uh, his Orianna had absolutely massive shockwaves for them in the series against Malloy. I think overall, if you're really looking at the, the Galio difference, that, that kind of, or excuse me, the Galio similarity, I think that's really paying true and how they do have a similar style in the sense they love to support their jungler and they love to get around the map and start influencing that way and i think for that reason galio is going to be a highly contested pick for this series however you know if, if galio is banned out or if galio is picked away these two guys definitely have a very different champion pool which is super uh, important to highlight right hecti loves playing his carries as duran noted before outside of his malzahar hot and gay definitely playing a lot more of those kind of mages sit back style farm it up uh outside of that twisted fate pick yeah, looking to scale late into the game with a lot of his picks. So we'll see, uh, will the aggression from NYIT take precedent tonight? Or will Farmerdale be able to farm out and uh, enable Hot and Gay with those types of picks? So we'll see. But literally right now, we're going to shift right to the bot lane. This is the matchup that I think is crucial in this game. We, we've strayed away from looking at the bot lane a lot when Farmerdale has played, but Shatter has just been on an absolute tear recently. So... Tom, take it right away with him. Tell me, what can we expect from Shatter tonight? Yeah, I mean, if Farmingdale is remotely intelligent when it comes to their draft, I think you've got to play through this guy. He he has just been an absolute monster for this team recently. Uh, a pentakill on Kai'Sa, uh, when we really have like never seen it out of him before, uh, comes in hot against Malloy. He, he was an absolute beast that series. I mentioned before about his Zaya pick in that game. Uh, game two, you know, when, when everybody was kind of running it down around him, he was kind of like, the shining beacon for his team, almost turning around so many fights that if the gold lead wasn't so out of their control, he probably would have been solo winning them that game. 
So this guy's just been on an absolute tear recently. He's kind of just perma smurfing his way through playoffs right now, and I expect them to definitely heavily be paying uh, draft priority to getting him a good bot lane. Awesome. And Duran, take it away with, with Anjurisu, and apologies if I butcher that, but He's been a shining star for this Cyber squad. Yeah, it's really interesting. He is the newest player on the Cybers team. He actually just came in this semester. Uh, actually, just the beginning, right before the <laughs> right before the season was about to start, he came in and he instantly clicked <laughs> with the entire team. Um, and and just kind of just been this really just ca very stable uh, carry on the team. Uh, and uh, usually dishes out thousands of points of damage during everything I'm, I'm very proud of this player who kind of just came directly out of nowhere on a random uh tryout call and said hey i, I can play and uh <laughs> kind of posts memes and and is a really really uh really um really great person to kind of talk to overall and especially in game um he loves his uh his kaisa and i love that this is these are the three champions in the mid in the in the neutral that uh that they share but the veins uh and uh samira are also very very interesting overall um i'm interested to see how he plays out through the bottom lane uh and uh usually he's not the uh the the poster boy for for winning <laughs> matches but uh usually is, is is still very consistent coming out of lane Awesome, awesome. Definitely a matchup that I'm super stoked to watch tonight between these two dominant ADs. Uh, and I'm rounding it out, we have the support matchup. Uh, TKE Kratos versus Aggressa in this lane. Um, Duran, I want to start with you. Kratos, a couple, of, an interesting pick in the Swain support. You know, it's kind of not something like streamlined, but it's obviously a very efficient pick and uh, they look. you can look for kill lanes with it. So, what does Kratos bring to this team alongside uh, Anjurisu in this bot lane? Uh, he's uh, very aggressive, to be completely honest. Uh, <laughs> I think I think you could definitely see that from the Swain pick. It's kind of just like, oh, you were worried about my carry? No, you gotta worry. Look at me. Look at me. I'm the captain now. <laughs> I'm finishing this. I'm finishing this team fight myself. Oh, I'm not in bot lane. Oh, wait. I you thought I went back? No, I'm in the mid lane now, and I'm I'm. <laughs> I'm Roman. Like I, I, we've, I've seen so many flash, flash hooks, flash anchor tosses from, uh, from uh, Kratos, which is, it's amazing to watch. A very dynamic support play his game, um, especially with even on the Leona and uh, the the kind of just either tanking up most of the damage and then dishing out as much as he possibly can or uh, or kind of just supporting we don't, we don't see him supporting like supporting like traditionally but uh he's usually like cut out a name for himself in terms of just an aggressive support who's uh who's just doing damage yeah and super stoked to watch him play i mean again the swain pick is Something that's going to be interesting. And a little bit of contention with this Leona Lulu, which are, Tom, two of Aggressa's main champions. So let's talk about her a little bit. Yeah, uh, I, I, I said it before and I'll say it again, man. I think that uh, Aggressa definitely had a rough first half of the season. But I think that overall she has just been playing at such a higher level these last few weeks. It, it kind of feels like, for whatever reason, something just clicked. And now uh, her and Shatter finally have their groove in bot lane. I think that she's playing really, really well. And... You know, Durant talks about Kratos roaming into mid lane and throwing out the anchor tosses at the mid lane. Uh, I'm pretty sure rumor has it that Rezo Blue is still recovering from the amount of solar flares that aggressive is <laughs> throwing out in the last series. I mean, uh, this player is seriously uh, no no stranger to roaming and supporting the rest of her team. You know, we say before how this team loves to play through J-Real and through Hot and Gay, so Aggressa is always happy to move up and, and support them uh, and make sure that they have priority and find something that they need, which is why I think that I think the Galio flexes of recent has been such a fantastic pick for her. So I'm definitely interested to see if that pick comes out tonight, if it does get flexed to her. Uh, but overall, just the just last few weeks that she's just been playing so insanely, so insanely better. She's been playing really, really consistently. Yeah, and as you can see, uh, just insanely dominant, thorough teams or members of either team throughout for both squads tonight. Uh, so it's going to be a banger of the series. Boys, we're roughly 10 minutes out, but before we take a break and go to our main show, we have this or that. Woo! So we're going to get kind of right into it with uh, a more dangerous this or that. So... Will it be Mograt's Mord tonight, or will Timo get his Timo and absolute and perform? So Duran, start it off. What do you think 
this or that. I, I don't know about you, but whenever you see someone in solo queue, uh, it, it, and they, their name is best something NA, I say I say just ban it. Like 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 I don't think I don't think I don't think we're like you could the Teemo can play into into uh into the Mordekaiser, but eventually the Mordekaiser is suddenly gonna become very tanky. So I say Mordekaiser uh a hundred percent. Awesome. Tom, what's your take on it? Yeah, I, I'm also got to go that, man. Uh, Mordecai, as we said before, is just such a massive pick, not only into Teemo, but uh, in, into uh, into the team of Farmingdale in general. <laughs> so I, I think that Mograth has shown that he's absolutely dominant on this pick. I can't really remember the last time that he picked it and had a bad performance on it, even relatively speaking. So I definitely think I'm going to have to go with that one for this one. Fair enough. So both <laughs> this is for this one. Moving on to the next slide, we have Banana Peels. Will Shatter get the peel he needs tonight <laughs> against it? Tom, take it away. Tom, this is all you. This is all you, Tom. Yes, he will. It is this 100%. I'm assuming that the connected banana peel means he gets the peel? Or no, he gets peeled. So it's that. It's that. It's that. He's getting peeled, right? Okay, so he's he's 100% getting peeled tonight. Uh, I Like I said, you know, I think Aggressive's been playing a lot better. It looks like, again, outside of that one little blip in the Malloy game, game two, uh, it looks like this team is just on the same page fine. It looks like these guys are finally playing as a unit, kind of like Duran uh, alluded to order with NYIT. So I'm going to go ahead and say that 100%. He's getting peeled tonight. He's going to pop off and carry. Duran, what's your take, man? I mean, I hope he Guess doesn't get peeled that. and he just dies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, a little um, bit of bias. yeah. Little. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say the way Farming Deal has been, has been playing. I say a hundred percent he gets peeled. I think, uh, you had more than enough time to kind of tighten up everything on your team to make sure that you're playing that either uh, a strat that, uh, that can protect you, you per, your golden child for your, uh, for your team. So I say definitely get, gets peeled. All right, we're halfway through our slides here. Coming through the next slide, the stronger jungle mid duo, NYIT or Farmingdale. Duran, you start. I think I think kind of I think it's NYIT. Um, I think I think just the combination of uh, Cliff Horse and uh, and Hecti in the uh, in the jungle mid uh, matchup kind of. Uh, Cliff Horse usually likes to focus a lot of the mid lane, so I I think the the biggest combo is New York Tech. Okay, and Tom, throw it right over to you, man. What do we got here? I think if we're talking about regular season, Duran, I 100% agree with you. But this is in the now, right here, right now. J Real is an absolute perma smurf. Uh, Hot and Gay has been looking so much better in the last few weeks. I think that he is looking to make a statement tonight. I think that statement is, I'm the best mid laner in the ECC. I'm straight up going this. Uh, gotta back my boys on this one, man. Even if it wasn't Hot and Gay, honestly, uh, I, I am so convinced that J Real is by far the best jungler in the ECC. I think that uh, maybe his solo key rank doesn't really show that. Jay, don't kill me. But uh, <laughs> I, I really think that these guys are definitely uh, the best jungle mid in the, uh, in the ECC. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see what happens with the games tonight, boys. We are so close. And wrapping it up, the last slide of the night. Better bans for NYIT. You have option one in the Olaf Siver Zillion and option two in the Hecarim Galio Kaisa. Now, Tom, I'm going to throw it to you because obviously you know the draft sort of and you, you, you obviously worked with these guys in terms of their draft. So what do you think NYIT has to be a little bit more cautious about here uh so i think obviously based off of that malloy series i think uh shatters kaisa has looked absolutely disgusting so i think that that itself is a such an insane power pick i think obviously that the hecarim has, is such a huge pick right now for the current meta in the jungle i think it's by far the best jungler uh and obviously like we were saying before right the galio getting flexed all around mid and uh support so i'm definitely going to go with this i think that that if you leave those choices up for them that you are just as damned if you do, but uh, uh, in, in terms of, you know, if you had to pick one, I'm probably going to go with this one. All right, and Duran, throwing it to you for the last slide of the night, sir. What are you thinking? I'm going to go with that. Uh, I think I think that there's enough flex on, on New York Tech to be able to use, to efficiently use the uh, the Galio, efficiently use the, uh, the uh, Hecarim or the Kai'Sa, and I think they could use that for their own team. I don't like Zillion at all. 
Um, I, uh, I, I am uh, actually terrified whenever, because there's, there's either you're very, very good at Zillion, or, or you are a grandmaster Smurf in bronze. Like there's, there's no, <laughs> there's no middle ground there. And I, I think the better bands would be getting rid of the Zillion and uh, the, the uh, Siver who can kind of just like sit in the back, put up her spell shield, and just not get hit for an entire team fight. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Boys, thank you for chiming in there. Ladies and gentlemen, we are just under five minutes out from this championship match. Uh, we're going to take a small break, and when we come back, we're going to do our last-minute prediction, and then it's into the games. Best of five, NYIT, Farmingdale State for the ECC championship. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back soon. Nice. Beautiful. Good stuff, Good. guys, really. 
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the ECC Esports League of Legends finals here tonight between the Farmingdale State Rams and the New York Tech Cybears. We are just a few minutes from game time. For those of you just joining us, I'm your host, Michael Absolute Malazi, and with me again, NYIT Esports Director Eliza Duran. Hey, how's everybody doing? And Thomas T. Rob the Third Robinson of Farmingdale. How are you now? Welcome, boys. Welcome. We're very close here, getting inching closer to game time. Uh, for those of you watching, if you did not see the pre-show, we were doing a little bit of this or that, running through some predictions, expectations from both the Rams and the Cybers tonight. If you missed it, don't know why. Really disappointed in you. But, God. boys, I'm stoked. <laughs> uh, again, just waiting for the boys to kind of get this game rolling game one coming up shortly yeah man uh, I, I, I'm I'm just stoked man I, I I think that no matter what way you slice it this is gonna be a really really close series uh, I think that you know if you if you look at the past I think 100% you know NYT definitely has the upper leg no matter what way you slice it but I, I think that Farmingdale has looked better and better and better in these last few weeks. So I think that, you know, the, they, they could absolutely put up a really strong fight for this victory right here. Mm -hmm. Duran, any last minute thoughts before we get into game and then we'll quickly discuss our predictions for the night? Yeah, I think this is going to be a, like, I think a brawl all the way to the end. I, I don't think, I don't think any team gets out of this one unscathed. I think there's going to be, I think there's going to be like a lot of just like back and forth, just kind of just brawl punches from all, from this one all the way to the end. Awesome. And just looking at the league client, it says that the teams are both aring up. They're ready to go. But before we jump in, Duran, what's your prediction here tonight? Uh, I say NYT takes it 3-1. I say 3-1 is the, the go. And Tom, on the flip side, as we just barely get into b picks and bans, where are you going? Who's got it? Abs, I'm falling all the way down into peer pressure. Uh, I, I told you guys my prediction before. I am changing it officially right here, right now, because I believe it oh. when I get it. Farmingdale takes the series three to two. So you're saying we're going to silver scrapes for a game five, and Farmingdale's going to edge it out. We're going to hear some silver scrapes tonight, and Farmingdale's going to edge it, 100%. <laughs> all right, all right. So I guess that leaves me, which this is a hard series to predict. I think Farmingdale is in inherently motivated tonight, um, and... NYT has just been obviously so dominant as per their record. Um, but I, I can't flake on my boys. I want to go for the 3-2 as well. Farmingdale might edge it out. That's what I'm going yes. with. That's my prediction. Peer pressure. But <laughs> we'll only have to wait and see. So picks and bans coming through. Um, right now, we have... On Farmingdale's side, they ban out. They're looking at that. They're looking at Mograth, right? So they ban out the Aatrox, the Mordekaiser, and target uh, Cliff Horse a little bit with that Skarner. NYT on the other side take over and ban out the Teemo, the Seraphine, and the Olaf. Yeah, I think it's actually kind of interesting that we're seeing the Seraphine ban. Uh, we didn't actually get a chance to talk about it in pregame, but uh, Absaran, we were kind of talking before about how Seraphine is such an insane pickup right now. It's it's one of the better flex options between mid and support right now. Uh, just absolutely insane uh, team fighting capability. And neither of these teams have played it a single time all season long. Uh, so it's kind of interesting to see it band out. Maybe they're thinking that uh, it's definitely a possibility for tonight. But either way, we're into first picks. Uh, Hecarim is going to be first side of blue pick by the Rams. Can't say that we didn't expect that. Udir and Galio, however, going to be the answers on the NYT side. So we're seeing that Galio priority pick already coming in strong. Yeah, yeah I think it's going to be really interesting because uh, 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 everybody in New York Tech knows that Galio is kind of like Hecti's uh, number one pick coming in. Uh, and... And Cliff Horse usually, we haven't seen him play too much in the Udyr, but when he has, he's usually been pretty dominant in Udyr being Udyr right now with the turbo chem tank and everything. Uh, looking pretty good, but I'm interested to see that Sivir that just came through right now. So it looks like they're, uh, uh, Farming Deal's already going to be choosing their ADC top and the jungler. Yeah, yeah I think, go, go, go right ahead, Tom. Go I, ahead. I, 
I was a little surprised to see that Kaisa was not the pickup for Shatter. We kind of discussed before about how just Parma Smurf this guy's been lately, and the fact that you can now easily draft a strong bottom line that pairs so well with the Hecarim. Uh, definitely a little surprised to see that the Sivir is what actually comes through. Don't hate it by any means, right? There's no doubt that Sivir Hecarim works very, very well together, but just a little bit surprised. Uh, Renekton kind of no shock there to anybody to see Teemo go for his main carry as of right now. Uh, super strong, basically at every point in the game. Obviously, it doesn't scale super well, but still serves as a pretty good BP frontline with a point-and-click stun. That can be very easy to get ganks off. And Nar is actually going to be the reply. And we're moving into phase two bans. NYT opt to immediately take the Zillion off the table. Not super surprised from that one at all. Uh, honestly, I really wouldn't be too surprised if Orianna is their next ban. That's just an insanely uh, safe pickup that is obviously just good all around. It works really, really well with the Hecarim. Ash being banned out from Anjurisu. I actually like that as well because Anjurisu has played so many games of Ash and for the kind of comps that NYIT drafts, they kind of fall back on him to be kind of like their auto-engager, right? Opting into the, uh, the Ash quite a bit Jen even being picked up there to kind of supplement their engage since their top side doesn't usually draft too much engage. So I love this draft so far from Farmingdale. Are, are they just trying to force New York Tech onto the <laughs> Kaisa? Is is that what this is? Because I, I'm you have to know like at this point there, there's not many other picks. I mean you can go for Jin or something like that, but I think they need a lot of damage coming in because right thing all one thing they have right now is a uh, yeah there's the Kaisa, but all they have right yeah. now is a a Nar Udir and Galu, and everybody knows that Udir is basically the runs up stun stun them and then just get out of there <laughs> like but um <laughs> but it's gonna it's it, I'm I want to see what Kratos goes on to because. Yeah. This is gonna that's gonna either make or break this NYT squad right now. Of course Nar can if uh if Mograth can get pretty pretty tanky, he can just kinda just like uh stride breaker in and then just ult four people into a wall. But here's gonna see this Leona. So this is uh tell me a little bit more about this Leona that you said uh someone had to put like SPF one thousand uh sunscreen <laughs> for. <laughs> Yeah, man, Agressa loves looking for those burns on mid lane, man. Or honestly, overall, uh, Agressa is a super, super roamy support. She she really likes to kind of just leave Shatter on his island and uh, look for the roam. So I think with a priority pick like the Hecarim uh, and whatever Farmingdale opt for in mid lane here, we'll see in a second. Victor is actually going to be the pick. Ooh. Okay, so I actually like this a lot. Overall, really, really strong team fighting capability. Uh, good, really good wave clear, good lane priority. So overall, Farmingdale, I, I'm I'm really really enjoying this draft for them. It kind of feels like it, it's playing right into not I shouldn't say right into what they want, but in in terms of relative play style, they got comfort right here, man. I mean, it, it doesn't get much more comfort than this. So Lulu coming in. So now we're gonna be able to protect the Kaisa and uh, and give like another added level of security for either the Nar or the Galio, who are both gonna be uh, diving in pretty deep. Uh, so I'm interested to see how that one's going to play out because, uh, T uh, Kratos hasn't played that many games Lulu in season. I'm, I'm sure that they, they love playing it in, uh, in scrims and everything, but that's going to be an interesting pickup, uh, as we're going to have, uh, a kind of swap of roles. We, I told you that, uh, <laughs> that, uh, Kratos is really aggressive and now, uh, um, the Leona's on the other foot right now on the other team and, um, and uh, New York Tech with a with a comp that's gonna it's it's gonna be pretty team fighty as well. Uh, with the Nar, if, if the Nar has the rage up just in time, uh, that's gonna be a lot of uh, a lot of stuns coming in very very quickly, especially with the Galio coming in at the same time with the Udir trying to run in and then Kaiser just uh, open to deal out the damage. But uh, Sivir is what I'm really worried about right now, uh, kind of just tearing through the team if it gets too far ahead. Yeah, absolutely. I think the only part of NYIT that I'm personally scared for is the fact that they did not draft a lot of damage. You kind of said before about Udyr kind of runs in. He's a bit of a stun bot. Uh, yeah, when he's ahead, he can absolutely put out a pretty good chunk of damage. However, things like the Victor and the Sivir, more so the Sivir, but definitely a little bit, even to the Victor, uh, mm -hmm. should be able to kite it out fairly well with just a little bit of peel from either, uh, from, you know, from, from the rest of the team, I'll just say. But 
overall, not a lot of damage drafted on the side of NYIT, kind of leaving a lot of it to Andrew Risu. You know, we'll, we'll see if, if Hecti can kind of get down there and assist his uh, AD carry. But if this guy doesn't get rolling, then when it gets to mid game, when it gets to especially late game, like we're, we're not really going to see a whole lot of damage coming out from this side. So overall, interesting draft. You're definitely right where the team fight has the chance to just be completely massive. Uh, you know, Mograth on the Gnar and, and obviously Hecti on the Galio can be, you know, can spell devastation if Farmingdale steps out too far. But overall, pretty safe backline picks for the Rams. So we'll see how it ends up playing out. Yeah, we got about just uh, just over 90 seconds. Great, interesting drafts from both sides. But, Tom, I kind of agree. I think, like, if the Kaisa doesn't turn on too, too, like, soon enough, it could spell disaster. But on the other side, Farmingdale, they have a couple of those hyper carries, too. You have the Victor and you have the Sivir. So they're going to take a while to get rolling as well. So not a lot of pressure on the – I mean, there is a lot of pressure on the early game. But really look for this mid to late game to kind of – I think we're going to have a quiet early game, to be honest with you. Yeah, absolutely. I'm definitely expecting a lot of this early game pressure to be up in top lane. Uh, Renekton and Hecarim aren't necessarily like the quintessential sort of early ganking, easy prowess that you expected, right? You normally see Renekton paired with something more like an Elise or a Nidalee is what we really commonly see. Mm -hmm. uh, but Hecarim can absolutely put out that damage for sure. Uh, I think they'll have to play really well around Mog Mograth going back into mini in order to get those advantages, but... Overall, I'm I'm definitely liking the comp that I'm seeing from Farmingdale. I think that we're definitely going to see a bit of a uh, slow early game from the mid and bottom lanes, and I'm definitely expecting a lot of the priority to be set around maybe early Drakes from the Sivir shove, or contests uh, up into the top side for the Heralds. What, what I'm interested yeah. to, to to kind of think about is we understand that late game uh, Victor and Sivir are going to do a lot of damage, and Renekton and Hecarim are going to kind of just be kind of either that front line or dive directly to the back line. But is there a certain point where Galio, Nar, and Udyr just get too tanky? True. It's it's I think it's definitely a a potential. The other side of the coin too is you know these two dive bots in Renekton and Hecarim diving into a Lulu, like a Polymorph W is all you need, so um, it's a good counter pick uh, for Kratos here, I think, and it, I'm assuming he would take Exhaust, but we'll see as we get into the game, but boys, we're in it. Game number one of this final matchup. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm definitely excited. Duran, I think you bring up a really excellent point about how, you know, the tanky front line of NYIT may be just a little too much. Uh, I, it, it's kind of interesting to see who goes late because it, it's a bit of a double-edged sword in the sense that, yeah, I definitely agree that the back line of a Kaisa Lulu will have a much easier time dealing with a Hecarim and a Renekton in the late game. However, on the other side of it, if, if we get to late game and we get a, a hyperfed Victor or a Sivir, I mean, that, that's going to be able to deal with something like a, uh, a Gnar and an Udyr fairly easily, I want to say. The damage that these two laners can put out is pretty massive, so it's kind of a bit of a double-edged sword where it, it'll... If this game does go late, we'll, we'll see kind of, you know, what team's got the better backline access or what tanks are kind of able to make the best out of a bad situation. I guess we're just gonna have to wait to see how this one plays out because, uh, like we like we said, we, like we've been hyping up these two teams this entire time. Uh, it's just gonna take a little bit for both either of these teams to get started. You give them you give them a, an inch, they'll take a mile kind of deal. So we're gonna see how each team plays off and it's gonna see who can capitalize on the other's mistakes first. As we're getting into our first game of the ECC finals, guys, how do you guys feel about this right now? Whew, man, I'm, I'm excited, baby. I cannot wait to see how game one goes. I think that the best part about this, I, I know I'm getting really ahead of myself now, but I can't wait to see how these teams end up augmenting their drafts based off of what we see here in game one, right? Mm -hmm. We're talking so much about it, and, you know, I, I'm, I'm excited to see, you know, do either of these teams realize, okay, we made kind of a mistake here or there. Maybe we don't want to give, uh, you know, this person that, and, and, you know, we'll see how it turns out. But I, I want to keep the focus here and now. Yeah, I'm in the same boat as Tom. This is this game's gonna be a learning one to see what tendencies each team has. But obviously, they've done plenty of research on each other. I'm sure going into this final match, and minions have spawned, boys. So we are in it. Let's go. 
Yeah, so we're going to see a pretty standard pathing, uh, or I should say start from both junglers. Both junglers opting to kind of start uh, in the bot side. A good uh, ward early coming out from Hecti right over the wall into uh, J Reel's Raptor Pit to try to spot to see where he's going early. We actually saw that same exact ward come out against the uh, Malloy series, and J Reel got a really huge advantage off it because he kind of tricked them and he baited them and went all the way around the same way that he just walked into Red Pit. He walked all the way around and was able to actually get up to the red buff of uh, Matt and got a really nice first blood onto him. So. Not going to be the case here. I think that ward is just super smart because every Hecarim wants to take uh, Raptors early. It's just such an easy camp for Hecarim to take. It's a ton of golden experience. So either, you know, J-Reel's going to have to just kind of bite the bullet and say, all right, you know where I am. That's fine. I'm going to take this money. Or he's going to have to maybe look for something a little sneakier and maybe miss out on that experience. So uh, I'm really nice interested. Early, when did they over. put the, the ward onto Raptors? That nice. was just as Red was spawning. Uh, okay, so spawning that's spawning. that's really interesting. So now they know exactly where he is, and I'm pretty sure yep. they know exactly where Cliff Horse is right now as the pings go on to Cliff Horse, and he's going to make his way into his red, and I think it's just going to be the counter wards on both sides. I think yeah. both people, both the uh, junglers will end up on at top lane if they follow their paths correctly. And we're going to see who gets that, that uh, the little the little scuttle bug. Little scuttle, scuttly. Scuttle, I completely Young forgot. Scut. Young Scut. My boy, <laughs> Young Scut. Young Scut, man. Uh, man. <laughs> yeah, so uh, red side generally takes a little bit longer to clear as your Krugs divide into, you know, my, my tote or whatever the verb of mitosis my is into, <laughs> my tote into is. thousands of little <laughs> little rocks. And uh, <laughs> the Raptors, obviously, you don't have good AoE. It takes a little bit to clear. So, yeah, I think you're right. Both these guys should be, you know, it looks like Cliff Horse is just a little bit closer, but... Uh, an early recall from Mograth means that it looks like Cliff Horse might actually get this crab, regardless of the fact that his top laner backs early. So j Real probably going to recognize this and say, okay, you know what, he's got a faster clear than me early. I'm just going to make my way down to this crab, and the bottom lane of Farmingdale have kind of already figured that out. Good kill on the ward. Yeah. So it looks like they're just going to get his uh, their jungler uh, priority, and... Cliff Force is coming down, gonna try to double scut uh J Real, but J Real's don't know already if there. bot lane. Yeah, I don't know if Okay, yeah, so J Real does actually get it. So crabs go one to one, so Cliff Force is not gonna be able to double crab uh J Real. And as we're talking, first camp comes back up for J Real. So both these guys just gonna look for power <laughs> players early on. It's not very characteristic of either of these guys to just sort of like power farm their way through the early game. Usually we see a gank and a death by now from both of these I... teams, but Taking a little slow here in game one. I wonder if it's going to be like we were saying, the quiet early game, not because of right. like just the champion nature, but you know, it's it's the finals. Game one, a huge um, advantage goes to the winner of this game, mom momentum based and also mentally. So I feel like both teams, as much as they're confident in each other, they might be a little reluctant to make some uh, plays early game. So we'll see how that pans out. Uh, hey, hey guys. Uh, quick yep. question for you. Uh, there's a culling in the top lane on the NAR. Ah! Uh... Interesting. So, <laughs> uh, that's gonna be interesting a little bit later, because with the NAR, with the NAR range... Ooh, uh, best team are going kind of low under turret. I'm pretty sure Mograth yeah. won't be diving that end. It doesn't look like, uh, j Real is anywhere close to kind of do anything about that. But, uh, good war, putting that war in the river, <laughs> figuring out that, that, uh, someone eventually is gonna come to help, uh, Teemo as uh, Mograf's gonna jump directly out of that. But that culling is uh, is really interesting. I don't think uh, I don't think I've seen that yet this season. Uh, either that or just was preoccupied with other things. <laughs> but um, uh, it's yeah, no, really interesting so, overall. What do you guys think about that? I think it's definitely a little uncharacteristic, but I actually really, really like it. I think Mograf did a good job at identifying the fact that this is kind of the one lane that early game-wise, Farmingdale can play through, right? You're you're not really going to look to gank a Victor who's against a Galio. That's a pretty safe matchup for Galio. Uh, and bot lane is going to be pretty much shoved in all lane. I think that's kind of the MO is that Sivir is just going to end up kind of boomerang uh you know boomerang the the wave and just keep anjurisu under his tower and you know maybe they look for a drake or two uh with that pressure but i i think that mograf does kind of identify the fact that okay my goal is to not 1v1 the renekton here my goal is to kind of just sit back and if i leave this lane even 
then that technically means he's ahead because Renekton wants to go for kills early. So I like the fact that he's like, I'm just going to get the call. I'm going to sit back. I'm going to farm up uh, and I'm going to do my job as a top laner and play weak side. And I think he did a good job of that. And actually on the flip side, we talk about how far he did. <laughs> want to get early advantages with the shoving from the Victor and the Sivir, but it's actually NYT that opt to take the first dragon and there is no contest from Farmingdale. Yeah, just a super commanding Drake there. Bot lane of uh, NYT had priority, rotated up, Cliff Force was there. Solid calls out from them, and uh, they secure the first dragon in an ocean Drake. Yeah, and next Drake coming out is actually going to be Infernal Abs. You know what that means? Mograf? Riot finally Hold on, on bit. Hold on, we're actually going a little aggressive in the top lane here. Has to burn the Dominus, Teemo, and Mograth was about to go into Meganar, maybe look for something with the ultimate, but... All top laners are going to walk away relatively unscathed. <laughs> Timo's got to burn the Dominus, but they'll just get a reset off. He'll be happy. But yes, Tom, I do realize what that means with the Infernal Drag finally coming yes. out of her lair. <laughs> yeah, really, against the entire... Uh, for anybody who maybe watched Farming Dell series against <laughs> Emiloy last week, in four games, there was not a single Infernal Drake in the entire series. Not one. So Totally insane. <laughs> with their first Infernal of playoffs. We're starting yeah, this one out see. spicy. The dragons wanted yeah, to come man. and see how this <laughs> match is going to shake up. <laughs> exactly. But I, I like Mograth's itemization, opting for the early uh, plated steel caps. Just giving him a little bit of extra efficiency against Renekton's kind of burst trades in and out. Um, so he's going to be a little bit more healthy up there in the long run and uh, just kind of stacking his call, waiting for that thing to Ooh. finally cash out. But Cliff Horse is here. Oh, and he's going to go over the wall with best team ONA, and I don't think, uh, I don't know if Jay Real will be able to get to there in time. There's a flash bear. Slap is going to come in, and Jay Real is going to be in, but here's going to come the Galio ult. Not going to be Ooh. enough, as they will get him away from that one. Renekton flash, and... Uh, yeah, I think that was the biggest thing that came in. Renekton flash for yeah. uh, Cliff Horse flash. Onslaught of Shadows burns as well for J Real. True. Yeah, not sure what Teemo was trying to do there. Um, his mid lane and his top lane were both back, so not sure if it was a communication thing. But Tom, that's what. And Durant, we were talking about this uh, before the game. A lot of issues for Farmingdale last week against Malloy kind of boiled down to communication. So, you know, maybe there's a little bit of pregame jitters here, that kind of sort of thing. But, mm -hmm. like. Um, NYIT just exploiting that. Cliff Force able to flash forward and force the flash out of Teemo. And Tom, like you said, Onslaught of Shadows gone, which is a massive cooldown early. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Farmingdale like to play their series slow. <laughs> I feel like Farmingdale always kind of uh, start cold and end hot. So maybe they're kind of just getting the int out now. So that way they can go into perma smoke mode later. But either way, that's not something that you'd ever like to see from your team. So yeah, definitely just a little bit of miscommunication maybe on the on a different page, Timo may be thinking, yeah, I can I can evade this, no problem. I got some help, and really, Jungle Mid were both backed on Farmingdale, so good advantage burned out. We'll see how NYT play around it. I don't know if they're going to opt to go for a dive onto a Renekton, who does still have the Dominus. So we'll see how uh, you know how that pressure does end up playing out, but definitely a good trade for NYT. Flash for nothing. Oh, uh, looks like best Timo's going to go back in as uh, Mograth is going to jump right out. Um, can we talk about this bottom lane really quick? Because it's 83 to 80 right now, just kind of pushing waves into this Kai'Sa. Um, and still getting up, still keeping it even. Um, so good uh, good management from Andrisu to kind of play directly under towers. They're going to be popping the Rift Herald uh, very, very close. And the Rift Herald will uh, go and see if they can assassinate that cannon minion. <laughs> um, yeah, going for the, char the charge. Ooh, and 160 yeah, I, gold I'm to both. Not super keen on that Rift Herald in particular. I kind of feel like you really want to use a Rift Herald to uh, to get lower plates down, right? Obviously, the first plates. Ooh. Hold on, I'm going to stop oh. right there because Mograth. Diamond is burned from Teemo as Mograth jumps right on top of his head, but... Holds the ult, though. He still further. has it yeah. ready. Teemo this... may be a little greedy here with this. I don't know what he thinks he's doing, but Mograth it can just ult him right yeah. into the wall. But as aggressive ult... now going... Yeah, they're going to go directly into... Uh... Into the Lulu, and will the Lulu be able to survive this? No! Oh. Uh, Shatter will commit the flash for this one, as Anjuritsu is unfortunately not going to be able to get anything with that. Uh, meanwhile, in top lane, Mograf looks like he might be ganked, and he will, and he's going to be able to take the uh, 
the minion out oh, of there no. just in time and they committed a lot to the top lane as well first blood of the series though coming out for uh farmingdale yeah like we said before man their bottom lane has just looked so much better so that is not a duo lane that you would expect to see a 2v2 first blood on two weeks ago uh but these dudes uh, these two have obviously put in a lot of work together and uh you know done everything they can to actually improve that synergy so yeah i mean listen tap uh Hats off to Anjurisu for actually keeping up in farm in a lane where he's just getting constantly shoved in, but First Blood Whoa. does come through. I'm gonna Ooh. stop talking right now because we're gonna have a fight. Here comes Mograth. Right now. Yeah, Mograth jumping right in onto j -Real. Has to onslaught of shadows his way Everyone out. Everyone has to get I out. My IT members down Will here Will Cliff Horse be able to survive? Oh, okay. No, Teemo's gonna get taunted up by Hecti. He's gonna go down immediately. Maybe an overcommit from Farmingdale here doesn't have the Whoa, 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 that was an interaction that just happened. As uh, the Lo <laughs> Leona pulled into the uh, the Nar, but the Nar jumping away just in time, but the 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 pull still committing. As uh, we're gonna have a little bit of a dragon dance right now. Cliff Horse is gonna tickle the uh, tickle the dragon a little bit, and New York Tech gets three. Oh, but New York oh. Tech is gonna be losing two members to the Sivir. The Sivir is gonna now be getting a double kill as New York Tech is trying to salvage back this team fight, and it's not looking too good right now. Yeah, a massive solar flare from Aggressa clips four and stuns about two or three. And the boomerang blades from Shatter just clean up the team fight. An absolute bloodbath. But only two fall on the side of NYIT, blinking health bars on the rest. And that means that Farmingdale, even off of a rusty kind of start of it where Teemo gets caught, still find a way to take the fight and take Drake number two in this game. Farmingdale now up one uh, k gold compared to New York Tech. Jay real going uh, kind of low on that uh, that red <laughs> yeah. buff. Yeah, spicy Make, there, Jay. It's a little, just a little bit, and not the <laughs> best uh, the best ending to a very good team fight for you if you die to red buff right after. Uh, yeah, very but true. New York Tech, uh, n you have to admit the the solar flares coming in at the perfect time. Stop, because uh, Hecti got a I think a three or three members uh, taunt on yeah, that one. A big taunt. So. We're gonna see how this one's gonna play out because now the Sivers uh, 300 uh, with 300 gold bounty and three kills. Yeah, so Shatter is off to the races right here, right now, man. We're talking about the Sivir that's just gonna scale up and be an absolute team fight behemoth. He's already three and zero ahead of his lane partner, he's gonna scale harder than that Kaisa. Gonna have a better team fight than her as the only uh, true damage threat on NYIT. So. This is about as good as you want your first game to go if you are a Farmingdale fan right now. Yeah, definitely fair. Huge three kills over to Shatter to begin with, sitting on that 300 gold shutdown. And, you know, I was looking at the beginning of this game. Udyr actually is about 30 CS up on Jay, oh, which yeah. is something that we're not used to seeing Jay trail behind like that. So props to Cliff Horse in that respect. I mean, he's 32 plus on uh, on Jreal right now, and uh, that's translating. He's able to pick up his chem tank insanely early, um, and just be a little bit more of a presence around the map for this Cyber Squad. Yeah, honestly, to see a jungler have 128 farm at 14 minutes, I'm gonna stop right now. Oh wait, here like comes Jreal. Commit. Yeah, hang on. We'll. See. Oh, he's gonna throw him into the turret. Towards the. Tower, onslaught of shadows to get him out. Teemo's Teemo. up under the tower. Not gonna fall just gonna yet. Gonna go and bury. There. Flash out from Mograth and the ult is burned from Hexia to keep his top laner alive. Flashes yeah. down for the side of Mograth. Ghost burn for J-Real. Onslaught of shadows burn. Oh. But now we're seeing an all in onto the bottom lane. Onto I don't Andrew think he's Risu. able to get out of this, is he? Flare out. He's got a burn flash as well. The flash Great job from, from Farmingdale. Yeah, massive 2v2 down once again for the Farmingdale bot lane. Aggressive takes the kill that time. Both some burn for her, but it's a flash and a killer instinct from Anjurisu gone as well. Looks like Anjurisu didn't see uh, Aggressive slip into the first brush down bot, and uh, that translates to an easy Zenith Blade into the Solar Flare and secures another kill. Uh, and expends the heal too there, so... Uh, the bot lane of NYIT here, little overzealous, I feel, but you also just got to give it to Farmingdale. Great playmaking down here. The bot lane aggressive is not missing in this game number one. Yeah, man, she is. She's uh, 
She's popping off right now. We, we were saying before about how the scale definitely tips into Kratos' favor uh, when it comes to uh, the support matchup, but Aggress is just kind of throwing that yeah. into everybody's face right now. She is playing really, really freaking well right now. Uh, First Tower does go over to the side of Farmingdale as well because of that 2v2 kill. And with the next Drake, the first Drake uh, in the soul count coming up here, that's going to be Earth Drake coming up in about a minute for Farmingdale. So it looks like resets are going to come out. Waves get shoved. J-Rogue going to do just a little bit of counter jungling before this Drake comes up. And both teams are likely going to be lining up here in the next 30 seconds or so to do the dance off once again. Yeah, opting for this Mountain Soul just under one minute. Both teams definitely going to be a pressure point here. We'll have to see if Mograth looks to either rotate or they're just going to burn the teleports and match TPs up in the top lane. But um, right now, I mean, Shatter's massive. So a team fight could be a little sketchy for NYT unless they find the right fight and look for a pick, I think, beforehand. Yeah, so one of the important things to note right now is that Cliff Horse does still have that Rift Herald in his back pocket. So I'm expecting after this Scuttle Crab for him to run likely into the mid lane, drop that Herald to give himself a little bit of pressure and maybe Ooh. forcing a fight. Hold and on, Shipper's getting jumped right on. Yeah, has to burn the ult and flash immediately. Really good pressure and Shatter just maybe not playing around Vision as well as he wanted to, but it's a flank now from J-Rill that actually forces NYIT out of the river and back onto their side of the jungle. So. Even though Shatter's got to burn a lot here to keep himself safe, complete river control now from Farmingdale on the backside of it. Uh, e eager to mention that Mograth actually expended his TP because he was up top, but Teemo did not. He actually just rotates over for the Drake, so I think Farmingdale starts it up here too, and it's uh, slowly ticking down. Yeah, we're going to see a little bit of a team fight out. here. Here comes Best Team Onay is going to go directly to the back line as Onslaught Sai is going to go right through the New York Tech squad. Cliff Horse is going to go low as Hecti will not be able to ult out and Farmingdale going to decisively take the Mountain Drake. Second Drake of the game. Massive Onslaught of Shadows coming out from j -Real. Hits about three members on the backside fearing Hecti and I believe it may have been Cliff Horse or Mograth back into the team of, or back into the waiting arms of the Ram, I should say. So with Hecti going down there immediately, NYT just has no option but to give it up. So really, really good play by NY, or by Farmingdale there to, uh, to kind of get good river control and to get the team fight victory over NYT and secure themselves Drake number two. Yeah, another kill going over to Shatter, sitting pretty with that 450 gold shutdown, but no flash in his arsenal. So this next team fight, I would expect one of the members of NYIT to really try to hunker him down and lock him down because if he has no spell shield, he is a sitting duck with no flash. Yeah, I got to say that once again, though, we're kind of seeing the... Uh the bad moments of the draft coming through here for NYT. Hot and Gay had a really questionable position there. Once his gravity field went down, Cliff Horse just ran right up to him and hit the stun button, and he burned Hot and Gay's cleanse immediately. So yeah, was Hot and Gay in any really immediate danger because he did have cleanse? No, but he did let Cliff Horse walk right up to him and, and, and get some CC down onto him. So I don't know, you can't help but to think, but maybe if Hecti was on something like, like an Echo or, or just something yeah. that's good and can follow up with damage, or same to Mograth, Ooh, right? Like Mograth is not able to connect with the ult, but is going to try to get some follow-up damage down on the on the turnaround. Yeah, Mininar going in and uh, getting a little bit of damage. Second Rift Tarot. Oh, they get it again. What did hey, that what? happen? I must have missed something, but... That's okay. They're still able. Uh, well, they are at least able to crack a uh, mid turret, which is a nice consolation prize for these uh, unfavorable team fights that they've been having. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So just a little bit of gold back over into the pocket of NYIT. Gold at 20 minutes is sitting at about a 2k gold lead now in the favor of the Rams. So uh, most of that gold lead definitely going to be in Shatter's pocket. Uh, so Farmingdale is definitely going to be really, really happy about that one. Yeah, and Tom and. We were guys. We were talking at the beginning of this game. The eyes are going to be on Shatter, and he's delivering right off the rip for the Rams. A huge momentum swing, I think, for them as their team captain. So, uh, if you're the Rams right now, you, you're feeling pretty good. But you can't count the uh, the side bears out yet. This team late game, if it is able to come online, it is very scary. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm. I'm 
I think that overall you gotta just be happy for the Rams in the sense that last week their early games were really not looking too good, right? We kind of talked about that bit of a blip of a game on against Malloy where it felt like none of them were really on the same page. Everybody was kind of doing different things. They were kind of opting out of tower dives when the other was going in. It was sort of just all over the place, but this game we're kind of seeing everybody sort of on the same page and it's been working out beautifully for them. Well, we're going to now see Mograth in that top lane trying to jump or uh, break down that top tier tower. And same over to Farmingdale in the mid lane. Shatter getting this wave shoved in. He's going to be able to get this pretty tower. easily. Yeah. yeah. And not a problem for a Sivir at all. So mid tower does fall for NYIT. This map's opening up. Yeah, Mograth's still bullying Teemo, though, up here. Even though Teemo opts for the Stride Breaker. Mutual stride breakers for the both of the top laners, but he also opts for a bramble vest. Doesn't opt to finish his boots just yet, though. So um, I feel like I like the merc. I think he's going for the merc treads here, and we'll see how that ends up panning out for him. A little bit of that tenacity coming through. Yeah, I think you definitely got to go for the merc treads in a heavy CC comp like uh, NYIT have drafted for themselves. So I'm definitely going to be expecting uh, that to come out here for him. But. We will see all in good time. Baron is up. It's been live for about two minutes now. So either of these teams, if they get a good macro chance, can absolutely go toward that Drake, or excuse me, that Baron uh, between Udir and Kaisa, and then between you know the rest of the members of Farmingdale. Both teams should not have a problem taking it uh, fairly quickly. I'll say neither of these teams really have like a super slow dragon take, but. It looks like the eyes are definitely going to be on the fourth Drake of the game, which comes up in about 30 seconds. River Control. And that's going to be top turret going down for uh, as New York Tech is yep. going to finally be able to get that one. So that's going to be it's going to be almost like a, a mirror finish on both sides, yeah. to be completely honest. <laughs> yeah, the only tier one standing left is actually, or excuse me, I am misspeaking because tier one is up for Farmingdale in the bot side and tier one is actually still up for NYT in the top side so pressure going that way but There's either way dragon fight, though. teams yeah looking for the dragon Hi, dance has good. his uh, has oh. his cleanse still that's a lot of vision wards in the uh <laughs> yeah boomerang yeah boomerangs from both squads boomerang from the Sivir and boomerang from Mograz Nar just getting tossed out both teams trying to chunk the other down as much as they possibly can drake is now started up j real looks like he's trying to pull it over to the side uh his Armin side maybe like up here though yeah Shatter's i think they want mid. the drake i think they want the drake to just kind of focus down cliff force for a while and i think the idea is to get that mid wave shoving and maybe you know in this dance off make nyt just lose a little bit more farm so i actually like this a lot but Overall, uh, the poke is definitely favoring NYT pretty heavily. That Drake's going to do a little bit of damage, but a slow auto attack is not going to do too, too much. Meganar now in Mograth, and this is where NYT are just going to try to force it down. Meganar has oh, his ult. It's going to be really hard Ooh. to get through, yeah. And there goes Burns the ult, and, about and they're going to be pushing yet. everybody back. I'm not going to be able to put any, any stuns on anybody just yet, as they're going to be facing down, and they're going to be able to get rid of Kratos. It's going to be a pretty big team fight coming up on all sides. Shatter's going to be chasing down the Gnar, and Farmingdale looks like it might will be winning this team fight very decisively again. Too much damage coming out on all fronts right now as Hecti is going to even get the the the, uh, oh. the taunt, but uh, Shatter's still able to get rid of Hecti on the backside of that. Not enough damage coming in just yet as Farmingdale is going to be chasing New York Tech back down to their second tier turret and and just getting this one. Yeah, so Farmingdale actually lose the Drake in that. It looked like J-Real was maybe opting to go into the Drake and go for the 1v1 smite fight, but instead he just says, you know what, Andres is right here. I'm diving on his face. Uh, Farmingdale do take down three in this fight. While they only trade Shatter's life, he does actually throw the shutdown over uh, onto Andresu, so that's definitely not the person you want it to be on. So I'm going to go ahead and say that not a terrible trade in any way, shape, or form for the Cybears. But three kills do go over to Farmingdale's side, so that gold lead gonna be jumping up just a little bit, if not, uh, if not at all, you know, for the Rams here. Interesting point here. Uh, Andrew Risu actually, either with that shutdown gold or he had it saved up, opts for the Lord Dominic's second item on this Kaisa. Huh. So a lot of armor shred coming out because he's gonna be hitting that uh, Hecarim and that. Um, Renekton primarily in these fights, but 
an in, an interesting second item choice, in my opinion. Tom, what do you think about that? Because you're obviously a Kaisa player yourself. Yeah, I I I don't hate it, only because I th Lord Dom definitely did just get hit on this patch, but not anywhere near to the point where the item is not insanely super strong like it was before. It's still an incredible item. I don't know if I'm ready to commit the fact that it was a great second item. I still think Collector is super good here. It gives Kaisa everything she needs. Uh, and not to mention that the Execute is obviously super, super Ooh, good. Yeah, hold on. Nice pull Zenith coming play, in. Everything burns down from Aggressa, and Kratos just gets evaporated. Hecti now in the middle of four, though. The plant's going to get him over to the wall, but right into the arms of the Farmingdale carries. He's not long for this world at all. It's Shatter is just going to auto-attack him down, but it's J-Real that picks up the final kill. Two for row for the side of the Rams, and it's the top lane turret that's now in their sight. Yeah, Farming Joe looking unbelievably strong this game, kind of putting all their, their chips in onto the Sivir, and the Sivir just paying off for them over and over again, as uh, even though, like, uh, Teemo not even not winning the the top lane in the laning phase still able to get two kills in a team fight still being renekting kind of able to go directly to the back line like we said in during the uh, during the draft phase and kind of just start singling people out yeah I think that the support victor for the Rams is really paying off oh oh and seven for hot and gay right now in the mid lane uh, <laughs> while it's it's a lot better than being oh and seven oh but it, it still definitely hurts to be a scaling victor and have zero kills, but nonetheless, Farmingdale is going to be really, really happy that at least one of their carries is super fed right now and able to kind of carry a lot of these fights for them. But yeah, I mean, Shatter, if you look at the items, he's an entire uh, item, full item up on Anjurisu. So even though, you know, Anjurisu is doing a really, really great job at staying safe in a lot of these fights, his KDA looks great. You know, he's not getting caught out too, too much outside of that first time in the lane. Uh, he's keeping up with farm against the server, which is incredibly hard to do. He's having a great game for himself, but Shatter, man, just picking up so many kills in these fights. He's just running away with this game right now for the Rams. Yeah, like you said, just insanely strong right now. He's almost level 13. Uh, three items to his name. App actually just picked up a stopwatch, too. So, well, Ooh, they're like going to focus down best team out. Yeah, they're going to be knocking him back, and Mograf is trying to get this ult. Will he be able to teleport uh, yeah, in time? Oh, no, he's going to be stable to one. stun him out, and they're going to be moving him back, and they will finally get everybody, but uh, wow, best team on a, just uh, able to level get the shutdown as uh, Farmingdale will be focusing down this Baron. They should know about Double this. DP coming out. Yeah, we'll see if uh, NYIT is able to get there in time, but this Baron is just going down way too quickly. No, they are not. Good Solar Flare to zone out the rest of NYIT follow-up. Stopwatch is going to be burned out from Hecti, but the Rams trade their top laner for a Baron. That is not a bad trade if I do say so myself. Teemo was just able to stall so much time with the healing from his inherent Q. Uh, I, I think NYT thought they had him, and then he queued and got like a third of his health back, and it was like, wait a minute, he's not dead. So, took a little bit more time, and even though NYT forced both teleports, they still can't find anything with the Baron. Farm Baron goes over to Farming Gun, and now they're going to scoop up this dragon here. Yeah, so they're going to scoop up this dragon, but I think Farmingdale is going to be happy to give it. Now they have really low priority, and Farmingdale can just march down this midwave and maybe even take an inhibitor for themselves. I don't know why they're really not posturing for it. They should just be walking right up and attacking this turret, but they're actually going to opt to not. They're going to say, you know what, we're not really too sure about this. They're coming off of fresh backs. So maybe we don't really want to go for this, but I think Farmingdale definitely had the tempo there to where they could have just easily forced down that Drake, you know, or excuse me, forced down that tower, but... Either way, a uh, good call from NYIT to just scoop up that Drake, make sure that Farmingdale can at least, or at least loses something for that Baron. What's also oh, interesting geez. is that now, uh, even though like NYT not doing the best this entire team fight, but one more, if they are able to secure one more uh, Dragon, that's going to be a lot of shields for their, for their backline coming up with the, with the Mountain Drake soul. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that you're you're right on that. It's going to make Farmingdale's job of bursting these uh, or getting through at least these front lines, right, a lot harder. And the die from Farmingdale is definitely going to have a lot harder of a job, especially through a you know a Lulu already. It's it, it's it's a good spot and a good win con for NYIT, no doubt. Uh, we'll see how it ends up shaping up, but Farmingdale looks like they're just putting the siege down onto him. Since Timo did fall early. Uh, was not up for that Baron. He's not going to have Baron, so it looks like a few members are just going to come up here and support him and just kind of 
make sure that these uh, Baron Ooh. waves are getting thrown in. But Mugrath throws Teemo right in. Good job to just walk right out, but it looks like he might just get taunted up under the tower. Teemo still no tanking. Not oh my god. Just yet, but the rest of the fight is going really well for Farmdale. Nobody dies somehow. <laughs> so much is thrown out from both sides. It's the ult from Hecti, it's the ult from Mograth, it's the ult from Kratos as well, but Farmingdale are able to walk out. And now inhibitor towers are down, inhibitors are sure to follow, but not Another yet. taunt we'll coming in, we'll be able to get the support, but it will be a maybe a little bit too little too late. As uh, they are going to be going directly onto Hot and Gay, Hot and Gay is going to be able to pop the Zonias. As uh, Farming Deal is still running away with multiple objectives while this entire team fight is happening. They're able to pick up two and Farming Deal able to run out, not able to... Oh, the, the the spell shield not gonna be able to. It's not gonna. It's not gonna be able to keep him alive, and he's not gonna be able to survive that time. Oh. He's able to get two though, which is absolutely insane. As he will be going down. New York Tech is gonna be able to get the ace, but uh, Shatter is able to pick up two. Yeah, Shatter does an absolutely outstanding job there. Spell shield does come out a little early, so the taunt does connect from Hecti, but. Kind of, kind of, kind of like that double lift uh, clip. If anybody knows that clip of him in the bot lane where he comes out of the zone isn't just able to pick up so many kills on the back end of it. So Shatter doing a really good job at at least making sure that you know two inhibitors fall. So probably not going to be able to get too much anyway. But with two dead, definitely not going to be able to really get too much off the side of the ram. So Rams do get ace. Baron does go down inevitably, but it's a 4.5k gold lead at 32 minutes into the game, and the Cy Bears have two inhibitors down interesting thing to mention is that shatter had the stopwatch there on that hecti taunt but opted not to use it and now actually just translates it into a guardian angel so an even harder sivir to kill on top of the spell shield the ultimate and now this second life so uh but andrisu on the other side ends up picking up two kills this kaisa is slowly turning online so Farmingdale's got to be a little careful. He'll try and get after this uh, final inhibitor and final tower. Dragon's going to come up in 1 minute and 11 seconds. So I think there might be posturing for that. Because uh, Baron's not going to be able... It's not going to come for another 20 seconds after that. So um, Farmingdale looking to push as many lanes in as much as they possibly can. So let's see what they're able to do with this one. Yeah, it looks like now with both lanes, uh, top and mid, they're going to have pretty easy pressure with those inhibitor waves just automatically shoving into the base. All five members of Farmingdale are posturing down here for this mid inhibitor. I bet it's probably just a stall out for that Drake, if I had to guess. Uh, they're going to be able to probably just pick that up, no problem, as NYIT really can't do much about leaving their base. Uh, so Farmingdale going to be able to likely take this Drake uh, without contest, which will put both teams onto sole point. 34 minutes into this game. But as of right now, we see the Rams just pushing right back into bottom lane. 15 seconds left until that Drake spawns. Maybe now that the lane, top lane, man, that Mograth is kind of preoccupied. Maybe we see the Rams look for a bit of a push here. Try to take that tower. And that we damage do. coming yeah. in. Yeah, Shatter is just going to be able to take this tower and a few more auto attacks. They might have to wait for one more wave. They might opt to just go take this Drake, but we'll see what the call is. I think they're sticking around. They no, really yeah, want this turret. They're just, just walking just right it. up and saying, no, 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 gimme, gimme, gimme. And yeah, I don't think and NYT, NYT, yeah, NYT doesn't have any any adjustments. Like, they, they don't have anything to get to the back line. The Sivir, I mean, if you're able to get rid of her, it's going to be a, it's gonna be a, a slightly... A, a slightly favorable team fight for you, but there's still a lot of now other things you have to worry about. It's not just a Sivir. Yeah, absolutely. And and with that tower getting broken down, Farmingdale are not going to opt to take the inhibitor just yet, as they are going to take that Drake. Baron is up and on the map, so we'll see if any, either of these teams are able to posture over for it. Farmingdale should definitely have the opportunity here, as both inhibitors are still down for the side of the Psy Bears. Looks like Teemo is opting to maybe get a little bit of split push action on us. He still does have that TP, but the remaining members of Farmingdale are moving now towards that top side of the map. Looks like it's just going to be a slow, methodical push here to choke the Psy Bears out of this victory. Something you mentioned, Tom, earlier in the game was the support uh, victor in a way. Obviously mm -hmm. sitting 0-1-7, it's not the ideal scoreline, but 300 farm 
and also just so potent with his zone control yeah. and the W. He's just, the gravity field is so good in restricting NYT from getting onto Farmingdale's back line. And that's really proved to be a difference here. But in the event that NYT is able to get on top of both of them, it could spell disaster. Yeah, absolutely. This Farmingdale squad now is starting Baron up, and that thing just gets absolutely obliterated so incredibly quick with that Victor and Sivir, like we said before. So Baron back into the hands of Farmingdale. They're going to get a nice little reset off, pick up the last few items, and look for the ending push onto the side bears. Back out onto the map. We'll see what their lane assignments will be in just a second. So even though that last Drake, you know, soul point for both of these teams is coming up in three minutes, I highly doubt that Farmingdale want that game or want this game to go to that point regardless. Yeah, still a lot of game left to play here. But closing in, Farmingdale looking for the dagger that does it. Slowly just pushing in waves. They have the Baron. Shatter has his QSS now. He's at four items fully with the LDR just recently picked up and 300 plus farm. So he is massive. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Teemo's going to be splitting in the bot wave here just to get a little bit of pressure, make it harder for the NYT to clear out these Baron up minions. Hecti looks like he's on a bit of a flank, going to get spotted out now. Winds of War going to give him away, but Aggress is just going to be able to take the Banshee off of him so that he doesn't... Ooh, they're going to go try to go directly on him. Shatter needing to pop the ult as New York Tech is going to try to make one last commitment to see if they can get rid of the members of Farmingdale. But Clip Force is already going low as the onslaught of Shatter is going to go right through. His best team will enable to be able to get rid of Hecti 12. New York Tech is going to see if they could survive this as and uh, as their AD carry will be going down and Farmingdale looking to finish off their first game of this of the of the series with a dominating 1-0. Best team on A is going to see if they could chase down Mograph. Clip Force and Mograph not going to look too good as I don't think I doubt they'll be able to fight multiple member plus his fed Siver who's just kind of tearing right through the team. Great job, yeah. amazing team fight from Farmingdale and that reaction just to kind of get out of that as quickly as possible. Yeah, really really good job by Farmer by Farmingdale to kind of negate the engage from NYIT and they are going to take game 1 in our series. The Rams go up to 1 and 0. Oh. Yeah, that was an explosive game one. I was not expecting that kind of performance from Shatter. He shut me right up. So, but that's what we were kind of saying, guys, right? Like, Shatter had the microscope on him, and he totally delivered a final score line of, I believe it was 8 2 and uh, 8. So, massive performance from him, and just so strong, so difficult for this Cybear team to deal with. They had the lead early, but with those kills just going over to the server, they couldn't really do much. And he was just able to kind of turn online and carry the game, essentially. Yeah, an interesting stat here at the end of the game. Uh, Hot and Gay and Mograth, the Victor and the Gnar, had relatively the same exact damage, with Mograth just barely able to eke out at about 21,100. Shatter ending out the game with 36,300 damage, just doing work on that server, man. Yeah, no doubt about it. Um, I believe we're going to quickly take yep. a short break. And when we come back, we will have game number two of this series coming up. Farmingdale, though, take game one, up one nothing. We'll be right back.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the ECC Esports League of Legends Finals. I'm your host, Michael Absolute Malazi. I have Eliza Duran, the director of NYIT Esports here, as well as Thomas T. Rob III Robinson. And boys, what an explosive game number one from Farmingdale. Yeah, man, absolutely. Uh, I, I said it before and I'm going to say it again. I really, really, really liked their draft and I really, really, really did not like NYITs. I think they got a really uh, a lot of really, really good power picks for themselves and I think they got a lot of comfort. But overall, I think that Farmingdale did a really good job at, I'm going to stop saying really, did a good job at uh, <laughs> figuring out kind of their recipe for drafting. I think that they understood that the Ash and the... the uh, the Nautilus were a huge engage tools that they heavily rely on. And outside of that, you know, there were multiple times that uh, NYIT were kind of first on scene for, for a Drake or for, you know, whatever it was that they were contesting. And Farmingdale were able to kind of like walk right up and they didn't really have any engage tools outside of Mograth maybe landing an okay Gnarled. So I think that Farmingdale did a great job at drafting. And I think they did an even better job at playing together as a team, like we said, or like we hoped that they would. Uh, this is definitely not looking like a game one and two Malloy series. This is definitely looking like a game three and four from this team. So I'm definitely really happy to see what they brought after us in game one. Yeah, definitely. Duran, what, what's your takeaway uh, here for NYIT? Yeah, I, I think I think it's kind of just exactly what we discussed discussed during uh during draft. Uh, they didn't have enough damage to kind of deal with uh, the big the big carries that were going to eventually come up for for farming though and unfortunately that first team fight didn't go that way two two kills directly to the sivir and then shatter just absolutely popping off even though in the middle of like yeah. a 4v5 able to get two kills <laughs> before going down still not popping the the zonias remember it still it did not even <laughs> use the thing and i know there's a lot of shatter uh fans in chat who and it, <laughs> it, it, it's definitely it's definitely 100 percent deserved because farming deal absolutely popped off during that match as the uh, new york texas center has to figure out a new way in back into this game because that draft that that they just did that ain't it chief because <laughs> because they need they need hecty on something that's a little bit more powerful or something that can that that it's put him back on that echo like the echo that gave him is like his first pentakill in uh in like like week number three that he popped off on i think giving him something that really like even if if the sivir did pop off if if hecty just happened to be an echo at that point she would die regardless if he gets next to her she could just pop ult and then just yep. get all the way back so i think i think uh new york texas needs to reevaluate their draft here because if they like i said like like we said before if farmingdale is allowed to get any farther than than like a couple kills onto shatter then they're gonna just run away run away with the game yeah yeah i, I, I couldn't I, sorry I, I totally agree sorry tom um but I, I kind of wanted to flip a question right back to Duran. Um, mm -hmm. You know, Hecti have on this Galio pick, not really having a lot of pressure. But at you know, as we said, he was the team captain. So keeping your team in it is obviously a crucial point in League of Legends, and it's only one game in a best of five. So mm -hmm. do you think that right now in their Discord chat or whatever they're using, that they are like not worried that they are just on to the next one let's move on from it shake it off and go go next essentially yeah i made sure to message the team and say like don't worry guys you guys <laughs> got this then a lot of messages came in after it saying don't yeah we'll where they're basically the mentality on new york tech right now is uh shake it off move on to the next game this ff next yeah. game um <laughs> as uh because at, at a certain point like what else are you supposed to do about shatter like absolutely popped off in such an, an obscene way as New York Tech is kind of just kind of kind of has to reset their mental because remember best of fives are basically just an entire an, an endurance race at that point yeah. like if this game Definitely. if this gets to game five it's whoever it's not whoever plays best well it's, it's a big factor whoever plays best but it's at a certain point it's like how much can you handle before you just start making mistakes one after the other and you can't mentally recover from that so uh it's it's good news to hear from the cybers camp but uh it's not really gonna mean much until they win their first game or they pop off during this next game because you can obviously say that you're that you're doing fine but it's like when you, like that meme says when you're real when you say that you're fine but you're not really fine kind of deal <laughs> yeah. and um we're gonna see we're gonna see how they're how they're gonna do for this next uh this next map yep. yeah absolutely yeah. Uh, i i think that my big thing for NYT, I think they definitely got to switch the draft up a little bit. I don't mind Hecti on the Galio. I think he played an okay game on it. 
Uh, I think it was definitely really hard for him to do what he needed to do on it uh, against that specific comp. But put Mograth onto a carry. Get him off Nar, man. Put him onto something that he's going to actually be able to influence the game heavily with. You know what I mean? Put him onto something like the Camille or, or something that is going to pair well with that Gar Galio. Something that Galio can actually roam to and actually do something with. So that's kind of what I'm expecting from this team. Uh, I think that somewhere in there you got to get another carry or two. I, I definitely agree, Duran. I think that's something like an Echo... Or, or just some type of carry, something to uh, let another one of these players free them up to, to kind of put the weight of the game on their shoulders a little bit is definitely what they need. And uh, I think that all of us can agree that we're expecting that for game two. But for right now, we're going into uh, the bans, the draft for uh, game two. It's going to be Timo, Sivir, and Olaf all banned out for the Cy Bears and the Farming Deal are going to apply with an Aatrox and the Mordekaiser once again. Yeah, like we said before, man, I don't think that Mograth to see in either of those picks uh, in this series at all. <laughs> it's, it's almost and, like uh, it's almost like those things when it's like uh, when you're doing like EMS training or or any kind of doctorate to, to help people in the field, where it says when, when there's bleeding, apply immediate pressure to the hemorrhaging. <laughs> and it's, it's just like, we, like, like, if I, I feel like if if we were we went into a game where it's just like an ARAM where it's just a lane between Mograf and Best Teemo, if Mograf was just allowed to just continue farming and not have to worry about anybody else on the team, it would have gotten very, very dire for top lane. So I think I think it's a really great job from Farming Deal to kind of recognize what kind of player Mograf is and just start focusing down those those carries that you know like regard like if Aatrox or or um or Mordekaiser just do okay it's over. Like, I don't, like, it, it's, it's, it just gets um, very, very difficult for, uh, for farming deal. But, uh, New York Tech like, seems to be listening to your advice as they will be picking up the gal, you first pick. Yeah, so Ooh. Seraphine left up, and we are going to have it the first showing from either of these teams on Seraphine, and it's going to be picked up. Now, we've seen that a lot generally in mid lane or support or AD carry. Who knows? Maybe Shatter will pick it up for bot lane. I highly doubt it, especially <laughs> after that first game performance. Uh, but, you know, that's a, that's a flex pick for the point of Farmingdale, right? That's very hard now for uh, for the rest of NYIT to draft around. So it's going to be the Udyr and the Seraphine. And in response from NYIT, we're going to see the Skarner. And we'll see what Hecti end up uh, ends up locking in here for his team. It is going to be the Nautilus. So, yeah, immediately saying, all right, guys, listen, we did not have <laughs> Hear me out. Paid in that first game. We really need one of these two picks. And they opt to take the uh, Nautilus. I think that's a fantastic pick into something like the Seraphine. There's no way that Farmingdale locks in a Cogmo right now. <laughs> I think Shatter is uh... just toying with us maybe a little bit. I think we are really getting trolled just yeah, a I would be little shocked if that here. comes in. I was about we'll to say, you're going to need a lot more protection for that Cogma. To okay. say the least. <laughs> Going to be a Tristana here for Farmingdale. I like this a lot, and I'm going to come out and say it. I already am not loving this draft for NYT. I think we're running into the same exact problem that we saw in Game 1. We have drafted so far a Galio, a Skarner, and a Nautilus. Of those three picks, the highest damaging champion is the Galio. Hecti's Galio is not going to be hard carrying a lot of these team fights. So already... Farmingdale recognizing the Camille is coming out. I really like that ban a lot. They recognize that, okay, they're going to need an AD carry with high DPS, and they're going to need a carry top laner. So they're immediately targeting Mograth to try to force him deep, uh, even deeper into that champion pool. So Camille is going to be the ban for Farmingdale. Zillion is going to be the reply uh, for NYIT. Eager to see what farming they'll have planned for hot and gay is they're on the red side this game and probably going to save the counter pick for him but even now like you know that the galio is most likely gonna go mid but yeah i mean there's no other place you can go with the nautilus pick right i mean hey. it's going mid has hecti played nautilus mid no did we fact check that yeah uh, i could tell i could a... i could tell you, you without even point. looking <laughs> okay so We'll see. I doubt it. I'm pretty sure we're going to see one. Galio in mid lane here. Yeah, so yeah. Farmingdale hovering their first pick, and it is going to be the Orn. So already, all Farmingdale needs to draft now is just a really high DPS uh, mid laner. I would be pretty surprised if that Seraphine is going mid, because already we're seeing really low damage numbers from both of these teams, honestly. Oh. Tristana, the only really true damage threat locked in so far in seven picks. So... Likely going to be uh, seeing that Seraphine go into uh, support pick for Aggressa, and we'll see Hot and Gown something oh, that's okay. Oh, 
Okay. You a said you wanted damage. How does true damage sound for you? Because yeah. Set can literally just run in, get like four million quadrillion shields, <laughs> and then stun people and then RKO the uh, the Seraphine into oblivion. So uh, we're gonna see uh, yeah. Yeah. finally able to see Set uh, on Mograth. Hopefully, unless that's a unless it's a mid lane because that could happen still. Yeah, I know. Yeah, he I... plays it a lot, but I think. Right now, if I'm Farmingdale, Orianna's still up. Yeah. So that's probably where my pick is going to be. You already know that the mid lane is going to be the gal. Or I, I shouldn't say you know who it's going to be, but it's a high uh, chance. With yeah, with Orianna being still on the table and left up, and with the Zillion banned out, I would be shocked if Farmingdale opt for anything else. Maybe the Victor again, but I think the Orianna is just good. But no, they oh, opt for the Victor. Victor so they're going stand completely the corrected. Yeah, I. I... I think that that's actually not a bad pick. I, I, I can't say that I, I disagree with you in any regard that the Orianna would have been a great pick here, but really outside of something like the Seraphine ult, you're not going to be having too many tools on this Farmingdale squad to kind of give you that really nice wombo combo. Finding a lot of the shockwaves will kind of be on you. Uh, so I think that the Victor is something that just pairs really, really well. We just saw that even on no kills, it can still do really, really good work. It's obviously a, a comfort pick for Hot and Gay. It does really well into the Galio, kind of just shove him under his tower uh, and prevent a lot of that roaming from occurring. So I think that overall, Farmingdale is super, super happy in this matchup. It still fits really well into this general team comp. It's high damage. It's good scaling. It's good pressure. They're happy to lock it in. So these two teams are taking us into game two. I hate to be the pessimist here, but I'm less happy about this NYIT draft, more so in game two yeah. than I am in game one. I mean, Jin is your only carry here. Uh, if, if I'm J-Real, I'm sitting bot lane. I, I'm saying Seraphine, go get level six. And uh, just I'm thinking click R. Yeah, click R, and we're killing this kid. We're, we're going to hard camp this guy and make sure that he is getting as few resources as he possibly can. I think that overall, uh, can it work? It, it's a good disengage, I would say, right? The Skarner and the Set are definitely super good disengage tools uh, for the side of NYT, so it will be hard for J-Real to kind of really get in in one of these team fights. But if you're talking about your ability to really push forward and look for uh, an entrance somewhere, NYT doesn't really have it too much. It's kind of up to Kratos to find a good creative pick and maybe catch out Hot and Gay or Shatter in one of these big team fights. It's... I don't know. I actually don't know what to say. Um, I think if the set kind of just does well and you can kind of just like take the Seraphine and just throw her really far... That'd be great, but right now you're you're basically on a timer. Uh, I think I think NYT is basically on a timer versus uh versus farming deal because at a certain point Tristana is going to be getting with with her range on her passive will get to a point where it's kind of just like I don't need the rest of my team. I'll just walk up to the turret out of range of the turret and I'll shoot the turret. Um, <laughs> and not to mention the the uh I think the the LCS cast you call them ornaments, which from Orn, so that's gonna. <laughs> That's gonna yeah. that's gonna provide even more even more damage potential for for farming deal. But on the NYT side, if I'm with me being hopeful, uh, Skarner Galio set can go deep into the back line, and if Gene is allowed to kind of free free fire for about like five or like two seconds, he should be able to get something. But let, then again, we have to just kind of just wait to see how this game is gonna play out because you don't know. It's just I think so, I think they're gonna have just play protect the gin comp at this point because yeah. like you said if 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 yeah. he dies, it's gonna be really unlikely unless set kind of just everybody just hey can everybody just stand in a straight line for me really quick <laughs> okay cool I'm gonna just I'm gonna punch mm -hmm. through your whole team cool true damage okay wonderful but now the problem is still at that <laughs> point is still Seraphine can kind of just idly do like little 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 like cartwheels yeah, cartwheels on like the side of the of the of the of the of the stage and then heal up the team without having to worry about anything standing in a straight line against a seraphine may not be the greatest battle plan for NYID, yeah so, so it, yeah, we'll if, see if we'll, whoever we'll stands see. in a straight line first loses the game <laughs> it's, True. at that point it's over um it's, uh, shatter is gonna have to tell his team to scatter <laughs> ah. 
Hey, <laughs> got him. What? He's what I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna click the next button. I'm just gonna click the next button. We're just gonna, it's yeah, gonna just move get, into this get, one. Get him out of here. But get that boys, guy we're out into, here. we're into game two now. Favorite uh, skin, favorite skin right now, quick. Favorite Ooh, skin in the game. That's a tough one. I don't I know. I, I, I think Infernal Galio. Infernal Galio is a is a pretty dope skin. Obsidian Dragon Set too is. That's also another one I was about to say. Blood Moon Jin. Blood Moon Jin looks pretty nice for me personally, and I think probably the saddest skin out of all of these is the Dragon Trainer Chisana. Have you seen the death animation for that? It's sad, yeah. It's actually she depressing. Just dies yeah. and the dragon like curls up. Next yeah, to yeah, it's really sad. So really uh, sad. I think that's they're trying uh, farming deal using the skin strat for this game. Yeah. Uh, it says, hey, if you kill Tristana, you're gonna have to deal with uh, with the guilt of a dragon by itself. <laughs> yeah, it's something. Yeah, some karma. Exactly. That skin actually gives you a one HP shield. Fun fact. <laughs> I love just that idea. It's just like <laughs> it's like if you're playing Kaisa and you put the helmet on, one HP shield. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Immune to headshot damage. <laughs> <laughs> Kaisa counters Jen, man. What do you can say? Counters Kaylin with the headshot. No. Oh, true. Oh my god. <laughs> Wait, you forgot about the Kaylin. <laughs> 80 carry main. Oh, yeah, yeah. Did we just uh, break the game? I think <laughs> we. Uh, I think we figured out Riot's biggest secret. And we did it. Yeah. Someone call Riot up right, right up. now. We right did off it. the rip. You see. NYIT, they have the Nautilus. They're gonna maybe wrap around here around this top side. Yeah, As look five. like they're gonna get a cheeky little engage. Maybe yeah. look for something onto, you know, whoever's stacking up in this bush. Timo's gonna have to do a good job at sneaking, sniffing this one. Cole is gonna connect and they were gonna be able to stun, lock, and kill off. Best Teemo, that was uh. Goes to Jin too. And it is, yeah, it goes directly onto Jin. That's gonna be first blood. Gonna be able to go back, buy a little bit extra for himself, and kind of get in a little bit of a uh, advantage in the lane. Farmingdale is gonna uh is going to ward up the the uh the side for New York Tech, but um I think the damage has already been done quite literally. <laughs> yeah, no yeah, doubt. So immediately, the guy you want the first blood on for NYT. He's got it. So Jin is just going to have that little bit of extra pressure in this lane, especially when you pair it with a Nautilus against a Seraphine. Uh, this is not a lane that we will likely see a 2v2 kill going in favor of Farmingdale. Now, Aggressa does have Exhaust, which can do a very good job at shutting down Jin's early game pressure, right? Just Exhaust when he's got four shot up. He can't do anything for like three seconds or however long Exhaust lasts for, so... Uh, not a terrible matchup in any way, right? Like, they, they'll scale really, really hard, but... Anjurisu, th this game is kind of on you. I think he had a great game one performance, uh, all things, you know, considered, but he, he's really got to step up here right now. You know, Duran, I think you, you said it the best. I, I think that this is a straight-up front-to-back style, uh, protect the AD carry kind of comp, and, you know, if we get to that late-game gen, it's, it's... He'll be doing some really, really good damage, no doubt. Yeah, those four shots are going to connect as Hecti's going to get a little bit of damage onto Hot and Gay. Uh, going to be trade. moving back, and uh, yeah, like you said, good trade overall. Uh, Hot and Gay still with the cleanse, though. So we're going to see how that one's going to play out for uh, for Farming Jade in the later team fights. Uh, yeah, no doubt. I, I, I hope that Hot and Gay is aware of the fact that cleanse does not get you out of a Skarner ult. It is a suppression. Cleanse does not remove suppression. Oh, and no. correct me if I'm wrong, if anybody does know the answer to this, but I'm pretty sure that Set's ult is also a suppression. Okay. I believe so in the actual um, animation. Yeah. I right. So. so pretty sure that mm -hmm. Cleanse is going to be fairly useless against both Cliff Horse and Mograth's uh, ultimate abilities, so... You know, I, I don't know about the cleanse here. I th really, all it's going to help you with is maybe like a Deadly Flourish from Jin or a Taunt from Hecti. You know, you're not really going to cleanse anything that Kratos has to throw at you, so... Not 100% sure on that summoner pick for Hot and Gay, but... And again, he is the one here, and we are not, so... I'll <laughs> yeah. let him rock. Yeah, we'll have to see. I, I feel like in this Bali matchup again, it's kind of like... The role reversal here. Uh, Kratos was on that Lulu who really had to watch her footing against the Leona, and this game, 
aggresses on the Seraphine, who really has to watch her footing against this Nautilus. One hook, and it could be uh, disastrous for her. So, Rome. like t like Tom, you said though, with the um, and roaming, yeah, yeah. But um, with the exhaust, it kind of negates and you know lessens the effects of that all in maybe. But sure. obviously, that's up every three and a half minutes or so. Um, so there's going to be a little bit of a window for NYT to really capitalize if it is forced out from her. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I, I think that's definitely a good point to bring up. You know, the, the shoe is definitely now on the other foot, as they say, and uh, we just got to see how Farmingdale does end up dealing with it. This is there's if, if everything goes perfectly for the Rams right now, it's going to be a super, super boring lane where they get to just kind of, you know, put their feet up and kind of just farm this one out for the next 15 minutes or so. Uh, which once again means that we will likely see a lot of pressure going over to the top side. A lot of CC onto these guys. Mm -hmm. uh, Duran, you brought up the idea of the true damage coming out from Set. I do agree that his early game damage is going to be super, super strong, and they're going to have to kind of rely on it because, yeah, Cliff Horse can come mid and, and you know, ult Tot and Gay and bring him right into the waiting arms of Hecti, but you don't really bring anybody else here. Where's your damage coming from? You know, Hecti's got to put quite a bit of damage out to, to, to uh, you know, 100 to 0, hot and gay. So not a lot of damage on this top side of the map, which means that we'll likely see a lot of priority going to J Real. So we'll just have to see how that plays out and what he does. And actually, as I'm saying it, I notice J Real is in uh, Cliff Horse's jungle. He's taking away a few camps. Looks like the rest of the... Uh, Cyber's are him? trying get to spotted out though. on him. Yeah, he's not going to have time. Ooh, he's going to see him off. just in time. Is Jay real? Oh, oh no, he's going to be oh, able to pull no. him back. The pop lost him. He's going to have to pop the flash. Amazing job from Mograv. He's going to pull him back and he's going to put him back into the waiting <laughs> arms of Set. I did not know that's how that worked. Oh, <laughs> like, yeah. it's, it seemed like the pull came through and then, it, even though the blast called mid hit, it was hit first. Yeah, I, I don't know, but great play from Moga. Breath, realizing that and uh, forces J Real's flash early. Oh, okay, that was an interaction Timo's that just happened. Yeah, as Timo's best Timo Timo's will lose up. the one v one. He he just dies. He just gets auto down. Yeah, you got that bramble vest, but <laughs> it's not going to protect you against two damage. Set. Yeah, you got to back up there. So Timo would just, you know, really not respecting in any way, shape, or form oh. that damage that comes out from a set. We're gonna have another fight here. As uh, the 2v2 have in the bot happen in the bot lanes, as uh, as Clip Force is able to get out of that, TK Kratos is going to be able to pull in a member, uh, the Seraphine, but it's not going to be enough as uh, Shatter will reply back with quite a lot of damage. Yeah, he gets a full bomb stack off there, and with that, with that pressure, with Kratos dropping low, with the wave shoving mid and bottom, it looks like Farmingdale right onto this dragon six and a half minutes into the game. So Ocean, Ocean Drake first <laughs> again. Yeah, it's going to go cleanly over to the Farmingdale side. Uh, no contest here in any way, shape, or form. Cloud Drake is going to be Drake number two that's spawning back up in five minutes. So we're going to have a spicy soul then, either Mountain or Infernal. Ooh. Will we see an Infernal soul? Oh my god, that'd be absolutely Doubtful. Doubt, yeah. At Farmingdale's track record, definitely not. We're lucky we saw <laughs> Over or under? Which one are we going with? Over <laughs> under. <laughs> under <laughs> over. Under at this point. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say that Statistically speaking, right, if every Drake is, like, equal chance to come up, yeah, I mean, like, I know this isn't, like, how it actually works, but statistically, like, with Farmingdale's luck, yeah, we gotta see an Infernal at some point, right? Yeah. yeah. We're gonna have an Infernal soul this game. I'm calling it right now. I believe. Don't at me. I would love Someone to will see at it you. Come up especially. Yeah. Cliff Force kind of, uh, casually, uh, walking up in the middle of the lane, uh, and then suppresses okay. him <laughs> into the taunt, and he's gonna be able to flash away, but it's not gonna be enough as the punch will connect. New York Tech is gonna be able to get that kill. There's gonna be a little bit of a, of a fight here in the mid lane, but the both members will be able to get out. Mograth is going to take a lot of damage from the Teemo, but he's gonna be able to pull him in once again. The Unstoppable is not gonna be able to help you as you're RKO'd directly into the team. He's gonna be able to flash and then still kill him and walk away in style, but here comes j Real. He knows that his uh, top laner has gone down as Mograth has maybe has overstayed his welcome right now. He's two levels up though. Mograth has two levels on Jay, so uh, Jay might not want to mess with that. That's a uh, scary dragon man right there. Yeah, absolutely. We're kind of seeing once again, not necessarily from Jay real, but from the solo laners that Malloy game to blip kind of peeking up again. Teemo is 0-3 in this lane at 8 minutes, constantly taking fights against the set that he should not be. You are in Orn. 
Sit under your tower. You go even in lane, you win lane. That is how Orn works. All you have to do is just sit there AFK, not worry about a fight, but he continuously thinks that he has this angle on a set and he is continuously wrong. So he's got to stop this bleeding as quickly as he possibly can. And then on the flip side, Hodengate, you see the Skarner just walking right up to you. With you kind of just casually up, walked up. Yeah, just just walk away. Just get out of there. behind though here. Wait, yeah, here comes the Jin there. ult and Hecti and they will Double be looking teleport. down. Good night. Yeah, that's going to be uh and then the kill still going over to Anzuritsu. Yeah, that's yeah, so exactly one... what you want if you're NYIT, right? Yeah, exactly. And wait, they have the Herald on on Mograth. Oh yeah, good call as well. As uh Cliff Horse will stay up in the top lane. Great job, great coordination coming out from NYIT to be able to stop whatever progress uh uh Farmdale was looking for, but TK Creos a little bit, okay. maybe a little bit in too late, but he is gonna, he's gonna be able to survive this one. Uh, huh. NYIT coming out, guns blazing in this one. 5-0 right away, immediately at a 2k gold advantage uh, over the ramps. Just much better macro play, it seems, in this one. Um, when Cliff Horse was ganking mid there, Tom, you referred to it earlier, Hot and Game may not have realized that the cleanse does not wipe the Skarner ult. So... He kind of just walks up, ticks to level 6, and just flash ults him, and he's dead. He can't do anything. He even burns the he uh, the cleanse after he gets knocked up in CC. So... And the flash. And the flash, exactly. So, I don't know if that was just hot and gay with a blunder there, and just not respecting the tick forward of Cliff Horse, but a great micro play from Cliff Horse himself, uh, realizing that, and uh, just exploiting the uh, summoner spell misplay. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, will they be able to we'll catch up the Seraphine again? As Cliff yeah, Horse is going to be able to suppress them into the taunt, into the kill, another one for Anjuritsu. As he's kind of just saying, hey, hey uh, hey, 80, 80k, you wanna, you want this kill? Yeah, yeah, uh, I'm gonna click R real quick. No <laughs> exactly. problem. And uh, Mograt still has the Herald, um, not choosing to use it yet. He's just gonna punch the turret once, as they will be popping uh, the Orn ult. Yeah. Will we be able to get anything on this one? He's going to commit three members to Mograth as Mograth is going to see he's going to RKO out of absolutely nowhere. And uh, they're unfortunately not able to get that much damage. But here comes Hectia. Is he able to survive in time? <laughs> Mograth still going to be able to take down one as the oh. shutdown will be able to come in. And uh, Galio will be able to get that kill. Yeah, so J Real committing the flash to make sure that his team picks up that kill. But again, just another misplay by Teemo. You know that that RKO is up. Just stand behind him. That's his only way out. You just gave him a way to get out. So just got you got to just say that you know it, it really looks like Teemo just not having too much of a clue of how this matchup should be played. Of you know mispositioning pretty hard. Yeah, Farmingdale does get the kill, but. It's traded right back on a kill onto Hecti for, uh, you know, yeah. kill onto J Real for Hecti. Cloud Drake is up. Yep. Yeah, Cloud, Cloud Drake, Drake is, is up. And up. Farmingdale just have absolutely no answer for it. J Real is moving down into the bottom side of his jungle now, so maybe the they'll. Hodden Gay's a little more keen to it now, though. Yeah, but he's out of mana here, so even if Farmingdale opt for the drag, if I'm NYT, I'm bum rushing this drag here. Uh, Mograth needs to use that Herald very soon, by the way. He has it. Yeah, it is going to tick out soon. Good call on that. But yeah, it looks like Farmingdale's just going to back away and just kind of secede this. Yeah, I mean, what other options? are we going to get, guys? Uh, let's see. Got to be Infernal. Not Infernal. <laughs> My <laughs> God! We're never gonna get you, it, man. Tom. It's I think you. it really does. I think I think it's because I think you it's because you just tried a little bit too hard to kind of summon it, and then it's just like, nah, I don't yeah. feel like it. I'll take I'll take the back seat in that. <laughs> yeah, quite literally. Um, a lot of gold though in NYT's pockets here, still hovering around that 2k gold advantage, but it feels like it's much more. I mean, Andrew sitting pretty at 3 and 0. Uh, already completes the Gale Force, a great itemization into this Farmingdale team. And Hecti, 2 0 2, getting kills kind of spoon fed to him. Um, and j Farmingdale just seems like they're blundering left and right here. Kind of can't stop the bleeding. Yeah, so this Farmingdale squad really, really needs to just understand that they are currently, you know, they obviously don't know exactly how much gold they are down, 
but they got to know that they're down a pretty sizable amount. 2-0-2 -oh onto Hecti, 3-0 -oh onto Anjurisu's Jin. Like, not the KDAs, not the kills where you want them if you're Farmingdale. So they got to just understand, okay, listen, we outscale these guys really, really well, right? Hot and Gay, Shatter are both going to scale so insanely well into the mid and late game. Uh, once you are getting those ornaments, like Durant had stated before, uh, it's very, very possible that Farmingdale can make a comeback. But abs, like you just alluded to, you got to stop the bleeding. You got to make sure that that gold lead doesn't keep ballooning in NYIT's favor. And Hot and Gay gets the flash force out of a mid lane just by Cliff Horse's presence. So a flashless victor is a uh, pretty uh, viable target for Cliff Horse and that uh, R on him. So we'll see if he revisits mid lane in the next few minutes while it's down. So I don't know if it's that maybe I'm not as savvy as I once was when it comes to analyzing League, but I have never seen a Skarner uh, take Hex Flash, and I apologize if that is a super common thing that I am just straight up oblivious to. But... I would I would assume it's Ghost, right? Uh, I think what they you think? do take Flash just so that you like kind of like what we saw before, right? Just get the Flash R onto somebody just so you can get on them immediately and kind of prevent them from reacting. So mm -hmm. I think that is normally uh, a pretty normal uh, sum to take of the Flash, but. Hex Flash is not something that you normally see too much out of the rune. So I actually kind of like it here, though, because uh, Cliff Force knows now that Hot and Gaze Flash is down. He, he can just sit in the Wraith Pit, Hex Flash over the wall. He, he's Ooh. a tanky boy, but that uh, chem tank, you know, he can kind of do it. here on bot lane, but, yeah, but they're gonna Cliff be Force spot out. as well. Yeah, we'll and see. Hecti has ult. He's, he's pathing this way, so I think NYIT kind of sniffs it out and says, yeah. Uh, Team doesn't have a tower here, though, if Mograth decides to go, but he opts not to. I always love uh, when you use uh, your scrying orb and it finds someone in the bush that you can't physically see, and it just it just show like it just shows them t posing, and I'm like I don't know if the guy is really standing there t posing trying to <laughs> assert dominance or like what I need to do in this situation because that's vi like the <laughs> the two one and two set who is t posing in a bush that <laughs> is the only thing you know about is actually the scare is actually maybe the scariest thing I could possibly think of oh my god that thing that that hook connected and shatter is gonna have to jump away from that but the old from Andrew will come in and will the hits connect is the question as a uh, TK oh. Kratos will be able will pull away the seraphine try to get something here as they will be connecting uh, committing the ult. Looking, great, uh, great move coming out from Andrizu to get out of that. As uh, New York Tech is uh, trying to pull something back in on this one, as uh, Mograth will also be teleporting to the bottom lane. Oh Tell man! Thrown out everywhere. Not oh, might get Clip. caught up here. He's gonna pull him directly into Hecti if if he's able to get out in time. It's not gonna be too good. It's hot and gay. We'll be able, we'll be flexed on by uh by Mograth, uh, stunning him up just or slowing him down. And uh, New York Tech putting another kill up on the board as the uh, Mountain Drake gets pinged up by New York Tech quite a few times. That uh, it's coming up soon. Yeah. So once again, hot and gay just getting caught out in the mid lane, you know, uh, Cliff Horse doing a really, really good job this game of keeping a lot of that pressure up on top of him, but I, I just, game knowledge, right? I, it, yeah, you had to know that that cleanse doesn't work against the Skarner. There's not a lot of things, as we just saw in this team fight, where if one of these guys gets on top of you, that cleanse ain't doing a whole lot, my friend. I mean, you're, the only thing that, you know, we said before that you can taunt that would be reasonable would be, I guess, Galio's taunt. And then aside from that, you got knockups from Kratos. You got uh, the suppression from Cliff Horse that you cannot stop. Another yeah, 1v1 another happening, and he's able to pull him away oh. while he's trying to do the unstoppable. Best team on A is taking quite a few points of damage right now as Mograph will, uh, will not think about uh, chasing him down anymore as the minions will come to the rescue of best team on A. Um, so Windows going to probably give over this dragon, or at least try to. You see Victor already pathing towards the top lane. They're not even thinking about this. But they do have the Herald on Jay, so Jay might try to proc it here. Yeah. Maybe try to scavenge up this mid lane turret. Yeah, I like this play a lot from Farmingdale because based off the positioning from NYIT, they might be able to go for two towers here. Actually, I'm going to stop right there because they're able to get that Drake so insanely quick and they are already in the mid lane. So they do get a mid lane tier one for their trouble. So a little bit of gold going back over to Farmingdale, but Drake stacked now up two to one in favor of the Cybears. 
Just seems like it's a completely different Cybears team this game. Just much better macro all the way across the board. Maybe, like I was saying, a little bit of those pregame jitters or something along those lines, but just so much better play in their engaging mid. Ooh, the, cut, the hook is not going to be able to connect as Agrisa will still be able to be pulled into the team. But here comes uh, Jay Real as he's going to be going into the team, but it's not going to be enough as uh, Seraphine will commit the ult to that one, but they will not uh, result in any kills as uh, New York Tech uh, kind of just moving up, trying to catch Shatter uh, up, up, up on the back foot, but still able to, to rocket jump away. Yeah, Shatter, or I should say Aggressa, had a really, really good alt there to drag Hecti under the tower, even if it was only briefly. Shatter not able to find the kill there, as you just mentioned, right? His rocket jump was down, didn't really have anything else to get on top of him, so takes Hecti super, super low, but just not able to get that kill for himself, which would have been so unbelievably massive. 300 gold shutdown on both Hecti and Anjurisu right now, so finding these shutdowns is basically Farmingdale's number one priority right now, get a little bit of gold back in their pockets. Gonna be a stagnant point here again. That gold, see it with the score. You would think it's still, or it the gold lead for NYT is starting to balloon and, and just increase, but still sitting around that 2k gold uh, differential. So, props to Farmingdale there for keeping there, keeping in it. And uh, but again, like we were saying, just gotta stop the bleeding. Too many uh, blunders from Timo in the early game and Hot and Gay with this summoner mix up is is really hurting them right now. Uh, yeah, absolutely. We, we kind of said before that Farmingdale's path to victory back into this game is to just stop the bleeding. I think they're doing exactly that. They're doing a good job at just kind of equalizing. Uh, they definitely threw a lot of advantages, or I shouldn't say advantages, but they threw any potential advantage that they did have away in their early game pretty hard, especially from these solo laners, but... Uh, doing a good Ooh. job at just making sure. Hold on. Shatter now, will Force knock Force away Cliff Force, but Cliff Force will not, will not take that one in as uh, New York Tech is finally going to be able to get rid of Shatter. Yeah, not sure where his rocket jump was there. He must have just gone down. He must have used it for something else. Yeah, he so he had sure. just used it like a moment before to get away from the, the Kratos uh, hook over the uh -huh. wall. So not too good as, uh, I mean, Shatter did everything he possibly could do in that situation as the, the knock away, but Cliff Horse not having any of that is just going to continue running up at you. Yeah, Cliff Horse is doing a really outstanding job this game at finding a lot of these picks. Like, if you look at the scoreline, you have 3 0 and 2, 4 0, it's a 9 kill game, and he's got 5 of those kills. You know, there were 3 kills that basically went solo over to Mograth in the top lane. So, when I mean, you do a little bit of number crunching, Cliff Horse is doing a really outstanding job at finding a lot of these kills uh, for his laners. Yeah, totally warranted. Just. With that chem tank, the chilling smite, and essentially whenever Flash is up, he's flashing forward looking for his ult, and um, so far it's pretty much netted him a kill, I'd say, almost every time. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's basically been every time, right? With Between the first blood onto Jin, so that's one kill, and, and about two solo kills from Mograth up in the top lane, you, you're, you're basically looking at uh, once the early game shenanigans stopped, when you're looking at bot and mid lane, 100% uh, kill participation for this guy in the early game. First 22 minutes uh, in this game now. He's able to net it a, about a 3k gold lead, roughly. About a 3k gold lead for his team here. So really doing work on this Skarner in the early game. I'm, I'll be curious to see how Farmingdale do end up dealing with it. But in the bot side now we got Hecti, yeah, going a little aggressive on Hot and Gay. j -Real is here to back him up. Just as Punch comes in to get him a little bit of distance and... Armindale decide, now nah, we don't really want to chase out into the tower. We're not really vibing with it. We don't really know where the rest of your team is. 35 seconds coming up on Timo, Drake. Though. Uh, Timo, yeah, Timo knows exactly where uh, a few members of New York Tech are. Is going to take a at least like a an eight, like a six damage of uh, off his uh, entire health bar right there. As uh, Farmingdale able to get the bottom turret, finally cracking all outer turrets. Looking really good for farming deal right there, and at least in terms of uh, uh, tur TP, no. turrets. Yeah, so Mograth is in here. T uh, best Timo now with a really Ooh. late kind of TP. He's going to be TPing right into Right in, and Seraphine's still going to be able to knock up. A three-man ulti, though. Shatters over the wall. He's untouched. He's going to be able to get some kills here. Mograth does finally fall. Hot and Gay is able to get two stunned up. 
This is actually a crushing fight for NYIT. They're all gonna die. It's three down already. Hecti now in a 1v1 with Hot and Gay. He's gonna go down. And Jerisu is the only one that lives in the end. Farmingdale State College swing a 3k gold lead at 23 minutes and bring this game back up to a tied score. A massive gravity field there from Hot and Gay stuns up three of NYT's members and just allows, and like you said, to Shatter was untouched that entire fight. Nobody, he was just free hitting over the wall and just doing so much damage. He's got the Kraken Slayer upgraded with the ornament and he's picked up a last whisper for himself now. So Farmingdale's gonna just translate right into the Baron, but NYT is here. Yeah, as much as I would really, really love to go back and like rewatch that fight, I'd be so curious. But you know, hold on, we're gonna stop right here because Kratos looks like he's going in. Hectic. Oh, they're able to pull, well, pull off yeah. Shatter. Oh, Shatter gets knocked up right out. Yeah, of the but he's just gonna turn around. Continues. Yeah, Shatter, or excuse me, Jreal is actually able to pick up the kill into Kratos. So, NYIT do stop the Baron attempt, but NYIT lose one, and they're actually just gonna turn onto the Baron themselves. But with three tanks and a Jin, they're gonna take this so unbelievably slow. Timo is here to try to meddle with them a little bit. J Real and Hot and K are coming as well. Yeah, but Timo gonna get suppressed. He's gonna get just held down here, and Mograth is gonna claim this kill for himself here. So both teams sacrificing a member to stop the other from taking the Baron. I would say overall that is definitely a net worth gain to Farmingdale as they are uh, down, or excuse me, after that fight, they were definitely uh, even in gold, but they hadn't gotten the chance to reset, so they didn't really have the items that they needed to continue that fight appropriately. The health bars were low, and we're actually going to see now, 25 minutes in, not much of a lead, but an 800 gold lead over to the side of the Rams. Yeah, I think a lot of that is attributed to the fact that Shatter's getting his peel this game. Crazy. <laughs> it's it's almost peel, maybe funny he's to getting say. It. He's getting the banana peel, he's getting the peel, and he's just able to free hit. J Real just doing such a good job there playing in between him and Hecti there, able to stun him up. And Shatter's just able to kind of free hit and uh, proc that bomb on him. So, uh, great job from Farmingdale's tanks and just members in general on creating a safe space for him to just kind of free hit and uh, deal his damage. Yeah, absolutely. We're now looking at a 4 and one uh, Udir on the side of the Rams, which, you know, if anybody knows the the uh, Rams, J-Real is definitely not somebody that you want to start putting gold into. This guy's an absolute beast when it comes to playmaking, even if it is something that's just going to kind of run into your back line. Oh. So Andres is definitely going to have a hard time dealing with this. But as we're talking about it, they have started up the Baron. The Rams have to know the vision was cleared, so Aggressa is going to be able to put the ward in. They know that they are on it. Teemo already moving up from the bot lane here to come contest. Oh, the Baron take is so oh. unbelievably slow. He's going to flash over the wall, but it's going to be a little bit too little too late as the uh, uh, Cliff Horse will be going down and New York Tech biting off more than they could chew for a second team fight in a row as uh, j Real is going to uh, run up, stun, and that's going to be the Baron for, uh, for Farmingdale. Yeah, so just, I, I love this kind of counter matchup that I didn't even think about, to be honest, when we were looking in draft phase, but Cliff Horse has been so much effort recently on uh, picking up this Skarner. I shouldn't say picking up this Skarner as if he didn't know it beforehand, but really been putting a lot of effort into Skarner, and uh, he's having a great game on it, but we just saw right there, Cliff Horse, you can flash over and you can drag somebody, but if you get ulted from Aggressor, you're not going nowhere with that person. They're coming right back to you, so really really like this seraphine into skarner uh matchup and kind of how it's working out so far for the rams but overall just clean team fighting from the rams you know good uh good jump away from shatter to make sure that he was not the one that gets blocked up from that skarner as that definitely could have spelled death for him and overall just good good team fighting for the rams yeah shatter just playing impeccably well right now on this tristana and Cliff Horse wants him. He's looking. He's trying. You saw the flash forward, but just barely out yeah. of range. Couldn't connect on the ult. Like a pixel worth, probably. Um, so Shatter escapes with his life, and Farmingdale escaped with the Baron. And we got this mountain drag coming up in about 45 seconds.
Yeah, and before this even comes up, let's just look at how far this game has swung. At about 20 minutes, 8 minutes ago, this game, Farmingdale were 3k gold down. We now fast forward to 28 minutes, and Farmingdale have about a 4k gold lead for themselves. Just under it, in fact. So, a 7k Ooh, gold Hecti. lead in just a short amount of time. Yeah, Hecti might be getting a little bit of caught out here with the bear slab, making sure that he's not going absolutely anywhere. Timo's going to command the ult as well. Jru will pick the kill up for himself, and when... Drake is coming out in 10 seconds. Your mid laner getting caught is definitely yeah. not what you wanted in any way, shape, or form. Yeah. Top, yeah, so it looks like they're just going to understand the fact that, like, okay, like, we don't really want to trade this back for anything. So Timo's going to go top, make sure Mograth isn't able to take this for himself. And with Baron and Shattered, they're just going to walk down mid lane and start taking some towers for themselves. Timo looks like he's going to play stop the port game, so making sure that Mograth cannot get back to his team. Yeah. and. With Hecti gone, and it's just Cliff Horse, Angeriso, and Kratos left, Farmadale are going to take a mid inhibitor 20 minutes into this game. 28 minutes. 28 and, uh, minutes. Yeah, it's going to be. It's going to be actually. Farmingdale is going to be moving over to uh, to the dragon, and they're going to see if they can actually get rid of it. But the teleport's going to come in. Is they're going to make another oh, attempt it, with the flank? It's a double TP behind them. Farmingdale have not spotted it just yet. The flash bear slap, making sure that he's not going absolutely Ooh. anywhere. Really good charm coming out, but Mograth doesn't not able to get in onto the right targets. Teemo's here as well now, but Mograth, Mograth is alone still gonna go in down. Act right. Yeah, true damage coming out. Hold on, Shadow, you're Jeez. alone. Got a flash out there, making sure he doesn't get down, but it's two for zero for the side of the Rams and Teemo and J Real are once again. They might actually posture for end here. Yeah, There's I think that that might be the end of the now. game as a uh, New York Tech is Aaron going is still to. On them too. Yeah, no, they, yeah, they're just gonna turn around. They saw Baron. That's gonna be only a Jin and a uh, and a Nautilus to try and stop them. But it's not gonna oh. be enough because Shatter is just gonna be able to walk up and just kind of free hit these turrets with no cares in the world. As Farmingdale able to finish out game number two in a not not the best start they would have wanted, but still able to finish it out. As Farmingdale will lead the series 2-0. Yeah, it's not how you start, it's how you finish, and Farmingdale just finished in impeccable fashion right there. I I don't want to go too deep in onto this because I, I don't really want to kind of, make again, make it sound like I'm being pessimistic, but again, I, I keep coming back to this idea of NYIT. You just had such an impeccable early game. I mean, the score was like 8-1 to one at some point. Mograth had solo killed Best Emo three times up in that lane, I believe it was, and the fact that you know, they weren't really able to capitalize too much on it just because, yeah, you got a lot of gold influx, but all that gold influx was kind of just onto tanks. It was four tanks and a gin, and yeah, your gin was fed, but when you're not really team fighting as well and you don't really have any other carry threats and Farmingdale are able to recognize this, it's so much easier for their team to kind of section this gin off. They don't have to go all in on Tangerisa. They don't have to kill him. They just have to make sure that he's not hitting. And when he's not hitting, it's four tanks standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with a super long-range Tristana, and uh, Hot and Gown is Victor that's just able to kind of zone them and just slowly but surely whittle them down and take them out. And that's exactly what they did this game. Yeah, totally. Uh, boys, a, an explosive game too coming out. Is Farmingdale coming from behind, sweeping that up. We're going to take a quick break, but when we return, we will have game three. Farmingdale on the verge. Possibly. Oh, yeah. About to clinch a 3-0, a chance at the chip. Coming up next, we'll catch you guys on the backside.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the ECC Esports League of Legends Finals. A commanding game number two that really fell out of NYIT's hands and uh, Farmingdale totally capitalizing and securing game number two and now on the verge of securing the match for themselves and with that, the championship. Duran, how are you feeling right now? Uh, Duran, I'm getting word right now that you're actually muted on stream. Okay, I'm good. <laughs> okay, uh, get Abs back in here, and I'm going to take it over for here just for right now. Uh, Duran was just bringing up the point that, uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely a bit of a, a draft, or uh, draft needed to change just a little bit for the side of, uh, the Cybers, but still all good in good spirits for this team. They understand, listen, we just got to go next, but Duran, you made a point right there that, uh, you know, there, there aren't many other, uh, options left for this team to kind of just go next and 100% correct. Uh, these guys really, really got to uh, kind of pick it up right here, right now. And and listen, like this team has shown right here that that they have the opportunity, they have the, uh, the ability to make these picks and get this early game lead, but the draft just has to come through. Less tanks, more carries. That's all, all they got to do. And yeah. uh, 
I think once they get that down, right, like they have the early game capability. They just showed, I think Cliff Horse just had a really fantastic game on Skarner. I think Aggressive played really, really well into it and was able to kind of negate a lot of his pulls that he had. But overall, draft more carries. Give yourself more carry potential. You just had Mograth solo kill Teemo twice in lane. Uh, Hecti had a really, really fantastic game for himself. Like you have these players who are playing at a high level right now, but they got to give themselves a tool to make stuff happen. Yeah, it, it's uh, it's basically yeah, it's basically a lot. Of, unfortunately, I feel like uh, like you said, some of these games are just kind of lost that draft, and your tech is just trying to put this one together, and this can mo- will. If unless they're they're pro with them them posing for a reverse sweep, it's gonna have they're gonna have to uh, push this one all the way another three games if they want to be able to take the championship. Yeah, absolutely. So we are going to be jumping right back into champion select here uh, for game number three of the ECC League of Legends finals. Farmingdale leads the series 2-0. They need one more win in order to bring this game to a close. So we'll see how this team does right now in draft. What kind of uh, what kind of things are going to be changing for the uh, both of these squads and coming right at you? Same bands, same bands last time as last time. So, what is uh, New York Tech going to do differently right now? Because, like we said, they're still banning those carry top laners from um, from Mograth. So, what will they be able to kind of figure out for this one? Are they going to pick a carry top laner for? Uh, for Mograph early, as they're going to ban out the almost the same bans, almost exactly. We're going to see what this last one is going to be. Yeah, <laughs> same, same all the way down the board. Yeah, absolutely. So it looks like the Teemo, the Sivir, and the Olaf ban are coming out for NYIT and the Aatrox. Uh, the Aatrox, the Mordekaiser, and the Hecarim are going to be banned out for Farmingdale as NYIT are going to be on the blue side. And immediately, last time, NYIT drafted three tanks first and then last picked the tank. Immediately off rep, we are getting a Tristana for NYIT. So we have the damage threat immediately. All they got to do is draft at least one more. Please. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, listen, I think that's a really, really good first pick for the squad, especially with Hecarim off the table. Uh, Tristana is easily the best AD carry right now, and mm-hmm. I, I think that's just a huge power pick for you to pick up immediately for yourself. So uh, Galio is actually going to be locked in. So we are going to see a Farmingdale State College Galio pick finally here. j is going to go right back to that Udyr. With Olaf off the table, he's got no problem picking that one right back up. Yeah, really liking the draft from Farmingdale thus far. Only two picks, but comfort picks at that. And But NYIT on the other side, recognizing that they just haven't had the damage, opt for the Tristana right off the rip. So, Tom, I agree. Great beginning here so Leona. far, and they get the Leona as well. Yeah, so wouldn't be surprised at all right here if Farmingdale do opt for Renekton. It's been one of Timo's better picks. <laughs> Hot and Gay is still toying with us. He's throwing up the Aurelian Soul. We all know you're not picking it, man. Quit fooling with us. Uh, would not be surprised in any way, shape, or form if Renekton was the pick here. My only concern is that if you do lock in the Renekton, Farmingdale is now kind of locked into that same problem. Ooh. Oh, we're actually going to see a Jinx, baby. Okay. So Shatter has just been having an outstanding series so far. And he, despite the fact that it's uh, that, that it's a Leona and a Skarner locked in uh, two and three for NYT, he's, he's feeling it. He's saying, give me that jinx, man. Put the weight of this game on my shoulders. So I really, really like this pickup here for, uh, for Farmingdale. He's just got to play a little safe with it. So I'm not going to be too surprised if Morgana is the second ban coming out from NYT. But... Camille is going to be taken off the table uh, on the side of the Rams, and we'll see just a second here what they opt to ban out last, but Zillion also being taken off the table. They know that that Galio could easily be a flex bottom. Uh, It's Ash. They think that that's actually going to Hecti, which it totally could be. Yeah, it's Mm. right. Tristana mid has definitely seen a little bit more light recently, just so much pushing power, so much presence in the lane. Right. they finally get rid of that victor okay interesting so leave up lulu you leave up lulu you leave up morgana you leave up uh renekton you're leaving up a lot of picks that farmingdale are super comfortable of picking here so i'm kind of interested to see what they do go for here if i'm 
Farming though, you probably pick a top lane Renekton. You probably just pick the Renekton here right up. Okay, so they're actually going to opt for the Ornn and Again. say... Yeah, so they're actually going to opt for the Ornn here because they are super low on gauge, kind of like the way we just said. So I think if Teemo can maybe have a little bit better of a lane and just sort of sit back, understand that, hey, my job in this lane is not to kind of go for the 1v1. It's not to get a lead advantage against Mograth. It's to kind of just sit back. Like we said before, right? If Orn goes even in lane, it really means he's a set. Okay. Whoa. Okay. You're in. I'm going to match your pushing power with my Bagools, he says. As the Yorick will be chosen by New York Tech. This is, I know, is a, one of those sleeper picks that I've been hearing about a lot in the yeah. if for League. Is like, <laughs> York just keeps getting these buffs because no one's playing him. And they can't really test out if the buffs are working because no one's playing York. So York has just been getting a full set of buffs. Oh. And Malzahar coming out. So that's going to be a, a straight control mage right now. Kind of just instantly knocking down. And if the Skarner suppression doesn't get you... The Malzahar, Malzahar ult will. So there's going to be a lot of creatures on the, the rift today. Um, with all the Bagools plus, <laughs> plus Malzahar, the little Voidlings. Uh, New York Tech looking looking to, to stamp, a, stamp something up on uh, game number three as Corky will come out. Okay, so this is interesting because we are getting a Galio flex to the bot lane for Aggressa, and Hot and Gay will pilot the Corky Copter for this game. So I like this Farmingdale draft a lot. It's got good engage. It's got great follow-up if Jay decides he wants to go deep. Heck, even with Corky Package, if he decides to look for a flank, if Aggressa times the right, you can get a really good Galio alt paired with that. Uh... It has good peel against against the Leona and against the Tristana, right? They jump in. Okay, Galio's just going to stand in front of you, go for the taunt, then he can layer a lot of CC with it. So I think that the Galio flex bot lane for Aggressa is going to do a really good job at keeping Shatter safe. Uh, I like the NYIT draft a lot, but I do have a few problems with it. My sure. own, Actually, I really have one problem with it. My one problem is it is that uh, drafting Skarner and Malzahar is... is a little bit redundant it's sort of similar of kind of what we were talking about before when, when you got multiple tanks okay you got a ton of cc but like aside from your base damage you really don't have anybody that's going to be doing damage with that cc yeah it's sort of the similar thing right like malzahar is not this huge high dps kind of mid laner so even if skarner is able to get on top of corky which it'll definitely be hard for him malzahar isn't this mid laner that's going to really be able to kind of just 100 0 burst him, right? It's not like you're pairing it with like a Rise or an Oriana or something yeah. like that. It's going to do high burst damage. So uh, good on NYIT to draft uh, much higher damage. Uh, they still got a good amount of CC, a lot to work, or I should say a lot more to work with here, especially with that York Victor. And you hit it right on the head, man. That That is going to be the hardest thing for uh, for Farmingdale to deal with. That, that pick is just yeah. absolutely crazy right now. I think going along with your point of redundancy, uh, Tom, in terms of like the point of the ultimates for both Malzahar and uh, Skarner, right. you, you have like the Quicksilver Sash now has so much more value. Right. It's not just you're not just building it for one champion. You're building it for, in this case, two champions. Three, Three right? right? Leona. Yeah. Yeah. Leona is yeah. a good point. Yeah. So just immense value here onto someone like Jinx who's going to be very immobile and likely mm. to get caught out by um, one of these carries or one of these uh, suppressions and lockdowns. Right. But you have the Galio on the other side being able to counter-engage it. So agree 100% that Farmingdale really drafting and I think throwing NYIT for a loop with this Galio uh, flex to the bot lane. So great on them, but... Um, this Yorick pick is is a wild card for me right now. I think <laughs> yeah, no one knows. So, no one sees Yorick ever. <laughs> so. Well, not only that, but like like we were saying, it's just the damage that the the buffs that he's recently received have just made him like an uber just feasting top laner right now, and he's just able to yeah. snowball and snowball. If he's getting his items, he can really really take over a game and just be unkillable in a lane and uh, split push. So. Um, a lot of pressure, I think, on Mograth as well, but he's in a good spot to do it here with the draft around him. Yeah, Farmadale are definitely going to have to be on top of their macro because if you're saying to yourself, okay, Mograth's in the top lane, we're going to fight for this Drake or something as 5v4, if if uh, if NYIT do a good enough job at just stalling you, Mograth is going to go ahead and take two turrets like 
<laughs> really quite <laughs> really oh the power of this York is just unbelievable right now. So I I I, I love this pick from Mograth and Listen, this is what we were saying, right? Stop putting Mograth and Hecti and all these insane players on tank duty, right? Like, yeah. okay, it's fine to play through Anjurisu, but give yourself another kind of win condition. And right now they're doing it finally. So Yorick locked in for Mograth. That is their win condition. That it is split push. That if you're looking at Farmingdale's team, like, who's going to answer that? You really can't. So I think that this is a fantastic pickup, a really, really good read on draft in game three. And I think that if NYIT are going to win this game, it's definitely going to be through uh, – through that unbelievable pressure that Mograth is going to be able to put up. Yeah, I mean, Tom, you say NYT has to win this game. Otherwise, yeah, they're going home it, and yeah. that's the end. So, a uh, lot of pressure on both fronts here. Farmingdale pushed themselves to match point. Uh, we got game three coming up right now. Favorite skins in the lobby, boys? What are we thinking? Ooh. Corgi Corky is absolutely adorable of a skin. Um, but Bizahar, though. <laughs> True. Bizarre is good to do, but I mean, Ardio with his bucket of chicken. Oh yeah, and the chicken like dance. Chicken. Yeah, the chicken mm -hmm. dance too. I'm, 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 I'm going with Ardio, man. I love Odyssey Jinx too, but I, Ardio, come on, it, it's a tough call for sure. Ardio versus <laughs> Odyssey is, uh, uh, Corgi Corky is definitely a tough call, but that's what we're going with. So, game three is starting, boys. Game three means Farmingdale are on match point in this series they lead two to zero nyit have to string together the reverse sweep and it all starts right here if they want to keep themselves in this series oh man this is going to be a, a real interesting one let's see if uh near if what uh what these early game is going to look like because uh last time we saw new york tech just run up to the top lane and try to take out team as quickly as possible it didn't work out in their favor but it did help them a lot in the the uh the beginning of the uh of the game something else i kind of want to talk to you guys about is that new york tech did have that lead but it's kind of just like flopping on a little a few team fights just uncoordinated so i'm, I'm interested to see how they're going to be able to play through this for for this upcoming game yeah absolutely i think it's actually kind of switch it's so funny that we kind of keep saying to each other like okay well like the relative style of the team comp was flipped on its head right for game yeah. two so we were talking about that bottom lane matchup where uh in game one, Aggressa was piloting that Leona, and now in game two, uh, Kratos was on, you know, the heavy engaged support against the Squishy. So it was, it was uh, switch on its head, and for sure, NYT did a good job at, to my knowledge, they, or to my memory, I should say, they didn't get any 2v2 kills, but they had really, really good pressure on that lane the entire time. And the now we're kind of seeing... In, sorry, what? <laughs> the emos, the emos being flashed. Oh, yeah, the no, they're, throwing it out, man. they're all clowning. Uh... But just to finish my point real quick, I mean, the relative style of the team comps are kind of switched on their head now with uh, NYIT now being the ones that actually have really good damage output from multiple laners uh, with strong CC. It's just a good front-to-back team fight. You have Leona for the engage, Cliff Horse obviously for engage, Hecti can peel, Cliff Horse can peel. All of these guys can kind of look for their own opportunities to engage, to disengage, to peel in whatever way they see fit. So I think that NYT have a lot of really, really great tools to deal with. Like I said before, maybe a little bit low on that straight up damage in a team fight, right? If Anjurisu again gets kind of zoned, it'll be harder to zone a Tristana. But if he does get zoned, then maybe you're looking at a, a Farmingdale victory in a team fight. But everything we'll have to wait and see exactly how it goes. It looks like we're actually going to have a top to bot clear for J Real. So it's going to be mirrored which means likely he will be looking for either an early mid fight or an early bottom fight. But regardless, we'll have to wait to see exactly what his plan is. Timo the doing a good are out and they are jumping yeah. and they are slashing. Oh and they <laughs> I love them. The Bagools are so annoying. To I pl Listen, I'm a Poppy main, okay? I love Poppy. <laughs> I love playing. I love playing some really tanky top laners. But when you get hit with that, that ooze grenade that I'm going to call it, it's just it's just like all the Bagools at the same time are just like like this. They just jump onto you. And it's like you you can hit them in one hit, but there are like five of them. And I don't you can't attack that fast. So yeah, like not at all. It's, it's so super annoying. annoying. Yeah, it, it's that's the perfect word for it. I mean, I mean, Timo did a good job of pulling the lane, but look at that. Just based off the poke alone from Mograth, he's immediately just under tower and, you know, missing farm already. So kind of going for like a cheetah recall. Uh, looks like he's actually opting for the tier early. 
So Mograth looks like he's going to be rushing mana. for a mana moon. Yeah, I mean, exactly, right? It, it's, that's going to be sustained mana for uh, a lot of the poke that he's going to need into something like the Orn. Just get as much of a lead as he possibly can. Uh, I definitely really, really like that pickup into the Orn. So I'm excited to see how NYT does fare with this pick and see what kind of pressure he's able to create with it. But overall, we're going to look like not much of anything is going to be happening. Uh, Cliff Horse looks like he's just going to reset in this wave here just in case j Real. Is thinking about coming in. Uh, I didn't actually see. Did j -Real counter? No, j -Real did not counter jungle that red, but he did get the ward out, so he's going to be able to get a nice little tracking down onto Cliff Horse. So mm -hmm. if he does pass by that, maybe he's on his way to Krugs or something like that, j -Real will spot it out. So he'll be able to just keep tabs on Cliff Horse here and there, which is really all you got to do in this matchup. Shatter still popping off in this bottom lane, regardless if there's kills or not, still staying ahead in CS. Yeah. Uh, this is kind of like the only thing we can really speak about right now because not much has happened so far. But uh, <laughs> but for CS in the in the bottom lane, meanwhile in the mid lane, uh, Hecti has a, a slight lead, just slight leads here and there as uh, Timo is uh, re get is uh, getting their bearings back and uh, trying to even up this CS count in the top lane. Yeah, absolutely. So overall, just kind of a lot of. Ooh, he's going Things forward. pulling out. Yeah, Timo actually looking for a trade onto Mograth early, but the Bagools are going to come oh, out and make sure that that trade is evened up very nicely. So both these top laners being taken down to about half to 130 HP, making them so that neither of them can really risk stepping up too far. Uh, Timo's wave is going to shove, so he's just going to go for the reset immediately. But yeah, I mean, listen, we're, we're at... Let's talk about kind of win conditions for this team. We we don't want to uh, beat the dead side bear here and talk about how Mograth is definitely a huge win condition uh, for NYIT. So Farmingdale, I I'm kind of looking at this and saying, okay, yes, even though Cliff Horse and uh, Malzahar, or I should say Cliff Horse and Hecti picking two champions together that may be a little redundant, uh, they do have a lot of really strong early game pressure together. And Farmingdale definitely want to go late. So I'm, I'm thinking that NYT actually have a good draft here because they have a lot of good oh. early game pressure to kind of try to close this out. But even if it does go late, you know, Mograth is just going to be an absolute beast. Bagools, oh, Mograth. the Bagools. Oh, They're going to be able to stop him. But uh, Mograth is going to take a lot really of damage. Great. Yeah. Yeah, that Bell's Breath just does so much in trading for you. So, Timo not doing a bad job in any way, shape, or form in the trades. Definitely a little low in the farm department. He's got a nice big wave in front of him now, so he should be able to equal it up. But j Real just opting for a solo Drake immediately off rip. Aggressive might actually get Kratos caught out, though. Yeah, he's going to force a flash out. As he... TP from Timo, I... And TP oh, from oh, Mograb, they're going to come in. As yeah, best Timo and is going to be able to pop the ult. And they're going to be going directly oh. in, but is it going to be a little... It's not going to be enough damage. As uh, as Shatter's still fi free firing from the back, as New York Tech is trying to get in this, but here come the rocket jumps. As uh, as Andres is going to jump in, then jump back out. As uh, TKE Kratos will be going down, and New York Tech trying to find something with this. As the uh, the Maiden of the Mist will see if they could uh, chase out uh, Timo, and that was an in that was an an interesting team fight as both mid laners will walk out with with uh, kills. And I think it's almost completely mirrored on both sides in terms of who got assists and who didn't, except for uh, Ag mirrored, Agriso. Yeah. yeah, an assist onto both the AD carries and top laners. Kill for the mid laners and the supports are the ones that bite the bullets. It is completely mirrored here. NYIT, though, with the first blood means that they will take the ever so slight gold lead in the start of this game. So mm -hmm. about a 300, 400 gold lead for them right now, but that should be equalized up relatively soon. Again, that's not too much of a... Not so much to worry about if you're a fan of the Rams, but either way, really good fight for them. I was definitely really questioning that uh, teleport from Timo. Yeah. I, I definitely don't think that was remotely necessary. You know, you burn the flash from Kratos, like that's it, right? If, if you're this bottom lane for, for Farmingdale, all you really got to do is just kind of equalize. I'm going to stop right now because... Ooh, Cliff Horse is going flash. to flash in. The yeah. suppress is going to be going, and you do not even have... Uh, oh, enough to come in, but nice yeah, Cliff Horse going in way too deep is going to take an extra tower, uh, extra tower shot, and will go down. And New York, uh, Farmingdale still able to equalize that one up as the Maiden of the Mist is just kind of soul sucking everything in the top <laughs> lane. <laughs> it's a Dementor, right? It's basically what it is. Yeah, it's basically a Dementor. It's basically like a League of Legends Dementor. I love it. 
Nah, but really, really good go. job on, uh, oh yeah, hold on here. Teemo might actually be getting caught out here. Mograf looking to go a little bit deep, but he's not going to go underneath the tower. Not going to make the same mistake that his jungler just did two minutes earlier. So, Teemo has to reset now, but with no teleport. And uh, 30 CS down in this matchup. Look at that yeah. CS differential. I mean, we talked about how Mograf was definitely the win con for his team. I mean, we're already seeing it eight minutes into the game, and it's only going to get worse from here, so... NYIT have their win condition for this game. They just got to play around it and kind of equalize some of this gold coming out. Yeah, but uh, meanwhile, on the bottom side, take a look at that CS. It's about 10 CS, uh, and uh, Shatter is still able to stay ahead, regardless of uh, the fight that happened somewhat in the bottom lane. So I still think, I mean, I'm still trying to be partial. I'm trying not to just be like, don't worry, they got this the entire time. But like, you still have to, you have to... Uh, eventually talk about the uh, the elephant that's in the room which is Shatter who has just been able to kind of pop off these last few games as uh, I just noticed that Corky, uh, Corky's old passive is like the little dog treats that's adorable. Yeah, it's dog treats yeah. man. Some biscuits. Some biscuits but um, yeah we have uh, New York Tech can't just uh, get complacent with uh, MoGraph doing well in the top lane because he did the same la thing last game and New York Tech still needs to shut down Shatter and uh, and Get the and do better in a team fight. To be completely honest. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think that we kind of saw uh, a little bit of what we were talking about in that first team fight, though, right? I mean, J Real had originally, I believe it was J Real who got uh, ulted by Cliff Horse, pulled in a little bit, and then immediately following with uh, Hecti. And yeah, he did. Or excuse me, he did not drop there, but you know, aggressive did drop there. So the fact that they were able to kind of like lock so many or people down for so long and just not follow up with the damage just kind of goes to show that yeah Mograth for sure is kind of like their shining star right now and Andreessu does he's getting CS so he's going to be able to do some good stuff as well but definitely here, a concern yeah, they maybe see going him forward, though yeah. is the question the force a little looking maybe like he's trying to get in I think they want to push his way about a little bit he's he's putting a good amount of time into this if they do get this it's 50 seconds to the Drake so if this works out for NYT uh, definitely worth the wait but putting a lot into it as they're yeah okay actually he's just gonna opt back to, to pull back and go for the Krug so not really finding anything with that gank anyway and there is the potential for an infernal dragon soul here hey <laughs> It's, it's Ocean it's or Inferno. Come on, give it to us. <laughs> Please. We've been waiting two series rate. for it. Yeah, come on. Return and fight. But we'll see what happens. Um, two kills, though, on both mid laners. Kind of transitioning as they pick up these items for themselves. They're just going to get stronger and stronger. Uh, and I think there's going to be a lot of pressure around this second drag, but... NYT get the rotation. I stand completely corrected. Farmadell's going to give it over. Yeah, so Farmadell on a pretty poor reset timer oh, right here. And that's like an interesting interaction. Yeah, but... yeah, so I don't think a lot of people know this too well, but uh, Orn's dash or Orn's little headbutt there actually breaks any kind of wall that's put up. So if it's an Anivia wall, uh, a cage for Mograth, whatever it is, all team has got to do is kind of just headbutt it and it takes it down immediately. So definitely a little rough for Mograth that, yeah, like you're, you're giving him a wall to kind of knock you up on. So not the worst uh, kind of interaction in the world for Teemo by any means, but still, you know, we're, we're looking down the barrel of about a 40 CS lead. J Real now is going to get caught out here. Yes, and here goes that out. first stun, and we'll be able to pick up, pull, pull in a second one as J Real is going to have to uh, flash away. Hot and Gay is going to have to still flash again as uh, more damage is going to come in. Cliff Horse, you got to be careful. You can't just allow. As the Bagools, will they jump? No. <laughs> I'm I'm always terrified. It's like you're doing well, and then like out of fog of war, like a, a grenade comes, and you're just like, oh no. Yeah, so a little greedy from NYIT there. They had J Real caught. He was locked down, but Cliff Horse decides I'm gonna go forward and I'm gonna try to get two kills for us right here. J Real's able to flash and get himself out. Hot and is able to do the same. So. Yeah, NYT, you, you burn two flashes out of key members here from, from Farmingdale, but you walk away with no kills and, and nothing really to show for it. So yeah. maybe a bit of a greedy misplay from the Psy Bears. Maybe maybe trying to yeah. their best to just kind of get as much of a lead as they possibly can. Probably a little intimidated from the uh, scaling potential of these members. And oh, yeah, I mean, the, the Rift Herald going in top lane for Mograth. Solo gold going to be coming out here. 
That's exactly what you want. j -Roll looks like he's actually going a little aggressive on, but I don't think you win that. Not against the Bagools. But, but here comes Hot and Gay, Gay yeah. yeah. The top lane all of a sudden, Hot and yeah. Gay teleports in, and he's going to pick up that kill for himself. So we talked about scaling, man. Yeah, that's going to immediately be a kill right over to Hot and Gay. He's got a 150 gold shut that for himself, and it's a TP in reply from... Ed, uh, I'm going to stop right here. Hang on. Ooh. Aggressa looks like she's getting a little caught out here. The Justice Punch to come in and get out. She knocked up Andrew Risu there. That was an interesting little interaction. Oh, my <laughs> God. This is just a bunch of interactions. What the, what, whatever rioters. I feel like uh, I'm learning so much. Yeah, we're learning so much. And rioters uh, who are in charge of uh, champion interactions uh, <laughs> start taking some notes because we were getting yeah. a lot of rare ones coming out this game. No, listen. I mean, uh... Definitely a good collapse from NYIT. Good job on Cliff Horse to realize, okay, I'm not getting Shatter. I'm just going to pull the Galio back in, and he's able to get a kill for his AD carry. So uh, maybe a little bit of a, sh uh, a hard push for Farmingdale without any vision, right? If you look at those wards, they really didn't have anything for themselves. So uh, good response on NYIT to pick up that kill for themselves. And it's going to be blue buffs going over to, uh, I was going to say the mid laners, but that's actually not hot and gay on the Galio. I feel like I've been so conditioned to think that Galio is our, <laughs> the mid is our infamous mid lane, but... Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, I was watching uh, New York Tech walk up to, to Dragon with the Tristana, and I was like, how did Farming Deal get there so quickly? Wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> They're trading champions, man. They kind of gentleman's hand shook for a yeah. game three. They're just like, alright. It's like, like, it's like a Smash when you just go gentleman's PS2 all the time. Yeah, true, true, true. Listen, don't bring up Smash to Farming Deal right now, okay? The wounds are still fresh. I am so sorry. It's alright. <laughs> well, boys, we're playing League of Legends tonight. Yeah, we are. As Teemo's There's gonna that. flash the uh, the Teemo uh, emote, which gives him plus one hype. Yeah. And a uh, plus one shield, actually. Plus one, plus, <laughs> plus one shield. Plus one shield. <laughs> oh, man. I'm actually kind of interested in the fact that Hottengate opted for the uh, Immortal Shield Bow over the Triforce, so he's going to be sacrificing out some damage. And they did just buff Triforce, so I think that that probably would have been a great pickup here, but I guess when you're into something like a Skarner and a Malzar and you understand, like, I'm just going to be locked into Oblivion here, I, I think that it's probably not the worst here, as it mm -hmm. does give you just that little bit of extra safety and survivability in some of these fights. And it's a Corky, so regardless of the Triforce or the Shield Bow, like, you're still going to scale unbelievably well, so... Uh, I'm not going to say I like it or I love it or I want some more of it or anything, but I'll call it interesting. How about that? Oh my god, those Bagools. <laughs> those Bagools, man. If you if uh, if Orin didn't have that dash and you're just yeah. stuck around like four Bagools, like you're just trying... They're, they're only one hit. They're all only one oh. hit. But uh, oh, hang on so here. might be a, a hot and gay very shield soon bow, as he will be going down. The shield bow is going to be able to tank up a little bit of damage as the, uh, unfortunately, the grenade will not connect as the Galio will come in and they're going to put him directly into a, a, a ghoul-shaped circle of oblivion <laughs> as i was gonna say a glass case of emotion baby cage, but, man, come on it's a baby cage a second another bagul Sweet. baby cages new york tech is gonna be able to uh get the oh i just realized it's not gonna we be we got it oh, oh it is infernal soul it's uh, the infernal soul uh, oh, we did it. it's the infernal soul finally in a series it's here boys we did it We've waited so long. We waited the entire. You guys have waited the entire season for this moment. Literally. Oh, wait. So wait, if Farmingdale like loses this game, does that mean the Infernal Soul is actually just our reckoning? I would say it's definitely possible, sir. <laughs> oh no. But if oh that's yes. What the oh no. The gods have set up. Then yeah. that's what it is. But a lot of uh, mythic items starting to cross into players' inventories here. Yeah. Uh, other than the supports, naturally, of course. Kraken Slayer picked up for Shatter, like Tom, you hit on before. Shield Bow picked up for the Corky. Yep. Uh, Chem Tank on either Jungler. And Leang Leandries for the Malzar, sitting nice at 3-0 and right now. Yeah, I, I, I think that uh, this is definitely looking really strong for NYIT. That, that it, It's kind of interesting, right? Because both of these squads have such different parts of their team that they want to heavily play around. And... <laughs> It's going pretty good for the side of NYIT so far, right? Like, and uh, Farmingdale are definitely scaling up pretty well on that Jinx and that Corky, but Malzar's got 3-0 for himself anyway right now, and Teemo is just getting absolutely he's just, stumped. He's by just him fighting ghouls, all the minions! He's ghouls! He, he's, he can't do absolutely anything. j has to come in here and help him, and 
take down the shroud. <laughs> oh he, ah, he's to All right. Get this guy out of here. So uh... fighting all the NYT minions <laughs> plus the maiden of the mist plus all the bagools who are constantly jumping on him, and it's just like I don't know what you want me to do in this situation. <laughs> Quite yeah, literally, I... yeah, it's pretty crazy. And now both carries of Farmingdale opt for the quick silver sash. We were talking about it earlier. Immense value in this game with the suppressions from both Mal's and Skarner. So good pickups there. There's four okay. members of NYT in the bot lane right now. Yeah, Shatter and Aggressa have to be careful here. They don't. They have no vision behind them. But with that, they have to understand now that Malzar is right behind them. They have to back up here, otherwise they for sure lose their lives. Ooh, the spell. So is gonna the also, yeah, they're going to be able to the, get out. Oh, teleport. I is it a um, double TP? It uh, is not. No, it's, it's a single TP oh, as uh, Best Team Monet will be coming in. Mogath is still in the top lane, so we're back into that condition where New York Tech just needs to stall this game as Andreessu is going to be able to get out of this. And unfortunately, it looks like alive. Kratos... No! He's still going to come in now. Here come uh, Mograft and the Bagools, the the h hottest <laughs> band of the 80s, as J-Real is going to knock him up into a, a baby cage as uh, Cliff Force is going to go very deep once again. Best whoa, Team Monet. Whoa. And Andreessu is going to go... I mean, not Andreessu, but yeah, Andrews is going to be able to get the kill as the Bagool would jump uh, a, an Olympic oh, amount man. over the river. Um, <laughs> <laughs> over the river towards this enemy. <laughs> as uh, Mograft is going to, I think, may, may throw a grenade at this. No, they will not. Uh, that was an interesting team fight as uh, Mograft pulls, uh, pushes up the lane, then teleports down and uh, wins Those the team fight comedy. for Near Tech. Yeah, so. Pure comedy. Really? That, that could have gone so much better better for NYIT, I can't help but the feel, it, it, it doesn't, it didn't really feel like Mograth really did a whole lot there, it kind of felt like he came in and sort of gave his team the safety they needed to just mm -hmm. secure whatever kills they could, but Teemo jumped over the wall at like yeah. 300, 400 HP, he, he basically just killed himself right there, so Mograth <laughs> didn't need to be there, uh, and even if they needed him, just disengage, tell your team, hey listen, like disengage, there's five bot right now, their top laner just expended TP, uh, to come down and help. I'm just going to hard shove this wave. So overall, it does go in the favor of NYIT. They do pick up a kill for themselves. But, I mean, maybe could have done a little bit more with it. But overall, you know, can't, can't, be too, uh, can't be too sad with it. Can't be too sad when your Malzahar mid is sitting 3-0-2 and, and your Tristana now has two kills to her name. So yeah. uh, if I'm NYIT, I'm, I'm very comfortable here. But, you know, it's like the haunting of last game. We were in a great spot last game. And yeah. Uh, Farmadale was able to kind of sweep from behind, so NYT up about two and a half K gold, um, but really got to hold through here if they want to continue this series and push to a game four. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, this next Drake is coming up in about 30 seconds, and NY or yeah, excuse me, NYT are already kind of on the roam for it. Uh, Hecti looks like he's gonna shove this wave out and then move over to assist his team. Farmingdale have. Four in the bot side. Both teams have four in the bot side, but it looks like Teemo and Mograth are already just walking down. Neither have any teleport to assist, so both these guys look like uh, they're kind of just running down. But ooh, they're gonna yeah, be able to I'll pull in. But here comes the Galio. It's gonna knock off multiple members. And Xavier is gonna go low. New York Tech is gonna is gonna try to see if they can get some damage in. But Shatter is just free Shatter's farming. He's gonna be knocked up once again. As this is gonna be another not so good team fight for New York Shatter's Tech as they bought off more than they could chew. Chew and. Shatter just popping off once again. He hits yeah. it. Oh, the oh, Bagool. Oh, they're going to the Bagools. Okay. Oof. Okay, so Shatter gets dropped to about 100 HP there. And even though he does so much work in this team fight, it's actually Hot and Gay that picks up a triple kill for himself. So both of these oh, guys no. kind of swapping roles from game one. Shatter now sitting at 0 and 5 playing that support Jinx role. Definitely, you know. If you're farming down, you can't be upset about having a major team fight victory and then getting Drake, right? But if you're Shadow, you're definitely sitting there and saying, really, we cleaned up four and you guys can give me one kill. Uh, so definitely a little unlucky for him there, but still going to be happy about this, uh, you know, bring, bringing this gold lead back just a little bit back in, uh, in towards the neutral zone. It's it's so difficult for both Cliff Horse and Hecti to look for a play because literally anybody that you want to try and bring in and suppress has the QSS at this point. Three people with QSS. Hecti ulted him and J Real just QSS out of it and run back and kites back for Shatter. Like, and at that point, you're just like, you throw your hands up. You got nothing. You can't do anything. So really, really unlucky. Uh, and both shutdowns from both 
and Jirisu and Hecti going over to the side of Farmingdale, particularly uh, hot and gay on this Corky, who's now sitting at six and two himself. Yeah, absolutely, Abs. We talked a lot about the redundancy before and how much uh, these QSSs are really going to pay off for this Farmingdale squad, and we just saw it pay off hard, right? Mm -hmm. Double alt out onto j Real, and he just QSSs the second one that comes down, runs back into the ult from Aggressor to make sure that nobody can chase him. Cliff Horse actually gets sectioned off so hard, and Shatter is just untouched in all of this, and he is just laying down the rockets with the Kraken Slayer. Yeah, he had to rush... Uh, for the QSS, so, you know, he's not really putting out as much damage as maybe you would expect a 23-minute Jinx to, but, I mean, he's safe, he's untouched, and even if they did try to get on top of him, he's still got a QSS to keep himself safe, so definitely a really strong fight for uh, uh, for the Rams. Yeah, we talked about where it's going to be if he gets the peel, and he's yeah, getting the peel happening. so far. So, Timo is going to be like Neo by the end of this game, dodging these... <laughs> So the ghouls. <laughs> so yeah, both but... squads look like they're kind of just going back to a sort of neutral territory zone. They're actually looking like they're just going for the NA ramp. Both teams kind of lining up mid, not really sure what the goal for either of these are. I want to see more splitting from Mograth. Stop grouping with your team, man. Just say, hey, listen, like, you guys just stall fights. That's all you've got to do, and let me just go for these towers, because he keeps trying to roam down and group, and... Uh, you know, another Suppress coming can... in, as he's going to be caught up by the uh, by the Jinx snare, and Cliff Horse maybe going a little bit too deep again. You know my luck. Yeah, burns the flash out from Kratos. He's got to get out to save his own life. So the ult comes down onto Aggressa. She's not able to get out, Abs. Sorry. No, and that's just it. Um, you kind of were going towards it, I think. It, you, when you can't pull in any of the carries of Farmingdale, you opt for the support, and she's too tanky, you can't even kill her. It's like, no not matter what? who you try to pull in, there's, there's so much difficulty in trying to take them down, whether it's the QSS to let them just flat out escape, or they're just overly tanky and have the Merc Treads to reduce the duration of the suppression. So, really just a rough game in terms of who Cliff Force can kind of, like, seek out with his ult. Yeah. Yeah, not to mention if Aggress is able to get a good Justice Punch out right before she gets locked up, yeah. that Aftershock is going to proc. So, you know, the first few hits, basically almost the whole duration of that suppression, she, she's going to be just super, super tanky and really hard to kill. So mm -hmm. not a lot of options on the side of NYIT. And at, at this point, you know, you, you got to be sweating a little bit for these guys. I mean, with this triple QSS coming out with the three mainline members of Farmingdale uh, and, and your options being harder and harder to actually look for fights and the scaling being there for the Rams, mm -hmm. you got to start funneling resources into Mograth. And you got to just understand the fact that, hey, listen, like, if the team fight is doomed, the team fight is doomed. Mograth has to be a thorn in the side of Farmingdale and stop grouping. Yeah, it's definitely a fair assessment. Um, it, it's difficult, though, because I feel like even if Mograth is splitting into Teemo, Teemo's there to answer him, or at least, you know, clear the wave with the Bellow's Breath. And the 4v4 for NYT is definitely not in favor. I think that Farmingdale win it very happy, you know, very convincingly, to be honest with you, with all these QSSs, it just makes it so difficult for NYT to play make. Yeah. And even so. if you burn, maybe you burn some QSSs, right? And, and, and maybe Tristana goes for the jump in. Okay, well, now you have a Galio and an Udyr who are just going to bear yeah. slap and taunt through right in front of the carries, and he's just going to get absolutely blown up, yeah, right? It's very Not difficult. Of... So it, it's, it's definitely getting to be a, a hard game for NYT, but again, like look at Mograth right now on yeah. your screen. He is just brutalizing yeah, the tower right now. Teemo can't even get a reset off. Like, he's going past the minion wave. So this is the way that Mograth should be playing this entire game because Teemo clearly can just not deal with it. And Ooh, they're able to stun out Cliff Horse, but unfortunately that's not going to be oh, able to connect 100%. Nice. The uh, Hot and Gay is going to go right to the team as the, uh, as, the, as the shields will come in, but will it be able to finish off this team fight because it's looking pretty good for oh. New York Tech, but Shatter is able to free fire once again. Hexy is going to see if he can get this damage down. Finally able to take down Shatter as Agrisa is now going to be there. Mograth is there. The Maid of the Mist is there. And there's... <laughs> <laughs> She's gonna suck the soul right out of your body as a uh, New York Tech. What a yeah. fight there! Ooh, Shadow, great I think job. Got a little too excited from that Jinx yeah. pass. 
flash forward into the team just gets locked up by Cliff Horse and by Hecti, and he just burns right then and there. So I think maybe you just play a little farther back next time and, and just sort of play with your team and hit whoever's in front of you. You're a Jinx that has insane range. If they have to walk into you, Farmadale could easily win right there. I saw what he was going for, you know, try to put the team on his back, but doesn't work out in any way, shape, or form for him. And uh, yeah, so a nice team fight victory going over to NYT. That nets them the Baron as well and the Drake. So just overall, such insane swing right now in the favor of the Cybers. Yep. No doubt about it. And uh, now this uh, Yorick is going to be even more tough in this side lane for Teemo. He's going to have this Baron buff now. The Bagools are still going to go after <laughs> and him. And they still got the guys still got inhibitor. Yeah. And so he, yeah, they're, he, the, the minions were able to push a tier one inhibitor up there so like the top lane inhib is now down and INYT can kind of posture for an easy mid or bot lane push especially with Baron so great play out of them yeah absolutely uh Farmingdale kind of just got to do their best to keep their heads in the game I think that they probably understand at this point that okay you know what we played this team fight pretty poorly I think we could have played it a lot better uh you know, we had members that were getting caught out a little bit. Shatter went a little too far forward. So as long as they go ahead and fix a lot of some or some of that stuff up for themselves, uh, they're going to go ahead and scale fine just fine. Uh, ornaments coming out. Yeah. Jrill is likely going to be uh, the last of the three main members of the squad to get it. Mograth in the uh, bottom lane. Yeah, yeah Mograth. I mean, that's, that's how you do it, right? Like, look at this. Wind there he Baron, goes. Like, go ahead and take the tower. Who cares, man? Like... No one, no one, nobody can stop you. Look at him, he's just gonna... Oh, to the Bagools are just gonna oh, jump in, and he doesn't even have to worry about the turret, as uh, J. Real is now gonna have to deal with the Bagools and the Maiden of the Mist, as New York Tech is just gonna say, okay, send multiple members down there. We'll just come move all the way back, as uh, Cliff Force is going to uh, scare him a little bit. With, uh, yeah, didn't want to commit to the ultimate. I think he knew that with that aftershock down, they definitely could not burst out Aggressa. And even so, that's probably not the member you want to go through anyway. Timo now it looks like he wants to go for the Orn. I'll try to find something with the horn. Looks like yeah, this could be something big up. here. As New York Tech is going to see if they could turn this one around. New York Tech will be able to do anything as Agresa will be going down first. And Jerisu is now the one who's able to free fire as the tables have been turned. And Malzahar with, the, with, this, uh, with this passive is able to start getting rid of members off the uh, off the back end of this team fight might Mograth be might be going Ooh. able to go in what might go down but no he will not as he's just gonna flash away from that as New York Tech uh, about to get three inhibitors down and and Farmingdale for the first time in series here. yeah I think you I think you could I think no wait uh, Mograth does it I, I would say if Mograth had teleported I think they they could have probably made the jump yeah. directly in but um, I think if they were able to kill shatter during that team fight that would have been it yeah. But um, I do not think that is it just yet. I think New York Tech is probably going to wait maybe a few, uh, if they want to, another two minutes for, for a Dragon and get that explosion damage. But uh, I, I, am, I am still hesitant to say the game is over just yet <laughs> because Can't. you never know which way this uh, these team fights will run. Yeah, I mean, listen, there's so many of these team fights where Shatter is straight up free hitting. In that one, he was free hitting. And look at his items. He's only got two items that QSS delays so hard. So with the third yeah. item of LDR coming out here for him, he's going to complete that in, you know, just another minion wave or so. And once he gets that, I mean, he'll really be a, a threat and forget it once he goes past that into what will likely become <laughs> an infinity edge. I mean, yeah, most likely. It, it's, it, it's definitely possible for them to come back. The only, the only problem here is that, uh, Mograth is just an absolute beast. Oh, the on this top lane pick right here. You know, uh, look at the kill feed though. It, it, it's 15 kills to the side of the Cybers and three kill participation to Mograth. So even though he keeps joining these fights, he's not really like getting anything for it. But I think he's finally learned at this point. Listen, like you guys are on your own. Like I'm, I'm just gonna sit down here or up here or wherever I am, and I'm just gonna shove, and it's working out for him. Three inhibitors are down for Farmingdale. This Drake is coming up in 50 seconds. There's no way that Farmingdale is going to be able to actually deal with this, so it's likely going to be a fire infernal yeah. soul. Yeah, going right over uh, to the side bears. Yeah, just too much. If you look at this Malzahar right now, he's got his core three items. He's got the Void Staff, the Demonic Embrace, and Leand uh, the Leandries. His E and his damage is just burning all the tanks of Farmingdale yeah. so easily. The, the magic, the raw magic pen from the Void Staff, the Demonic Embrace with the percent health damage. Like, it's just such a efficient tool into this tanky lineup of Farmingdale. And 
that's why he's sitting at seven and one right now. Yeah, he's doing a really, really great job. Uh, both Hecti and Angerisu are honestly playing a lot of these fights really well. Honestly, credit to all of these members that are just playing yeah. these fights really, really well. And I can't help but to say, but you know, Gotta for be the careful still. Earth... Okay, hold Hot on. Gaze gonna go very deep as here comes the ult. As it looks like Kratos might slowly go down, but Cliff Force will be the first one to go down as New York Tech is uh n will be kind of flanked by the entire uh the entire uh, Farmingdale squad and their base. Yeah. Oh, they're based though. Okay. Mograss teleporting in, or no, that's Hecti teleporting in. Yeah, Hecti's teleporting in, and he's not going to QSS out, but it is going to be a justice punch coming he in. Might actually fall here. Yeah, he falls in aggressive <laughs> oh, collect. No. One K gold shutdown. So not only are Farming Deal able to keep both the inhibitor towers alive, they keep their members alive. They collect a one K gold shutdown. Yes, it's onto the support. Who really cares at this point? They're able to stop the soul from going Hecht. over to the Cybears, even if it's just for another five was. minutes. That and was. Hecti um... is down for this Baron coming up in 15 seconds. Yeah, NYT. I mean, you had this in the bag. All you had to do here was just five Wait and five fight for it. Yeah, I, I don't. I mean, listen. Off the back of a great team fight victory off Shatter, we keep talking about how you know. Look at his items. I mean, off the low, we were waiting on him to complete the LDR. He's got that. Oh, he's he's, got he's online LDR. now. Yeah, I mean, he's got late game yeah. Jinx, we've got late game Corky, like, your win condition is online for Farmingdale, so, yeah, they gotta deal with these super minions pushing in, but they got they so much play play that they're not gonna care too, too much. Baron is up, so if they really need to, they definitely can go for it. Mograth's just gotta go bot lane right now and hard shove while the rest of his team tries to deal with Baron. I, he should not be grouping right yeah. now. Farmingdale still have three of their inhibs down, though, so double yeah. super waves are stacked throughout each lane right now so they do have to mind that nyt can dance around this baron and that's what it looks like they're going to opt to do they don't want to start it too haphazardly because mograth you can see him he's pathing towards the bot lane right now and that bottom tier nexus tower is less than half hp so it'll go down fast and farmingdale recognizes they're going to reset and uh maybe look but nyt ping the baron yeah i mean you kind of only have one option if you're Farmingdale here, and unfortunately, it's kind of like, if you really want to go for the Baron, then let J-Real try to steal it, but I don't even think that's what you got to do. I mean, Teemo's just going to do his best here to stop Mograth, but yeah. if, if he if he gets locked into a bad 1v1 and he dies here to Mograth, Mograth takes the base so unbelievably quickly. He's no actually opt to go for a... Uh, you know, retake the inhibitor. Listen, like, NYT is playing this slow, and they're doing a great job at it. They they know, like... That's going to be first, uh, Nexus turret spot. down. Yeah, As here comes j is gonna go directly in, here comes the Galio ult, but will Cliff Horse, uh, it, Cliff Horse is gonna be able to pull in, uh, Shatter, but Shatter is gonna be, uh, pop the QSS, they're gonna be oh, able to stun him, oh, you only have one QSS, QSS Shatter, will you be able to gather this? No, you will not, as New York Tech is just gonna run this one directly down, we don't need the Baron, they said, as, uh, <laughs> Mograth, it was just, hey, oh, oh, hey guys, you guys are in this game too? Oh, that's cool, <laughs> that's, that's awesome, as the Bagools will make the, uh, the 10 meter jump, to uh to best teemo as the ult will be popped through trying to slow down these waves just a little bit but the bagools will still make their jump and so will anjuritsu as a hot and gay is gonna have to get out of this they, they shouldn't push this one too far but they already have uh minions coming up in the top lane as new york tech showing a little bit of life in uh, game number three and are able to take game number three tie not tying but uh bringing the series to one two yeah we got ourselves a series ladies and gentlemen nyit are not ready to go quietly into that good night they fire back on all cylinders much better draft this time around i would like to see maybe a little bit more carry potential out of either cliff horse or hecti don't pick the duel again but overall you gave your carries of this team a route to bring you to a game four, and that is exactly what they did. So all around, round of applause to this team for actually bringing it yeah. back. Yeah, huge uh, plus to them. Just so much raw damage coming out. Despite, we were talking about, despite the whole layering suppressions with the QSSs and everything, they were able to find that one team fight around the bot side. Um, what was it? The bot side dragon pit. And then just played objectives so much better. Um, really dancing around, letting Mograth split into the base, just setting up the base, and Farmingdale really had no answer for this Yorick. I mean, Orn can only do so much, so uh, really, and 
rough game for the side of Farmingdale, but they're still up in the series two to one. Um, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, game number four is on the table. NYIT showing some signs of life. We'll catch you on the flip side. See hey, you next game. Hey, hey, quick question. Uh, if you're watching the stream, did you? when's the last time you got up from your chair? When's the last time you drank water? <laughs> huh? So go do that. I'm gonna play some. I'm gonna play some uh, non-copyright house music, and then uh, we're just, just just go go vibe or something. <laughs> I, I don't know, man. I'll see this you in the. This is your early reminder to hydrate. <laughs> this is your water. early reminder to go hydrate now. See you guys later.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to game number four of these ECC Esports Finals League of Legends. NYT just crested the victory and pushed us to a game number four, denying Farmingdale the championship in that last game. Duran, how are you feeling after that one? A, a much more convincing showing from NYT there. Uh, yeah, def. Yeah, I'm unmuted this time. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, right. yeah um... It's definitely a, a better showing, 100%. But uh, I, it seems it seems to be a habit amongst all my uh, all my teams is that they have to every time it's a championship they have to give me some kind of heart attack, and uh, and this seems uh, right on that path of of uh, New York Tech is <laughs> we're doing pretty well and then and then a team fight happens they're like oh no let's uh, let's, let's run it oh, run it back God. again okay we'll get him another time oh he has a QSS layer another CS on the CC on that person <laughs> like. Uh, New York Tech doing really well, finally putting uh, some some carries up on uh, on Mograth and uh, and Hecti, regardless of uh, Mograth, so still, still pulling three bands per game, yep. automatically. So it, it's it's really interesting every single time to see how how the team adjusts. But I'm very happy to see that performance, and we're hopefully we'll be able to push it to game five this game. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm Tom hit on it. Go for it. I'm I'm super interested right here to see uh, exactly how these teams kind of square everything up for the draft because, like Duran just said, three carry bands just went out every single game uh, against Mograth, and we're still finding him, you know, dig deeper into this pool. And you know, we're saying, okay, well, he's got to dig deeper in that pool, kind of insinuating like, is he really going to have the same kind of carry effect uh, as he would, you know, on one of these other picks? And the answer is yes. I honestly think that macro-wise, he didn't play that pick to its full potential, and yet he basically just kind of won them the game in the pressure, right? Like, he kind of understood at one point, like, all right, listen, like, I can now just straight up split push. I can just be a thorn in the side of Farmingdale. And they basically won off of that macro pressure. So I'm curious to see if they kind of make any adjustments on Farmingdale's side uh, to deal with something like that. But instead, they're actually going to opt to just ban out the Skarner. They said, Cliff Horse, you have paid three games of it now. Uh, I'm tired of seeing you on it. Uh, they ban the Skarner, and they're actually going to take the Hecarim. I love this from Farmingdale because Skarner is such a good pick into a Hecarim. So they're saying, you know what? We're going to take Skarner off as our last ban. And if you do not ban Hecarim, then now we have a super powerful jungler, best jungler on the patch, and you do not have a super strong answer for it from what we've seen so far, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally agreed. Um they opt to the uh, the Galio ban, picking up the Hecarim, and now over to oh. NYT. They're on red side. They go for Leona and hover Sedge, and they take Sedge. That's a not, That's a lot of CC. That's just two a lot. <laughs> that's a lot of CC already on two people already. Not to mention Sedjuani yeah. gives uh, uh, some buffs to to her teammates as when she's in team fights with them. So this is gonna be. Uh, I haven't seen a Sejuani uh, on Cliff Horse for a few matches. So hopefully it's uh, he's still running well on that one as uh, they need to finish off oh, this game as the team will be hovered. Oh, and it's Teemo locked in for Farmingdale. Game four, they're putting him back on his number one pick. That's confidence right there. If it, it, I don't know what is. I think if there's any game to try it out, it's this one, obviously. Agreed. In a way, you still, not willingly, of course, but you still have one game to burn if you're Farmingdale. You obviously want to end it here, and that's why Teemo's out, and so is the Kai'Sa. Tom, we saw Shatter on Kai'Sa last week against Malloy, pulling with a pentakill on it. It's one of his champions now that is in his arsenal and comfortable at that. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I really like this draft from Farmingdale so far. I'm not 100% sure if I would have picked Teemo this early. If anything, maybe it kind of just allows you to soak up another ban for Phase 2. But they're kind of looking at it and saying, you know what? Like, it's Game 4 right now. we got to close the series out. Like, we're going to trust our top laner and say, listen, like, we're giving you your pick that you are so unbelievably comfortable with. And they ban out two massive counter picks against it in the Mordekaiser and the uh, Aatrox. So... Overall, just good drafting so far. I, yeah. I definitely like it. So we're going to see Galio, Zillion taken off the table from NYT. Galio was phase one. Zillion will start for phase two. Uh, Farmingdale get a chance to counter here. I would not be remotely surprised. Yep, there it uh, is. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, just taking all the carries off. I'm not going to be remotely surprised to see Camille come out here as well. I think another one, yeah. Oh, no, really? Okay. 
interesting. So yeah, a little bit spicy here. Gonna be surprised if they don't pick Camille almost immediately here because it synergizes so unbelievably well uh, with that Sejuani, right? I mean, oh, they're actually just gonna go for Wombo and more combo, man. They're picking the Malphite straight up and saying you can't blind the rock that just ults on top of your face. Uh -huh. So Mograth gonna be piloting that Malphite in game number four. If I am NYIT here, I don't know. I, I feel like it could kind of round out their draft very well, but I would love to see Hecti on a Yone here. I feel like it would work so well into this team. I think I'm honestly obliged to agree with you 100%. I, I think that Yone could definitely be a huge pickup here, and we keep saying how we want these guys on carries. I'm, I'm definitely worried about the low DPS output right now already for... Uh, for NYIT, obviously you got Seems great base a, damage in that Malphite. I have it. Yeah. This series is uh, <laughs> low damage. The Listen, they it. they cleaned it last game, right? So a lot of these kind of picks are, are being taken off the table. But Aggressa is Whoa, actually okay. going to block in the Silas. Hot and Gay is going to go ahead and take a lot of huge ultimates that he can steal here. Jinx True. probably being the worst one that he can steal so far, as Jinx Rocket does need good range. In order to get that max DPS output, but, but the Malphite, the Malphite pull, Malphite ult, Sejuani ult, Leona ult. So you're farming deal, and you're arsenal. sitting here saying we are a little bit low on engage. Well, guess what? You oh, just pick the Silas. Okay, Cassidy locked in for heck. It's it's all in on New York Tech right now. It either works a hundred percent and it works perfectly <laughs> all over the board, or it does not. And they New York Tech said we're going down. If we are going down this game, we're going down with a bang. We're taking the Cassidy and we are taking the Malphite, and we are going to start team fights on our terms, regardless if the heck room goes in or not. But <laughs> you try to get to our Jinx, we're going to stun you with our Leona, and then. If the, it, this is another timer. It's like every single game, there's like at least one or two champions with like, I, I, yeah. I like to call them timer champions, which is like, right. you let the Nasus get too much. Oh, well, well now yep. he's like two-shotting your turrets. You let the Kale go too long. Well, now she's untouchable. You let the you let the Kassadin go for too long, and it's like, oh yeah. no, he's on top of me. I'm dead. <laughs> yeah, quite literally. I oh mean, wait, this is a father yeah. versus daughter lore matchup right now. It's oh, Kassadin true. versus... Kaisa, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's going to be a spicy one here. Yeah, this and we is got about three minutes to talk about it. Yeah, so I, I definitely want to say that my initial reaction is that the team fights go unbelievably heavy to the side of uh, NYIT, right? I mean, you have triple tank that is just basically going to sit on top of your jinx if need be, right? If that hacker yeah. is going all in, like you have triple tank that can just easily apply peel for your hyper damage or hyper carry in the back line hecti we've seen this guy on casting before he is so unbelievably good at finding finding these creative flanks uh and just decimating the enemy back line with it timo cannot blind a cassadin as there is basically no auto attacks that come out of that kit uh overall like this is this is good for the side of nyt i think that they yep. they did really well in this draft i think that farmingdale had a lot of, have a lot of really great answers with it uh, we'll see what Shatter is able to do on this Kai'Sa, but when you're one of the shortest ranged ADs in the game going up against a Malphite, a Sejuani, and Liliona, that's scary. And a Jinx, too. You know, if he gets on top of Jinx, okay, you win. But, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, Jinx just outranges him so hard with these Rockets early game. So, uh, definitely a scary thing to go up against for Farmingdale. I'll say that they got a bit of a mountain to climb, but listen, like in that Malloy game, we saw Teemo uh, playing his signature pick and uh, did pretty darn well on it. it. It did really, really good with objective control. So I'm curious to see uh, how it shapes up for him in game number four here. You know something, Tom, if we remember correctly, and the Farmingdale guys in the chat remember correctly, when Timo and Kaisa are in a game on the side of Farmingdale, Shatter ended up getting a Penta last time. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens here. In game number four, again, Farmingdale at match point. NYT trying to push for a game five. And at that <laughs> point, we're queuing up the silver scrape. So uh, I agree with you, Tom, though. I, I think NYT has a very, very good draft here and just a very good uh, arsenal of tools. And to be honest, if I'm a Farmingdale fan, I I'm worried with Hot and Gay. I've, I really haven't seen him play the Silas a lot, if at all. 
Yeah, so back when uh back when I was with this team, uh coaching for these guys, Silas was one of our better flex picks as back in those days, you know, you could pilot it into the jungle as well. So uh J Real and Hot and Gay would switch off a lot on who's piloting that Silas. Both of those guys were absolutely insane on the pick. Uh, being the fact that it is kind of coming back into meta now as a huge answer into something like the Malphite. And I mean, yeah. they kind of picked two other champions that it goes great into as well. Uh, I'm not too worried. It probably, I, I don't know how long it's been since he's actually played the pick, but That's my question. Uh, it, it'll, it'll definitely be interesting to say the least, because if he has a good performance here, I mean, as, as we saw in that Malloy series, right? I mean, Silas can absolutely be one of those champions that just can solo take over a game and just cause such a headache for the opposition. No doubt. Duran, any last minute thoughts going into this game? All I'm saying is that New York Titan needs to play these team fights almost perfectly because if, if anybody Great. gets away from them, it's it's totally gonna be agree. it's gonna be a bad time for them. As uh, we're gonna do our normal uh waiting for the things to come in and favorite skin everyone. I for some reason really like Freljord Silas. I think the splash art is actually just super, super cool. I, I don't even think the in game skin is like that crazy compared to normal Silas, but I, I I really like it, so that's my answer. I I am a massive fan of the Hextech Sejuani skin. I think it looks really cool. Fair, but that's a good one. I also love the um, Battle Academia Prestige yeah. uh, Leona as well. It's one of my favorites. Picking that up for myself, too. Also very, very fair. I, well, I kind of just like Edgy Teemo. I like I'm, <laughs> I'm a I'm a fan of characters with goggles and I think the the goggles Teemo with the it's just like very like I'm war torn I I've seen <laughs> I've seen the other side kind of deal. Dude, he's um, he's, Ome he's he's Spec Ops Teemo. Yeah, man. I I love the Omega world. Omega behind Squad skin lines. line. Yeah, yeah man. Literally behind enemy lines as like uh, Rambo, Teemo Rambo is gonna is have like... to live up to their name right here. <laughs> yeah, we'll have Rambo's to see. A foot tall. <laughs> Look at the little Ooh. goggles light up and everything. This is like there's some really well made skins that don't really get enough uh, credit uh, yeah. for how good they are. So agreed. Oh man, this is gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna literally Something. have a heart attack. These these games because these these. I'm gonna literally be biting my nails all over the place as uh, New York <laughs> yeah, Tech something. needs to pull this one together if they want to push this one to a game five. And Farmingdale is looking to to. Uh, have the League of Legends trophy change hands for three years in a row. First year was New York Tech, second year was Damien, and they are looking to take it this year. And New York Tech trying to get back onto this one. So, uh, the it looks like the Deep War is going to come in and ooh, double invade though. Two v two. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Farming Dill just wins this outright with the Teemo damage, right? I mean, he's a lot already of damage. Is Jay Rio going to go there. low? As uh, Teemo is just gonna get some poison damage in, as they're already sending multiple members. As that was oh, a flash, early here, flash from from uh, Teemo. As a uh, Cliff Horse also had to expend their their flash. So that's gonna be a little bit of engage uh, off the table. Ghost and uh, flash, both of Teemo's summoners off the table now, and J Real's ghost down the drain. Cliff Horse losing his flash, but still retains and is able to. Uh, secure his buff, uh, buff for himself. Yeah, that's a lot of the uh, power coming out from any Sejuani pick with a melee matchup, right? Like, even mm -hmm. though Teemo had Ignite there with good Dot and j -Real had the helicopter that he could just kind of, like, keep swish, swish, swishing around, yet the fact that, you know, Mograth just got so many free autos off there and, and uh, Cliff Horse could just straight up throw the stuns out, Sejuani's early game base damages are off the charts insane. True. So it, yep. it's that's basically how they really lost that 1v1. But Han Gay looks like he's going for a bit of a trade here into the mid lane. Both these mid laners now getting chunked down to about two, 300 HP, and it's just harass coming out from every single lane here. Yeah, the gloves are off on literally on both teams right now. Yeah. As a... Uh... I, I don't know, understand the purpose of you blinding a mountain, but that is if that's how it works, Teemo, that you are the Spec Ops master here, not me. Uh, as uh, Mograth is going to go very, very low, but he's going to be popping that uh, that corruption. This is going to be rough here. Teemo's looking for it. Yeah, Teemo oh, going to go get it. Age, yeah. As a pull is, we're going to see a, um, a, a, a gank coming out from the bottom lane. And that Seraphina. Uh, that Seraphine ability is not going to be able to connect. As uh, Shatter needed to pop the flash there. Yeah. Interesting 
Shatter ends up surviving. He actually burns both summoners. He burns the cleanse as well. Okay. Um, I think. Not sure hey. what Tom did to his microphone. Hello. But he's Welcome okay, back. Okay, he's back. We got All him. Right. Yeah. We're good. <laughs> Either you pulled a cable or something, but I something saw you like talking. That. I was like, "What is he?" <laughs> Not no sure audio. what we missed on on my voice, but I'm really sorry to hear you guys had to go like a few seconds without it. It's rough. Uh, no, but listen, a really good engage from uh, NYIT, burning out both sums from Shatter. So you know, if, if these guys can you know equalize out and then uh, maybe Cliff Horse finds another <laughs> angle to come back to this bot lane, that should be a pretty free kill onto Shatter. So it's kind of just at this point how they play around those down summoners. But j Real is already lining up in the top. We're going to come in for a gank. No, no he's, he's not. He's go actually just going to... Yeah, he's just going to take those... Uh, <clears throat> going to go for a different rock. Wrong rock, think, buddy, but... I think Mograf <laughs> kind of senses it out. He's probably thinking to himself right now that, uh, you know... Timo's trying to freeze the wave. Cliff Horse spots him out here. He's only at half HP, so Cliff Horse has to be a little bit careful. Uh, he has to be a lot more really careful. Does. He's going to go very, very he's low. Jay Rule's going to be able to get that kill, and he's going to be able to knock uh, Mograth into the Teemo. I yeah, Cliff I think Cliff Horse thought that his top laner was just so much closer there to rotate with him, and I maybe he thought he was a little bit tankier, but he just goes down. 1v1 solo kill onto Jay Real, so huge of him to pick that up. Gets most of that farm as well, and... Uh, you know, not able to find Mograth on the back half of it, but Timo does get some good poke out, so he's got really good pressure in this lane for himself right now. Yeah, we'll have to see. And, you know, something about this um, Silas pick in the mid lane is just, well, in general, is just the insane amount of healing that he gets off of that <clears throat> W. So if he looks to max that, which he is in fact doing, hitting level 5, putting a third point into it, um... Hot engage is going to be so difficult to take down in some of these team fights, but Cliff Horse is in bot lane. Ooh, the flash is going to be committed, and they do not have a cleanse, but here comes the teleport, and they're going to have to get this and get out of there as quickly as possible, as Shatter oh. will go low, and Kratos will be able to get that kill, as Hot engage is going to be in the middle of a team fight, and they're going to see if they can get some more stuns down, but they will not, as Best Team ONA is going to get into another fight with uh, Mograth. I oh, think he's going to die, he's gonna oh, and that's going to be an, a kill going up to the top lane, as we're going to have some Fs in chat there. Not a favorable matchup. This is the first time we're seeing Mograft uh, so far on the back foot there versus the Teemo. And unfortunately, that's what happens when you you literally pick the... We pick the Mograft... Uh, they pick the Malphite into, into the Teemo. Yeah, Teemo playing really, really well. We saw this same amount of pressure coming in from 1&M. 1&M, however, just opted to kind of sit under turret and kind of equalize out. But... You know, maybe on this Malphite, it's so much harder to do. So Teemo just has so much pressure on this pick so far. You know, last game, Morgrath was Ooh. the uh, top lane win, Con. And this game, it's Teemo. And yeah, trade going out into mid lane. Hecti's got level six, so Hot and Gay does not. So Hecti's able to poke out Hot and Gay pretty hard. Corrupting Mod is going to keep him topped off fairly healthy, but. Look at Shatter's subs. I mean, they're coming back up. I believe when he died, his his cleanse was down for maybe like five more seconds or something. Yeah. So NYIT definitely played around that timer really, really well and able to punish Shatter like we had said before. And yeah, first Drake does go over to them at about six minutes in. So second Drake is going to be Infernal. Uh, that's coming back up in about four and a half minutes now. But j is behind him, though. They're looking at Hecti here. Ooh, he's going to jump directly into that... Uh into that ult and unfortunately the um oh that's gonna be a very bad misclick coming out from hot and gate that would have been a good uh they would have easily gotten that kill if that connected but yeah, unfortunately it wasn't able to not land hecti does have to burn the flash though so they can try again for another one of these j real was not even level six so he can kind of repeat gank the same idea as onto shatter right i mean flash is down and at level six yeah you do have that rift lock uh but as you can see on your screen, it's charging back up. If, if you can layer CC well enough, it's it's not like a level 16 where it's up every, you know, one second or so. It's you, you have a few seconds of a grace window to kind of punish it. So definitely expecting Farmingdale to go back towards that lane really, really soon, especially now that J-Real does have the Onslaught of Shadows. But, you know, we're going to have to see exactly how they want to uh, play around that one. Yeah, CS just kind of... Even down, aside from top lane, Teemo naturally about a 20 CS lead. It's just so hard to CS into uh, a Teemo with that blind always coming out, and it's just so oppressive. Unfortunate, yeah. 
Thankfully, yeah, he's got thankfully a two he level has Malphite right though. Or one I level. Mean, I'm trying to think like what's like at the end of the day, like it doesn't matter how far back a Malphite is, like he could still just True. click R on your team. And if it's good enough, it's something. But but still, I mean, best team Monet has got him got got his number for this uh for this game. Finally getting some revenge, uh some revenge CS. <laughs> Yeah, no doubt about it. Timo's definitely doing a good job, but like you said, you know, that Malphite does find a good, uh, you know, however many men all did. It doesn't really matter how much farm he's down. It's CC and it's Ooh. it's engaged. Prime has got to be careful day, so. here. Yeah, he's, he's definitely got to respect some of that DPS coming out from Acti. He gets chunked down to about half HP, but once again, not much going to be found. j is actually sitting in this bush now. Hecti does not know that he's here. He shouldn't, so I think Hot and Gay just trying just to bait in. Oh, no, no, uh, Cliff Horse is on his way down. As the route will get on to Leona. She's just gonna... Yeah, well, they'll, they'll spot out Cliff Horse, and Timo now knows that he is good to continue shoving. And look at the plates. I mean, he's already got plate number four down to yep. about half HP, so not only does he have a pretty good CS lead... Oh, plate number four is actually down. Yeah. He's already working on plate number three, so Timo just putting out a massive gold lead for himself in this top lane. J-Real's just at this point... Got to kind of keep the CS up, or obviously it's not the CS, the warding up. Make sure that Teemo has all the ability that he needs to make sure that uh, Cliff Force is not going to find any creative yeah. ganks to get on top of him. If, if I'm Farmingdale here, I want to try and opt for the Rift Herald uh, and just get that right into Teemo's pocket and see if he Agreed. can secure the first tower gold and all the plate gold for himself. Um, that's in the ideal scenario. Ooh. Whether NYIT lets that happen or not, that's the question. I'm loving this brawl that's happening here in the mid lane. This is just like, hey, just leave us alone. And and uh, Hecti's perfectly happy, which is kind of just, uh, oh wait, 69 CS. Nice. 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 Um, nice. Won't be nice for another few seconds. Oh, actually, no, he went back. So he's going to keep the nice streak open for just a nice. little while. Nice. Um, <laughs> for just a little while longer as, uh, I mean, New York Tech is down 1K gold right now. But that's not as significant. Uh, it, it's significant, but not as significant as we would have wanted, as uh, so, they would have wanted it to be. We have something in the top lane that's very interesting. Uh, Timo just secured his demonic embrace. Interesting. This early into the Ooh. game, 11 minutes in. So not opting for. Uh, well, rather, I believe that's a legendary item. That is a legendary, so, so he can yeah, still go for something like the Leandries. He can still go for his Leandries, yeah. And I guess he's waiting to see how uh, the NYIT squad will try to build against him. Right. Um, and probably wait for that. But he picked up the Dark, Se the Dark Seal, has two stacks on that, and uh, he's almost 26, 27 CS up over Mograth at the moment. So uh, Mograth's just going to try and, you know, buckle up for a ride. I mean... It He's just gonna try and look for ults in the team Ooh, fights. Be, heck, he's, he's gotta, gotta be careful. Cause here comes Jay Real. And yeah, Jay Real. Oh, opts to not. Oh my he's god! If he would have committed to that, that would have been a lot of There's damage the from the Jinx. Harold top. There it is. All the gold to Teemo again. As New York Tech is gonna be able to secure their second dragon of the game. New York Tech slipping. Soul. Still slipping on his round two and a half k gold right now. Yeah. So that is a really good drake for this squad Ooh, to pick up amazing. for themselves if they can the amount of burning and dot that uh that teemo is going to be able to put out the uh, ocean soul will definitely keep them you know nice and topped off or at least you know not down all the way into the depths of uh blink and red health bar so yeah. not a bad soul to get it all if you are against this squad especially with a two and one teemo that is about 40 cs above the opposition but in the mid lane i mean Hot and Gay definitely falling a little bit behind in CS as well, right? He blind picked that Silas, I believe, if I remember correctly. Yeah. And uh, nice. got counterpicked with the uh, Cassidy, so definitely, definitely having a bit of a rough time. You know, kind of hard for Silas to play into something like the Cassidy. He's in mid though. Yeah, Timo's Look at this. Just chilling this is here something that he loves to do. Oh yeah. Just kind of wait, but looking at the total gold accumulated thus far, I mean. Timo has almost 2k gold right now above Mograth and just under 2k Gotta be careful. above no. Hecti right now. So just so much gold funneled into this Timo at the moment. He's got his Sork Shoes, again the Demonic Embrace, and eager to see where he goes with this Sapphire Crystal. 
Yeah, I think Teemo took a bit of time there to just see if he could find something. Hot and Gay not able to find the bait to get Hecti to bite and come all in, but... Teemo's here. Yeah, Teemo is here. It looks like he's just going Ooh. straight in on towards him, but... Not going to be able to find too much else. It's just going to be about a third of his HP gone, and they're going to probably get this lane shoved in and maybe try to get themselves a few plates while they're at it. Your tech ba got to start buying those scrying orbs soon. Oh, they're Teemo's... doing a lane swap straight up. So it looks like Hot and Gay is actually on his way to top lane to try to punish Mograth here a little bit. J-Reel going down on towards him right now, trying to get a little bit of damage out, but Holds Mograth the with the speed, yeah. And even with that early death from Shatter, he's still 20 CS up in the bot lane, which is just... That, that shouldn't be able to happen in this lane, to be honest, after being put behind. Yeah, it's definitely a good job from him to keep those CS numbers up nice and high. Uh, again, it's it's going to be such a hard game for him to play Ooh. anyway, so any little yep. bit of farm is just going to help so much. But actually, a flash like on here. Sword. Yeah, Gressa has to get the ult out. Shatter has to burn cleanse and flash. And here comes the ult. Really I mean, the teleport. Kratos. Will Kratos be able to get out of that? Will, will Clifford? Yeah, everybody's going to get out of this one unscathed. Everybody so teleports, by the way. Everybody teleports, by the way. Double teleport coming out bot lane. Uh, all sums blown for Shatter. All sums blown for Kratos. Ooh, Heal the ult. Oh, wow, As here comes Hexy and the rest of the New York Tech squad, and they're trying to get some revenge kills in. Will Teemo oh, be able to get out of this? Teemo gets out. No way. And now J Reel's in the mid lane with an on onslaught of shadows. They're gonna pick up Cliff Horse and Mogra. The, the rocket right on top. Oh, the rocket got Teemo. Teemo gets rocket taken Teemo. out. Oof. Okay, so that, that was, was an interesting, interesting fight. Yeah. Jadriel has an unbelievable onslaught of shadows and finds two. Hecti just able to get himself out of that, but Mograth, even stepping onto the shroom, puts him into kill range, and they do find him as well. So overall, two for one, but that, that you know, lucky for the, uh, I shouldn't say lucky, I should say very good for Manjari, so good heads up from him to recognize that Timo's likely backing yeah. right under the tower, and he's able to find that cross-map Jinx rocket right onto him, so... Really good from uh, NYT to even that out a little bit, but overall strong fight. Ooh, hot and gay, NYT, but it's not done just yet. Yeah, Hecti could go right onto hot and gay. He's got the ult, so he should be safe. He's gonna be able to walk himself right out of that, but could have gone wrong real quick for him. Yeah, we got yeah. this uh, Ocean Soul Dragon number three for NYT in about 40 seconds, and. With an Ocean Soul on the table, Farmingdale really don't want to let that go over to them. So expect a fight here. And Teemo's pathing now about 30 seconds out to try and set up that vision. Those Mograth has his teleport together. as well. So yep. this could be very, very explosive. This could be the fight that decides. Oh, he's going to go directly into oh, a shroom. Oh, yeah, right onto the shroom. And he falls beautifully played from Hot and Gay, recognizing that that shroom onslaught is right there. Onslaught of Shadows. The onslaught of Shadows right into another shroom. These placements for Farming Girl absolutely perfect. And J Reel is able to pick up yet another kill for his team. The Rocket does it. J Real gets dropped to about 100 HP. Oof, He's gonna be able to sustain right through it though. But with two dead, the jungle mid from NYIT, they have no choice but to just give this Drake. Farmingdale have earned themselves the first Drake of their game. Yeah, and with that, it's about a four and a half K gold lead in favor of the Rams and threatening here. Big kills coming across for uh, Hecarim and the Silas. Sitting pretty 3 0 and 1, 2 0 and 2. So the gold on Farmingdale, right where you want it. But NYT is definitely not out of this game yet. Yeah, absolutely. So really good. A little bit of more gold going into Shatter's pocket. He's 0 1 and 0 and has a 150 gold shutdown. That is a testament to the amount of gold from that tower that he just got and the fact that he's about 30 CS up on his opposition, who is 1 0 and 1. So gold just going really far into the favor of uh, Farmingdale right now. It's about 17 minutes in, and they've gotten themselves about a 6k gold lead, a little bit less than that. 5.5k, roughly. Yeah, the sweepers coming out for the jungler and the support of, of NYIT. I would actually... It's hard to argue if you want another sweeper for Cass, but it's just so hard to, like, 
face check into the river in the jungle of or anywhere you know, yeah really with just the threat of the shrooms that'll do half your hp so uh yeah i mean opting for the rift arrow here we saw that exactly right in the malloy game i mean, th this is exactly how they played that pick and it worked out perfectly i mean i mean this is not a pick we, we brought up the point against malloy that even though that they have great players and same obviously goes for NYIT, right? This is not a pick that you are clearly accustomed to, to going against. I mean, in all of their scrims and all of their matches in the last year, how many times do you think they went up against a Teemo? Probably zero yeah. times. So it's not a pick that you really practice for. And uh, it, it, it's it's pressure in a situation like that where they are first on scene and Teemo can just get his shrooms set up. I mean, Farmdale are playing really, really well around it, and it's shown that they've really put good practice into actually utilizing uh, yeah. this non-meta pick in a really strong way. Ooh. <laughs> the double, <laughs> the double Everfrost. Down. The Everfrost handshake means both guys will just walk away and say, all right, fair enough. <laughs> good stuff. I'll play. And Shatter looking to steal away the blue buff for himself. Deny that from Hecti. Deny that from NYIT. And just again, you, you can't really walk. You don't know what's covered with a shroom and you don't know what is. So and why are you just kind of trying to farm up and, and poise for a late game scale? But it's so tough here. Yeah, I mean, and, uh, I think Hexy that, uh... is going to go low, but here comes Hot and Gay. Will they be able to pull out of this? Ooh, yeah. They will as the old oh, the, the Flash yeah. is going to be able to come in. Will Hexy go down? No, he will not. And that's going to be a shutdown going gold going on to Hexy. Really and here up. comes the yeah, onslaught of Shadows kill. as uh, Farmingdale able to pull that kill back. But that's going to be shutdown gold. That's 150 gold going over to Hexy. It's not a lot, but it's something. Yeah, I mean, when you have a hyperscaling mid laner like Cassidy, and you take those. You Ooh, know, that's one of those oh, players so where that's close. just, you take those, 100%. A kill goes on to the Cassidy, and even a small one, a shutdown kill goes on to the Cassidy, and versus a kill goes on to the Hecarim. Yeah, you you definitely take those. That was almost really, really well played from Hot and Gay. In a 2v1 scenario, able to flash out of the way from Cliff Horses oh! out there. Almost, almost able to, uh to turn it back down on towards them, but uh, not able to, just so close. Yeah, close enough. j Real sitting pretty though, 4-0-1, 550 gold shutdown, and 162 farm. This Hecarim is massive right now. Yeah, and look at the fact that, for like we're talking about pressure from the shrooms, like the fact that NYIT have to actually blow these sweepers and clear out like relatively ineffective areas of their jungle, because Ooh, like Baron. they're not doing it for wards yet. Okay, so I'm gonna stop right there because Farmingdale started up the Baron and they have no clue. I mean, they're not even remotely moving towards this. Uh, Cliff Force is maybe slowly but surely making his way over there, but again, like he just used the sweeper, so he can't really clear out any wards. He doesn't know where anybody from Farmingdale yeah, no is. Yeah, yeah, yeah they have no Baron. idea. And this Baron is just going down. That is Baron at 21 minutes. Farmingdale right from under the noses of the Cybers take Baron for themselves. Yeah, commanding position right now for the Rams. Up roughly about 5k gold, a little bit more. The second ocean drag coming up. Most likely to split it. And Farmingdale's in a very solid spot here as they look to push down this mid lane. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, at this point, all they really got to do is kind of just bring these uh barren up cannon minions in and, and just kind of let them do the work for them hot and gay is going to be in this top lane just making sure you know all three of these lanes will likely be buffed Timo just sitting invisible waiting for somebody to misstep and he's just going to go right for him so we'll see if he's able to find something for himself but yeah i mean all these lanes from farmingdale mid tower tier two falls top tower tier two falls bottom, bottom tier, tier two, two falls <laughs> and the dragon's up too but they opt to keep going perhaps yeah it looked like shatter was like moving towards yeah. it and like hey guys we can just go get this real quick and it kind of looks like jreal and him were kind of on different pages on what they wanted to prioritize but you know with yeah, the remaining like members of nyt be... here yeah it looks like they'll just say okay you know what we're just gonna go get this and uh look at this play no like problem. oh it's so <laughs> obnoxious just like if andrew risu walks forward here by himself timo that's exactly what he's waiting for just yeah the blind dart if not <clears throat> forcing sums uh, a kill is probably going into his belt. He's got Demonic Embrace, and he's sitting on so much gold right now. He's actually yeah. sitting on 2k. Um, 
So Timo's expecting a big back here, but doesn't want to back because of the Baron pressure. Yeah, I mean, at this point, I kind of feel like, you know, their, their Baron is going to last for about another 30 seconds to a minute. I can't remember the exact timer on it, but I mean, you got it for only like a little while longer. It's not like NYT can really, uh, you know, if, if you reset right now, it's not like they can really push out and get anything considering they are so far shoved back, but it looks like they're going to go for their resets now and instead say, you know, we're kind of just wasting time here. Let's just get our resets and look for the next play around the map. That Drake does end up going down towards Farmingdale. So four minutes next uh, for their next Drake and both teams will stack two and two, but Farmingdale with a nice solid uh, roundabout of about an AK gold lead for themselves at 24 minutes into this game. Yeah, just about just passing the 24 minute mark and Farmingdale creeping up on a 10k gold lead just barely so lots of gold in all the right places for Farmingdale Leandri's picked up by Teemo collector finished for Shatter all these key items are now coming online for Farmingdale and NYT is just trying to scavenge what they can and scavenge gold in any lane that they can at the moment because they're down but yeah. they're definitely not out so we'll I, I think see. they just think gotta what, make uh, one play i think what new york tech is waiting for is just one really good team fight but farmingdale's just not gonna yeah. give it to them yep they know that the yeah, moment that, that it's a 5v5 it's gonna be it's gonna be very very complicated for uh for farmingdale as a uh, hot and gaze and against the 1v1 and make that a 2v1 as uh will not pop the uh the flash just yet and new york tech barely holding on right now as uh they're gonna start pushing down the bottom lane still got to be careful about where you're going yeah, Ooh, very close to now. that explosion <laughs> here oh, comes here that oh, yeah it's exactly what we were team. looking for and they would have pro probably hoped for something like that a little bit sooner as uh, Shatter will too. not be able to survive this. That's going to be shutdown kill onto, uh, onto the Malphite. Yeah, really good engage there from Mograth, catching out both members of the bottom lane from Farmingdale. They're able to take them down also, so not only is a little bit of shutdown gold going to go over to them. <laughs> yeah, Teemo just kind of lying in wait. This, <laughs> I'm telling so you, with knocked. the Spec Ops 2, it's even more terrifying. It works out. It works, yeah, it makes sense. Hot and Gay playing the sideline really, really well. The NYT yep. keep rotating up so many members to him, but he's just catching them on really good vision every single time and making sure not to get caught out, so... You know, even with the double catch on oh, bot lane. Oh, uh, yeah, they're clearing it out now, but... Do they know? Is Timo going to look for anything? How could they, they know? can't really look for it. Yeah, they don't. I think he's got to just kind of stay <laughs> oh! still here. Oh! The sweeper dissipates just before. Timo. Enemy line, quite point. literally. Okay, and Jirisu is still playing this very, very safe. Not going to move up too much. As best wants. Timo and A with the greatest amount of trigger... Oh, my God, just barely missing everything. I've never seen trigger this is exactly discipline what in League of Legends. Right here. This is the I've never seen this kind of trigger discipline in League That's of Legends. That's absolutely this is blowing my mind. insane. <laughs> they know. Okay, they know where that person is, and the Teemo is right there. <laughs> so, this is. Oh my God! So much respect right Teemo. now. Yeah. He has a knife and a dream. Farmingdale has to just bait them out a little bit, what, bit farther. That's like, if they so drop close. in Jirisu, like, that's probably a teamfight victory for them. That's, that's like, 50% of their uh, damage, roughly. That'd be the roughly. game, to be honest, if they get them. They put another ward over the wall, down. so they know that J Real is... Oh, they, they oh. finally saw him! Oh. And oh. Teemo... Teemo will oh, throw the ballistic the knife. Long con. Th gives up on the long con oh, and man. not able to find the pick he was Men's just not for. even moving the rest of the game, just... Just sitting there. He's he actually DC'd three wait, minutes, wait, minutes ago. He actually. Yeah. <laughs> it's like playing Yumi. He's just like, I'm DCing. Yeah, I mean, that's basically what that champ is for, right? Yeah. Rams look to poise towards Baron, and NYT look like they're gonna try oh, and do something, but explosion. there's a shroom. Oh, yeah. Charm right down onto Cliff Horse. Cliff that means Horse. Shatter can jump in now. He's able to pick up that kill, and J Real from over the wall is able to pick up the return onto Kratos as well. Two members of NYIT go down. The Baron is going to go over to the Rams. And Drake is coming up too here, so they're probably going to be able to kind of do what 
uh, NYT were able to do to him last game and just kind of take every single objective that's on the map for free. They're doing this pretty slow, though. Yeah, they do do it slow, but there's really no contest, especially now uh, that Andrew yeah. blue Jinx rocket. So that was actually really good timing. I mean, if there were four members there, he, he might actually get that. So not bad timing there for him at all, but because they were doing it so slow, it hit it when it was at like 6k. So yeah, really nothing that they're going to have to worry about. Is Teemo going to go back into Spec Ops mode? He might. Probably will. Probably will. I just love he throws like a knife at you and just like, ow. It's terrifying, right? <laughs> it's actually, it's this is the it. most terrifying skin in the entire... The, the Devil Teemo has nothing on Spec Ops Teemo. No, it doesn't. It for sure doesn't. This is this is for sure really a... Uh, and a little helicopter comes skin. in and takes him away. Come on. Yeah, man, he's getting extracted. It's like SEAL Team 6, man. Yeah. <laughs> Escape from Summoner's Rift. <laughs> 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 yeah, pretty much. And now Farmingdale with the third dragon under their belt. Shatter secures red for himself. Three ocean drags on the side. Now it's Soul Point. And Baron, they're going to poise to probably start splitting this up and uh, finish this one off. Poising for the end. Yeah, yeah. So they're going to try. Here's the hope for NYIT. We were talking before about the timer champs that Duran was calling it, right? Hecti is level 15 on this Gassadin. He's got two items. We've all seen what that champion can do with such a low amount of items. Like, he gets the 16 and he's an absolute beast. His stat scaling is just off the charts. So, yeah, Farmingdale have a super huge advantage right here and right now. But one little misstep and Hecti is going to be a menace for this team that they are just going to have such a hard time dealing with. So, yeah, I mean, Farmingdale can absolutely posture for a, uh, a strong Baron power play right here, right now. But... They gotta be careful to not make any bad missteps. Yeah, and I think Oof. like you said, Tom, it's the the 5v5 threat still poised on the side of NYT. Like, you're still into a Malphite, Sejuani, Leona, Oof, still Jinx. Very close. Yeah. Like, there's so it's such a wombo y team that you really have to be careful and you really have to pick it apart, which they're kind of doing. Shatter poising towards this bot lane. He's going to look to push in the wave on the bot side. Teemo's up top. And... Teemo went for the Leandri, so it's going to be some extra yeah. damage over time. Yeah, especially with that uh, Void Step as well, and the, the raw magic pen coming from the Sork Shoes. Just so much damage coming from Teemo. He's sitting at level 17 at the moment. Yeah, nice. Root onto Hector from Hot and Gay, but not much is going to be there to follow. They're just going to sit here and just let this cannon do most of the work for them. I mean, it's going to slowly but surely get down onto him, and... Uh, you know, if he, if he even tries to step up, I mean, Teemo is here ready and waiting to just one-shot this Jinx. So, Tower does go down. Teemo's going to use the Shrooms just to get a little bit more poke down onto the tanks. Oh, he can get really a little throw bit of those things at level team. 16, huh? Yeah, he can just yeet those guys. He turns into a little bit of a, uh, a, little bit of a Tom Brady kind of guy. <laughs> if Tom Brady was one <laughs> foot tall and had glow-in-the-dark goggles. And a throwing knife. And a throwing knife. <laughs> <laughs> Probably flatten the balls. Oh, okay, right. here's gonna be the ult right through, and will this be the end? As New York Tech will be taking multiple casualties in this team fight, but they're trying to salvage back something as Hecti is level 16, trying to get something on this. As Hot and Gay's gonna go in deep, New York Tech is gonna lose too. Will we be able to find it as a uh, will Farming W be able to find anything else? Clip Wars is gonna go in deep. Chatter, <laughs> be able to get one. Will we be able to get anything? No, he will not. As Hecti still alive. We'll be able to, to do something insane here because this is all they're gonna this all, their last chance. New York Tech will be able to find anything on this is Hecti. We'll be going down. We'll be going low. Will it be able to go down? Kratos goes down! And I think that's it! Cause it just froze on my oh, screen! We gotta freeze. Does it always do this to us? Alright, I'm calling you right here! Farmingdale win! Farmingdale wins! Farmingdale State College back to back ECC now the 2021 spring semester champions take down NYIT in a three to one game series. I'm what just gonna, just I'm happened, just, man. Like, just, uh, why does it freeze here? What a what is Klein, everybody go at Riot Games. And that's just gonna winding it a little bit on my end to see if I can get something, but I think it's gonna freeze regardless. Nope. I am going to try uh, to go yeah, back no, it, myself. No, it froze on my screen too. Even if you jump back, it's still there. I got the message from Shatter. Farmingdale has taken oh. the game formally. Wait, I just think I just got it. Wait. 
I, at least I they they at least are owed this because as EZZ champions they deserve this win. If it frees up again, I'm actually gonna be angry, and it's gonna freeze up with like a half out. No, I'm done. No, I'm done. Give it to Farmingdale. I think it freezes Come, right there. Come, give it there. to Farmingdale. Yeah. Unlucky that it's the last play of the game, but it is over now. Farmingdale State College are able to secure the win. It is three to one in the game series. What an absolute banger of a finals i mean nyit for sure was looking like the best team in the league we said at the start of the cast 17 and 1 on the total uh season record they only dropped one game and it was against damon in the semi finals had a perfect season but we said at the start farmingdale just looking better and better and better timo finally unlocking himself right that timo pick now two for oh on it having an unreal uh, game on it. Every, everybody from Farmingdale, I feel like, just stepped up huge in this series. Their team play was way more coordinated. Their individual mechanical play, everything. This team just looked like by far the better team. And and honestly, GG's to NYIT. But uh, congratulations to Farmingdale for taking this win. And for the third year in a row, uh, the the uh, the championship trophy will move from one school to another to another once again as Farmingdale. Able to take the trophy away from last year. I think Damien was able to take it. Correct? Yes. 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 Correct. Yep. Okay, this is third. Yeah, this is third year ECC. As uh, New York Tech will fall at the end. Both teams both still getting a seed into uh, the the uh, Collegiate League of Legends tournament. But Farmingdale is going to take their first championship for League of Legends. And will take it back to Farmingdale, Long Island. <laughs> Uh, yeah. We're going to be getting see. an interview up in just a bit, ladies and gentlemen, as we're going to be waiting for uh, an interview. Uh, correct? Yep. Yeah, I I got Shatter the message. I don't know if he's seen it yet because he's on Do Not Disturb. But we're going to be talking to Shatter. Uh, we'll take a quick break while we let him in here. And then, oh, he's in. Never mind, but I'm not seeing him. Uh... Waiting for him to join the server. Let me, and we'll, let me I'll just get him, him in the server. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There he is. He's in. There he is. Okay. Oh, you. And let me drag him in. I don't have permission. I got him. It's all I you, got him. Shane Shatter Gordon, congrats, my man. ECC Champions 2021. How are you feeling, my guy? I'm buzzing, dude. I'm so excited. <laughs> I don't even know how to explain it. It's it's inexplainable. <laughs> last season of playing for the team, um, they really like carried me through this last game. Timo, especially and Jay, like actually pulling my dead weight across the finish line to give me the, <laughs> the win. And it feels so good. I'm so proud of my team. They played so well under like such like a hard in like such a much such pressure, and uh, they came through for for us. And I'm really proud of the team. Okay, yeah, move no, the camera. Totally. Yeah, man, listen, I, I, I got to ask, dude, because you, through playoffs, just played such an absolutely incredible. Yeah, I, I mean, you, you just played level. such an incredible set of games. And you say then this last game that, that they carried your dead weight across the finish line. But, I mean, in the rest of this series uh, and, and in the Malloy series, I mean, you had stepped up to be such an absolutely insane member for this team when that really had never uh, been through – or your guys' plan, right? You guys have always been the team that plays through jungle mid. Uh, what changed in the same environment that allowed you guys to kind of unlock your bot lane? Um, honestly, I'm not sure what exactly changed. I know <laughs> we took we took practice a lot more serious, and uh, me and Agresso played a lot more, and that allowed us to two v two better. I think that even though we're we're both like around platinum level, like we've we I constantly get us scrims against teams that are like high diamond. And that helped us in our 2v2 a lot. So even in games that me, where me and Lindsay we could, or me and Aggressor were like outmatched or outdrafted, in like we still somehow do really well and are able to play um, pretty efficiently. So that's that's uh, a shout out to Lindsay for definitely stepping up. Seraphine Nolts insane the past couple games. Yeah, huge Seraphine. Yeah, Nolts absolutely. Two games. Yeah, right, I mean. Do you have any questions? Sorry, Tom, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, no. If Duran's got something, go, please. No, no, I just want to congratulate you and your team. You guys absolutely popped off as uh, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of Shatter. I saw there's a lot of Shatter fans in the in the chat saying uh, Shatter is better than Double Lift. 
Uh, so, <laughs> so nice to finally actually see your face after we've been messaging each other for weeks on end. Um, yeah. As, but yeah, you guys absolutely popped off this game. Game one popped off. Game two, free firing. Game three, small, small misstep. Game four, and uh, and you got you went straight back into that one. And even though you were you were focused down on the bottom lane, still ahead in CS, still uh, dominating over your opponent. So congrats appreciate for that. that. Thank you, appreciate it. To everyone in the chat and everyone who like watched today, thank you, appreciate it a lot. To my to my team, to Tom, Duran, you guys did a great job. It, it was, I know that the stream was awesome. So we appreciate you guys a lot. So thank you for uh, doing this for us. Everyone in the chat, spam Shane Pog. Appreciate you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, I, 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 I feel like this is kind of more of an ending question. So I, I feel bad asking now, but I just gotta know, man. I mean, you've been with, uh, you've been with the team, and you've been with the Farmingdale esports scene for a few years now. You, you've been the president for the last year. Uh, what does it mean to you to have your team that you compete on, that you are the captain of, that you have put so much time, energy, and dedication to? What does it mean to you to finally have this victory and to have that trophy now come back to Farmingdale? It means the world, man. Like I've we've been on the team. I've been playing on this team for four semesters, five semesters now, and every season, like we're just a little bit away from winning. We're just one team fight, one misplay away from ending the game, or like one bad rotation away from winning, and like. To, we always took games off all the top teams. So, like, to finally, like, win a series against, like, definitely, the our, no doubt, the, the, the other best team in the league feels fantastic, amazing. I couldn't have asked for a better group of people to do it with. Um, these guys are my best friends, and I appreciate them sticking with me and, and dealing with my uh, constant nagging and yelling. Because <laughs> I yell a lot at Lindsay and Timo, and they definitely take it, and they do really good a good job at, like, um adapting to that so appreciate them yeah, man, I, I had one question i mean in game number three you were on the jinx and i think it was one of the fights where you were just you, almost popping off and then you flash forward and died i mean there's got to be emotion <laughs> there in terms of getting to that point you guys are up 2-0 at the time and then you know you get a little bit hyphy and then at that <laughs> after you after your screen goes gray how do you feel do you just like completely like fall apart so you keep your composure i mean obviously but no like, what was your, what was going through your mind at that point i was honestly just a little bit tilted because in in the two <laughs> like three or three previous team fights prior like i was playing jinx and like i know i was doing like really good damage like aoe was knocking them and then like oh, yeah. baby would baby would get the last kill the last like t the last hit on him and so i wasn't getting any kills so i was like still like even yeah. with gold with nyt's ad carry so when i got the first kill in the team fight and I saw Tristana low. I knew that if I was able to kill him, I would be able to run down to red buff with cleanse and like speed my way out. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I didn't get it. And I knew, and I knew I said it was my bad. Like a hundred percent should have fought. Front, <laughs> I should have fought front to back. Um, as you can see, even in the last game, like I went for, I had a triple. I was just like, I'm going in. Like, I don't care. <laughs> I was just going yeah. for it. Um, sending it a little bit. So, um, yeah, I knew my team could, I knew my team could pull through. Honestly, I, I did call 3-1 before the series started, so, uh, you know, maybe that was just my plan all along to lose the team, but push the game for Throw to get the prediction correct, yeah, man, yeah. I got honestly. Got, I got to give you props for that one, dude, for sure. If you the had the over on the team today. today. Yeah, if the bookies are listening, you didn't hear that. <laughs> <laughs> no bookies in the chat. Uh, I, I mean, I, I don't know what else to ask at this point, except for, uh, I mean, you got to just be on on cloud rot nine right now i mean what what's kind of the uh what's kind of the next thing for you guys what do you guys think you're I'm doing getting so? a drink that's what i'm doing i'm gonna <laughs> have a drink i'm going out to get a drink or i'm gonna go in my kitchen and get a drink i don't care what it is we're, we're getting fucked i mean we're getting messed up so. excuse my um, french we're getting, very we're close a little, a, little, a little drink and a little celebration for sure uh and that's it right now the few we don't know the future we just planned for today and uh, we're gonna take every day and step at a time after this. Yeah. Speak, speaking of the future, you guys are now gonna be moving into uh, the the collegiate League of Legends scene, the where all the uh, all, with the, all the other champions as the first seat for for ECC. So, uh, do you guys have any thought? I know I realize you guys just won right now, but do you guys have any thoughts about those uh, these other teams that are now gonna be coming out of the East region around out of PAC, out of uh, out of the West Coast? Uh, would you have any thoughts for for that or anything you would like to say to them before as coming out of uh, ECC with number one seed? 
Yeah, um, we actually played a couple of the CELO. We played a CELO team, Penn, Penn State, in the summer bracket uh, of this for the ECC last year, and they were really good. The teams are really like really stacked and really good. And um, we're gonna just practice and do the best we can. Well, I'm not hoping. To, I'm not saying we're gonna win everything, but I definitely think we can win a, a game or two. And I'm really excited to to just learn and play against better pl uh, players because that's the only way to improve. And I. I really do like enjoy playing the game, especially at a high level. I loved playing this game against MYT. They were like so much fun to play against. Definitely the most, you know, entertaining games for me. So I really enjoyed it. Yeah, man. I mean, if there's nothing else, then I, I guess uh, we'll give you the opportunity. You know, is there anything else that you want to kind of shout out to your team, to any of the people that are watching, to to mom or something like that? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, shout out to all the everyone in the chat. You guys are the best. I, I see your chats. It's awesome. I love you guys. Um, shout out to the team, Jay, Fabian, Lindsay, um, Timo. You guys were the best teammates I've ever had. Love you guys. Shout out to Farmdale State Esports, 100%. Uh, we're out here. We're getting dubs. You know, NYT was able to beat us in Smash, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, the reverse come, we're receiving Smash, but we came back today, and that's all that matters. One and one. Yeah, we tie, tied up tied up the, the titles yeah. for this semester, so we, we look to see whatever this is going to be the next final, NYT versus Farmingdale. And one way or another, the, the trophy's coming back to Long Island, and hopefully it stays here as long as possible. Even if we have to trade from year to year or back and forth, uh, we're going to keep it here as long as we possibly can. So once again, congratulations to you and your team, and once again, congratulations to Farmingdale Esports and Farmingdale State College for winning the East Coast Conference Championships. Thanks, guys. And uh, that's going to be all we have for today. Uh, uh, anybody uh, else want to put anything before I put it towards the end? No, honestly, just GG's to NYIT and GG's to yeah. Farmdale. Both both teams really played a, an insanely incredible series. And honestly, at this point, like, you know, Abs and I are from Farmingdale, but but uh, that's all that we really wanted was just a great series, and we got it. So GG's to both teams. Yeah, totally. Okay, everybody, have a wonderful rest of your night. We're gonna let the we're gonna le uh, let the championship uh, screen run for a little bit longer with Farmingdale State College, and uh, and then we will see you guys. Uh, I think this might be the last ECC thing. We're gonna we, I know we'll definitely be following Farmingdale going for uh, for Co Collegiate League of Legends with uh, New York Tech coming in second seed. Uh, they will still qualify to continue on, and uh, and we'll see you guys in the in the fall. <laughs> see you guys later. See you there. Yeah.